Well, a very good morning, everyone, and welcome along to the Butchewitsa Blind Football Cup 2023. It is day two, and there is everything to play for. There are five matches in total today, starting with our semi-finals, and we've got two brilliant semi-finals coming up for you. And our first one is between FC St. Pauli and Anderlecht. Kickoff is only moments away here in Butchewitsa. We are on the east side of Czech Republic, to the east of the second largest city in Czech Republic, Brno. It is a cold but beautiful day here. It's a clear blue sky. Sun's just rippling, the reflection of the sun rippling off the trees that are opposite myself and down here in the commentary box. Roughly about three quarters of the pitch is uh, sun and a yeah, quarter of the pitch just slightly shaded in from the school that is just to the right of us and the trees that are in front of us and to the left. But the temperature today, roughly about 9 to 10 degrees Celsius, cooler than it was yesterday, but it is perfect conditions for football. And our first uh, two teams, our first semi-final, are out on the pitch. We've got St. Pauli and Anderlecht. St. Pauli in their traditional brown home shirt with uh, white pinstripes going down the shirt with one singular pin red stripe on the left side of the shirt going through the badge and in the shorts they are also brown and the socks are also brown as for uh, and elect they are in their white strip white shirt shorts and socks the goalkeeper is in all green green shirt shorts and socks our two referees, Michael and Francois, are in uh, their uh, salmon pink coloured shirts with black shorts and black socks. The ball is uh, placed on the centre circle, the white ball with the uh, red lines going around the ball with slashes of green. We've got our uh, spectators uh, area just opposite us with two uh, canopies set up, two white canopies with benches ready for spectators to fill in, make some noise and get behind all the teams throughout the day. So this is our first semi-final between St. Pauli and Anderlecht. My name is Bradley Hope and I'm delighted to say that I'm joined by Dan James for this one. Dan, brilliant day yesterday and it's uh, everything to play for today. What I will say is I'm really thoroughly looking forward to this game now this match is up. We've got Andy who played the whole day yesterday with three outfield players and played a certain style and specific formation which enabled them to have to build attacks and get their young man Hugo Testa into the game a lot and he was very effective yesterday. I'm looking forward to seeing the matchup between uh, him and the young man from, uh, from St. Pauli, Nathan Werner, the 15-year-old, who also has been in imperious form for FC St. Pauli. Very, very much a tenacious young man putting himself around the pitch. But St. Pauli will come here, obviously, with the extra player advantage, but also um, when they when they Walshmitt changed the formation this day and they went to a higher press, it certainly paid dividends for them in their matches. So. It's an intriguing contest to see how, how these teams will, will fear, fear, fear here this morning. So, yeah, but we'll, we'll, we'll hopefully see uh, Paul Ruge also try and uh, finish uh, get his shooting looks on the game um, and, and, fit, and, and, and get some shots on target, which he, which he did do in the second game yesterday against uh, Thessalonica. So. We're all to play for here. I'm really looking forward to this one. Yeah, it should be a fantastic opening match of day two, our first semi-final. So from our position here in the commentary box and from the live stream pictures, Anderlecht will be playing from right to left with St. Pauli from left to right. It'll be Anderlecht who will kick us off in the white shirts, white shorts and white socks. We've got uh, Alexander Vespez and Christoph Eilers who are standing in the centre circle. Three of the St. Pauli players facing up to them, ready to go. It's almost like a showdown just before the kick-off. So Michael Luffler is going to be the, the furthest back for St. Pauli. He's going to stand eight metres out. He's going to be the one that's going to keep the shape for the team while sending out the other three who work together to try and win the ball back like they've just done here. So St. Pauli with possession on that far side, just on the halfway line, tight to the boardings, working the way down, Paulinho Paul on the back of his shirt. So he just arcs his way to the centre circle and out towards this near side, just keeping the ball close to his feet. He's back into the centre circle now and he arcs his run again out to that left side, into the penalty area now, he shoots and it's just wow. wide. But a great start from St. Pauli. Very patient dribbling from uh, Paul Paulinho there. He's gone one way then the other and he's waiting to find the gap down the left-hand side and he's just, just fired one past the post. Very unlucky. 
So the ball's tight in this near side corner, deep inside the St. Pauli half. The ball's just been flicked towards the edge of the penalty area, out to Hugo Testa, his first touch of the match. Out towards that far right side, midway inside the St. Pauli half, he rolls the ball back towards the halfway line. They're just inside the Anderlecht half, a cross-filled ball out towards this near side now, level with the edge of the penalty area. Vespers takes it, he's got two or three players around him, Werner's there, as is uh, Philip Versen. Right in this corner, up against the boardings on this near side. The ball's played down the line. And right in front of us here in the commentary box, a few metres from the halfway line. The ball's just run loose into the centre of the St. Pauli half. Ruger goes all the way out to that far left side. He's just inside the Anderlecht half. To the left of the centre circle now as he crosses the centre circle. Out towards this near side now. Great tight control from Ruger. He's in the penalty. He shoots and it's a good save with the foot from the Anderlecht keeper. And it's our first corner of the match. One shot on target for Paulinho this morning. Um, again, it's come from Anderlecht having some possession and switching the play a couple of times, which is exactly what they need to do to build the play. But one mistake where they gave the ball away and didn't press Paul quick enough allowed him a bit enough space to then start a dribble. And it's this time, instead of down the left, it's down the right. It just shows how dangerous he is coming off both sides. So it's a corner for St. Pauli on this near side. First corner of the match, first corner for St. Pauli. We are two minutes into the semi-final. Corner's been taken, Werner takes the ball and he tries to get into a more central position. He's about nine metres away from goal. Ball just goes all the way out towards that left side. It's close to the boarding, put under pressure from Hugo Testa. Here's that battle. It is, and Werner has to play the ball back over the halfway line, back into the St. Pauli half. He's now midway inside, centrally. Ruger coming forward over the halfway line to the right of the centre circle, comes back in more centrally. He's out towards that left side now, no one can get a foot on him at the moment. Ruger tries to go past Tester, the ball's loose, midway inside the Anderlecht half. Anderlecht's come away with it now, Vespers over the halfway line, just lets the ball go behind him. And the ball's just played across the centre circle, just to the right of the centre circle now. Tester, Tester picks up the ball, he comes forward, he's centrally, about 10 metres away from goal, goes up towards the edge of the penalty area, he's brought to the ground. But it's no foul and the ball just rolls out for the goalkeeper. Yeah, he's remonstrating for a foul though. It's not a foul at all. He's just gone, gone down the shoulder side of um, the, the young Philip Verson there and he's just unfortunately just clashed shoulders. Nothing nothing given there. Sven Grono throws overarm towards this near side. Midway inside the Anderlecht half. Bit of a tussle here. Werner up against Vespers on this near side. Tight to the boarding. Back towards the halfway line. We're back in the St. Pauli half. Only just though. But Werner gets away. He's back into the Anderlecht half. He's midway inside. Yeah. And wins the free kick. Late Voy. Talking about how it's really, really important to get the Voys in early. And Christoph there. Just a bit late on Nathan there. And that's where that head, head clash has happened. And the foul's gonna be given. I'm hoping Nathan's not too bad. He's just come over to the side to have a look, just check his teeth. Time out. Doesn't look great. Now just a little little point on um St. Pauli. So obviously we've seen the, the brilliance of Paul Ruses in his dribbling ability. That's that's not in question. But what, what St. Pauli may need to consider and what Will Schmidt may need to consider the coach is when when they do have possession um under pressure in the attacking third, it's trying to get support. Uh, on the opposite sides to, be have, to have outs one behind and one across and with Michael Luffler obviously keeping the shape at the back he's always a potential option as well um, and, and that's where St Pauli they, they, it takes them a, a little while to, to get that support up to whoever's in possession of the ball whether it is Rudez, whether it's Werner whether it's um, Young Verson on the ball as well so that's the transition phase and that's where they may need to be stronger um, to get more outball and more opportunities to have more and more attacks because the, the attacks, their attacks will come from sing, uh, solo dribbles but as this game in this situation with, against three that maybe that may be the ploy but um, it's another option for them to consider. So we're nearly ready to get back underway. Free kick here for St. Pauli. Midway inside the Anderlecht half. Slightly right of centre. There's two players in the main wall. Hugo Testa just uh, standing on his own, and now the free kick's been taken. Verson now just dribbles out towards that left side, hits the barrier, still with Verson. He dribbles back towards the centre circle, just arcing his run, bending his run towards this near side. Tries to cut back inside, but it's good play by Vespers. It gets goal side, but it dribbles it out for a corner kick. That was the, the moment now, was when Verson was about on the, on the broken line 12 metres out. There's that opportunity where he had those options. Those options were then available to him and his decision was, I'm going to dribble. So he's got those options there. Much better support that time. So second corner here for St. Pauli. Just over four minutes gone. 
Corner has been taken. Here is Verne. He's okay after his injuries into the penalty area now. Takes a shot, hits the side netting. Excellent screening by um, uh, Villet Verson there off the corner. So he, he sort of took the corner and then he went into the bodies to try and create a little gap for Nathan to try and get a shot off. Very, very good. Out towards that far side, it ricocheted back wow. into the uh, Anderlecht half. It was a heavy touch and it's back all the way out for I've, a corner. I've never seen that before in all my years. Where the ball's been bowled out and it's it's almost hit Hugo Tester on what is must be um, an adamantium knee. And it's ricocheted nearly all the way back towards his own corner. <laughs> corner, corner. It's incredible. Yeah, from the halfway line all the way out for a corner. And it's their third now for St. Pauli. Just over five minutes gone in the first half. It's taken once again. Here is Werner just on the edge of the penalty area. Teepham is near corner. He tried, he stays up. Nearly went down, but he stayed up as the ball was cleared away out towards that far side. It's still with St. Pauli, but a good challenge from Tester. He's over the halfway line, through the centre circle. He's midway inside the St. Pauli half. Battle for the ball, and Tester still has the ball. Battling, trying to hold off first and hold off Werner. He still has it, Tester. He was back to goal, still in the St. Pauli half. Just a bit closer now to the centre circle. Vespers takes over on this near side, comes down this left side, goes towards the penalty area, He's deep inside the St. Pauli half, has a shot, but that is well wide. There you just saw for a moment Tester getting away and then the swarm from the FC St. Pauli players, that extra man advantage, it does pay. And there was a moment where, where a young, the young man had to offload the ball and then Vespers came into play and the shot was too wide. So we're in the Anderlecht half now, Peruga tried to cut back onto his left, but it's just loose. Eilers is there, battling up against uh, Muga, right up against the board. Supporters come from Testo, who's come deep and just clears the ball away. Just gets Anderlecht out of danger and clears it right in deep inside the St. Pauli half, just on the edge of the penalty area. Ball just trickles into the area, basically stationary now, but it's picked up by Werner and has some space to run into. Can he just pick up some momentum here? Crosses over the halfway line, just arcs his run, right then left. He's in the centre of the Anderlecht half, but good work from Testo again. And he clears the ball upfield all the way back to the uh, St. Pauli keeper who is in his blue, a purple kit, I should say, with his green tie-dye look. It's a very... Uh, it's a funky, funky kit. kit. That's very, good, very yeah, nice. Absolutely. Ruga over the halfway line. He's now up towards the edge of the penalty area. Ruga tries to get a shot away. It just lands into the goalkeeper area. Ruga slides, but the Anderlecht keeper, Bert Ludwig, uh, collects the ball and throws over arm towards that far right side. Taken by Tester, he just comes back inside into the centre circle, tries to get past Verson, but Verson stands him up and plays out to this left side, he goes through the legs of Vespers, but Vespers is there to try and collect, but Verson gets in the way and gets the ball and goes over the halfway line across the centre circle to that left side, tries to get past Eilers, but Eilers gets his body in the way and does well, and he's right up against the boardings on that far side, only about three or four metres away from the corner. Now into the penalty, maybe a chance here for St. Pauli if they can get the shot away with Verson. Oh, and it's a penalty yeah. as uh, Philip Verson goes to the ground. The tackle came in, he was tripped and falls to the ground. Fine the details here. Christoph has got his back to his goal and he's tried to back kill the ball about four metres on the boards to, to, to um, uh, Tester. And unfortunately, he didn't realise that Philip Verson was stood on the byline, took it off the byline and went into the, into, the, into the D and then unfortunately was fouled in the box and then we got our penalty. So it's going to be Nathan Werner who uh, is uh, carrying on after that uh, injury. Werner will uh, take this, uh, looks like left footed. Nathan Werner is just standing over the ball. The referee is just uh, going through all the formalities. The goalkeeper in his all green kit with orange gloves is standing in the center of his goal. Bert Ludwig just crouching slightly, rubs some sweat away from his face, gets the nod from the referee, and here is Nathan Werner, just points towards the goal. We'll just wait for the taps from the guide who is standing behind the goal. And we just have a small delay here, some uh, talking. I think it was uh, coming from the uh, coaching staff. They need absolute silence for this uh, process. Now here comes the uh, taps from the guide.
Where well, that shoots, oh, and saved. And it remains nil nil. There's a high penalty right up to the way to the roof of the net. But uh, the goalkeeper just as well and palmed it out. Yeah, he stood up. Good save. What a chance that was, though, for FC St. Poli from the penalty spot. And again, he's 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 probably aware that the goal. Obviously, I'm, I'm not speaking in uh, Flemish, is it? Um, but he could have been in, in uh, helping out his defenders there, telling them to clear their to clear their lines and not have to back heel the ball back towards their own own side. So, goalkeeping communication is just as important as making a the save there. So, and got players that, that the body language, even from me watching from the commentary box here towards Christoph when he was in that situation. I can tell that Christoph needed information and he wasn't sure what to do. And there was a moment in time where everything just stood, stood still and he was like, right, what should I do? And in the end, he's, he's tried to back heel the ball in a dangerous position. And that's where you've got, when you've got a, t a striker that is like Philip Verson, who does play in the pocket and he, and he, he does turn up in, in the box and stand in the D and, and, and offer an option for FC St. Poli. That's where sometimes you just need to, as a defender, right, I'm just going to clear this, a back heel it out for a corner hard or clear down the line if I can and obviously it was hard for him to clear down the line because he was being pressured so so much sometimes it's worth giving away a corner get your chance and opportunity to reset or defend from the corner as opposed to just trying to back heel one down to my mate who stood on the line or even back to the keeper so it's something to consider for uh, Mr Christoph. but again it's nil nil here great start to the game it's end to end it's a, it's, a, it's a real interesting game because you've obviously got and elect playing free and they have to build their play and you've noticed that when Tester gets the ball if he gets any sort of pressure on him he offloads mm. and it's the right thing to do he's a young man's making the correct decision but when he's got space he goes himself that but bringing his team into the game is what's so so important for bringing Alexander Vespez into play bringing Christoph into play when they do push forward as a free um, and that, that's what they have to do and that's what they were doing yesterday throwing caution to the wind so it is a case of can when St. Poli win the ball they're dangerous because they've got the dribbles um, so again it's an evenly poised contest Brad really really good start so we're ready to restart after the timeout eight minutes and 14 seconds gone in the first half we're going to restart with a free kick for Anderlecht Anderlecht midway inside their own half Tester spreads the ball with a pass out towards this near side it just ricochets off the boarding dribbling towards the end of the pitch and it goes out for the goalkeeper so it's going to be with the goalkeeper here. Sven Bron out, throws the ball out towards that left side. It just comes off the board and it's uh, rolling at pace and it can't be kept in. As soon as that ball hit the turf, it's still, um, although the sun is now out in the sky, it, the pitch um, this morning is very, very wet for this first match. So when you're throwing the ball down like that and it does zip off. Into the centre circle now, a tussle for the ball. In the centre circle, two players down. Vespers and Verson, but the ball's just run loose. It's just inside the St. Pauli half. And it's picked up by Verson. He runs with the ball down that left side. Just hits the boarding, rolls across the boarding on that far left side. But Verson keeps it in. He has his back to goal. Tries to arc his run towards the eight-metre spot. He's centre of the Anderlecht half. Goes to his left. Tries to bring the ball back to his right, but Tester is there. Trying to shield Verson away from the ball. There's two Anderlecht players covering the ball against Verson. Deep in that... In the Anderlecht half on that far side in the corner. There you go. See, he's managed that time to kick the ball against Verson and get himself a goal clearance. There's almost this identical copy of the situation where they gave away the penalty. So the ball just ricochets into the edge of the centre circle in the St. Pauli half. Here is Tester. Tester beats off one, beats off two. He's in the penalty area. He's on this left side of the penalty area, but uh, just a loose touch. And that's Michael Luffler at the back there. So he's been a, a bit of a, just a, a, a figure at the back, which has just been keeping the shape, but he's called into action there just to shepherd the ball out, get a hand on Tester before he can get that left foot shot off. In the halfway line now, good dribbling from Ruger. Oh, and it just hits his back heel. And Tester tries to nip the ball away and does, and he plays it into the St. Pauli half, midway inside, on that far left side, in front of the spectators right in the front of the boardings here on that far side of the pitch it's Tester up against two St. Pauli players ball's got stuck under the both feet he's just got to try and offload it here and he does back towards the halfway line oh and Eilers as well just get past two St. Pauli players runs into some space into the centre of the St. Pauli half and out towards this left side Vespers with his back to the St. Pauli goal tries to turn away from Werner Werner tumbles to the ground 
No foul, and Eilers comes away with the ball. It's about 10 metres away from goal. Has the shot with the inside of his right foot, but that one is wide, well wide in the end. It goes towards the corner, and it's with the goalkeeper. Just uh, 11 minutes gone here in this first half. Ball's just been rolled out gently. Yeah, no, I think young Nathan, he's, uh, he's having a breather back here at the minute. They're just Philip Vernon's only got one option at the moment to play to. And they've lost it again. Yeah, intercepted, Eilers comes down that far. Right side for Anderlecht into the St. Pauli half. He's plays it back down the line, though, towards the halfway line. To the right of the centre circle. Test has come deep. Has the ball just underneath him, just trying to gain control of it. Dribbles back into his own half and clears the ball into the St. Pauli half. It comes off the boardings and out. That's where you needed your communication from Alexander Vespers because Vespers had dropped in on the halfway line. He hadn't gone long and Testa didn't get any call. So he just sort of played a, a hope ball into the corner, hoping that Vespers had pushed on and he hadn't. But all the Anderlecht players back inside their own half. Verson just dribbles slowly towards the halfway line. He's into the centre circle now. He's just waiting for his moment to pounce. Just plays the ball forward. It goes through Tester, but not through Islas. Islas clears it back up to the halfway line. But it's back with Verson now, inside his own half, just on the edge of the centre circle, in a central position. But Tester hounding him, putting the pressure on. Verson struggling to get away, but plays it back towards the edge of his own penalty area. He's with Werner now, on this right side. Tight to the boardings, has a bit of space to run into, he's up against Vespers, goes into the centre circle, Vespers gets a foot on the ball, and it's uh, Ricochet's all the way out towards that far side, right next to the boardings, plays just down the line a couple of metres, Tester tries to take away the ball and comes up towards the halfway line, 50-50 battle for the ball inside the St. Pauli half, the ball trickles back towards the penalty area, Loughlet in the penalty area, just trying to shield the ball out of play, but the ball's stationary at the moment. Potesta takes it, tries to dribble past with his back to goal. Ball still in play, tight in this corner. It's really only a couple of inches away from uh, the end of the pitch. Now, and it eventually does go out. Yeah, and Michael uh, Luffler is happy that it's um, been tidied up. And he tried to let that ball run out of play, but it just died on the line. And that was a long throw, but it just skidded along the surface. No real chance. Uh, it's never going to be controlled at the moment. It's just too wet. I know it's, the sun is in the sky, but it's just the dew on the top. Just bouncy balls. There you go. There's another one. Take care on these throws. It's so, so important. If you want to start attacks properly, these keepers have got to start hitting the feet with their longer throws. Yeah, and this time it's just rolled out gently to the midway point of the St. Pauli half. Here is Philip Burson. He's just in the centre circle now. No space to run into, but he tries to play the pass and it's intercepted. It's on this near side, on the halfway line, but chance now for Vespers to try and get away towards the penalty area. And uh, he's brought to the ground, but no foul as the ball just is trickled into the goalkeeper area. Player down at the moment, Philip Burson. He just did enough to stop Vespers from uh, being able to get any sort of shot off under control. The ball just sort of run away from him. Person dribbles towards the halfway line. Smith now on the, in the centre circle. Plays a long ball forward down the centre of the pitch, but it just trickles all the way to the goalkeeper for Anderlecht. And he throws over arm towards that far side. It hits the boardings, but it's a good touch from Tester. He switches the play out to this near side. It really ricochets off the boardings into a central position in the St. Pauli half. Battle for the ball here on the edge of the penalty area is picked up by Ruga. Ruga runs to his left, now comes into a more central position. He crosses over the halfway line. He runs towards the penalty area. Can he get a shot away? Oh, and it just trickles into the goalkeeper area. He just loses the ball at the critical moment. And the goalkeeper rolls it out towards the far side. It comes off the board and into the St. Pauli half. Tester hunting the ball down. It's cleared in towards the centre circle. Into the Anderlecht half now. Islas now with a bit of space. Passes it short to his left to Vespes. Vespes tries to play it off the board down this, near, down this near side towards the penalty area. Werner doing really well just to block off Vespers and goes out and that is the end of the first half. It's been a, a really entertaining first half of uh, football this morning but it remains nil-nil but St. Pauli of course with the biggest chance of them all in that opening 15 minutes with uh, Werner from the penalty spot but it remains nil-nil. Yeah, I was... Um a good match up this really 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 good match up and 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 thoroughly exciting for the first game uh, of the day in the semi-final i think that um st Pauli started the game very brightly two attacks from paul showing he can go down either wing and dangerous that way in their solo dribbles um but the opposite game plan from anderlecht was to build play 
And what I mean by that is they were switching the play, passing when when they came into pressure situations, whether it was any one of the three players, they would offload the ball to their one of the, one of their mates next to them or, or on the opposite wing, and wait for opportunities where they get good touches and they were able to get down the line and then go across and try and get shots away. Um, they've not quite managed to, to test Fenn in the in the St. Pauli goal as yet. But the game plan is we pick our moments to attack. We pick our moments. We've only got three players. We're going to stay in a shape. We're going to try and get touch tight and then stop Paul Ruges from dribbling, which is very, very important. And um, we're just going to wait and try and pick off opp opportunities to attack ourselves, um, which it, I think they've been very patient. Um, granted, they're going to they're going to concede opportunities. Um, they've got an extra player, um, St. Pauli. Um, they've got the brilliance of uh, Paulinho going forwards. They've also got team uh, young Werner. Uh, and, and Philip Versen, who have looked really, uh, have supported uh, Paul Rouges excellently in attack and offer options on both wings. Um, so it's a case of hope, you know, from an Anderlecht point of view, hoping that they can um, to pick off an attack when it, when, when it presents themselves. And from St. Pauli, just keep doing what you're doing, keep making opportunities. They've won a penalty, they've had that opportunity from the penalty spot, they've created shots, keepers made some good saves. So it's a case of um, you know, keep doing what you're doing if you're an FC St. Pauli fan and just keep uh, keep trying to pepper that goal, getting shots on target. So it's nil-nil at the break here in our first semi-final on day two here at the Butovica Blind Football Cup 2023. We'll just take a very short break before we get to the second half underway in a few minutes' time. Well, welcome back to live coverage here in Butchevica, the Butchevica Blind Football Cup 2023. We are just ready to start the second half of our first semi-final between St. Pauli and Anderlecht. St. Pauli in the second half will be playing from right to left with Anderlecht from left to right. That's from our position here in the commentary box and on the live stream. St. Pauli in the brown kits. Brown shirt, shorts and socks. And elect in all white. White shirt, shorts and socks. It will be St. Pauli that will kick us off. Three players, or we've got two players in the centre circle. We haven't yet talked about how 
fatigue may set in for Anderlecht. They've put a hell of a shift in with only three players. Um, it's just whether St. Pauli can take advantage of that. So Ruget sets off towards this left side, now cuts back into a more central position. He's about 12 metres out from goal. He goes towards the edge of the penalty area. He's clipped from behind and wins his team a free kick. So very similar to the first half, a very energetic front foot start from St. Pauli and uh, from uh, Paul Ruger. Yeah, positive from Paul once again at the start of the game, or start of the second half, sorry. And um, it happened to be that I think it was Christoph there, stood his ground. And um, I think it was Tester just clipped um, Paul as he went past and that's resulted in this free kick. Eight metres out, just off centre to the right. Yeah, it certainly is with the uh, three-man wall just in front of the goalkeeper area, just covering the left post of the Anderlecht goal. Two players standing over this one. We've got uh, Werner and uh, Philip Verson. Philip Verson has his right foot, the sole of his right foot, standing on top of the ball, just to the left of Werner. Werner standing directly towards the Anderlecht goal. Verson just to the side of him. Paulinho that's uh, about 12 metres away from goal to the left, but the two players standing over the ball, eight metres away from the goal. The goalkeeper's just crouching down, anticipating, just on his tiptoes. First... Uh, Big chance then of the second half. And Philip Verson has his back to goal now. He still has his foot on top of the ball as the uh, goal posts have just been tapped. Hugo Tester in the wall, ready to go. Free kick's taken, it's dribbled out towards the right side of the penalty. Shot comes in and it hits the side netting and it's wide. Goalkeeper got his angle spot on there. Inside the line of his post, had his ball in the right place and he was happy for, for Nathan to take the ball that way and shoot at that angle. Would have been a hell of a goal if he'd gone in. It certainly would have been. And now the ball's inside the St. Pauli half towards the edge of the penalty area. Vespers running forward, he's in the penalty area now. There's four St. Pauli players covering though in the penalty area. Now maybe a chance to break. Vespers is jogging back on that far side. Ruga goes past Tester over the halfway line through the centre of the Anderlecht half. He bundles through Ailes, but Ailes gets the ball and he's out towards that far left side, a couple of metres away from the corner, deep inside his own half. Christoph just plays the ball back into the penalty area and into the goalkeeper area. Good covering work from Christoph and the goalkeeper. Ludwig plays it out to this right side. Tester just hits it off the boardings and plays it down this right side. He goes past Ruger. He's into the same Pauli half. He's by himself deep inside this corner on this near side. Oh, and he just loses the control of the ball and it goes out for a goal kick. They've got pressure on Tester early at every chance he's had of that in that slot they got yesterday where he had that success in the games. They've got to him earlier, they've got some hands on pressure and they've forced him away from goal, which is key. So it's a ball down that far right side into the Anderlecht half. Vespers just blocks his runner and it goes out for the goalkeeper. So, so important again for Christoph going back to the attack from Paul that Christoph is the back, the furthest back player. He's not too deep. He's able to engage Paul higher up the pitch and, and make it tough for him when he's dribbling solo from a, from distance. This is where he's very strong, Paul. So on the halfway line with uh, Verson in control. He just bends his run right around the edge of the centre circle, plays a through ball into the Anderlecht half and it goes out for a corner kick. So Christoph once again cutting out that ball. Is it, but what the St. Pauli have tried to do a number of times where one of them, normally it's Philip Verson, gets the ball on the halfway line and he's, he's, he's waiting for runs off of the boards from Nathan and Paul inside into areas in the middle channels, just off of Christoph's right and left shoulders to try and get him in, uh, in ball into feet. Werner twists left and right, but the ball just ricochets off and into the goalkeeper area. And the keeper throws over arm out towards this set. Right side, picked up by Tester, crouching down, plays a, a cross field ball, a really good ball out to that far left side, it comes off the boardings, Vespers tries to collect, still has control of the ball, it comes into a more central position, tries to get a shot off and it's saved by the keeper. That's fantastic play, team play by Anderlecht, again the, the ball out from the goalkeeper, early switch pass in, in front of Vespers so he could take it and then he could take it in field and have a shot. So St. Pauli with possession and it's with uh, Burson who just dribbles into the centre circle. No real support, tries to play a ball forward towards the penalty area, but it's blocked out and Anderlecht have uh, 
time and a bit of space here. Eilers tries to run down that left side and cuts back inside. Tries to switch the play but misses the ball and it's intercepted. Ruger now has possession, tries to turn on the ball and does so. Heads towards the right side of the penalty here. Just a tackle comes in. Well, Christoph made up for losing the ball there in a very dangerous position. He's managed to get enough pressure back on Paul before he could just start moving uh, through the gears of, of speed on his dribble and uh, ended up managing to redeem himself. Bespa's running down that left side. Tackle comes in, but Bespa's still going. Into the penalty area, shot comes in, it's wide. And the game just feels like it's starting to open up a little bit in the second half. You've always got an opportunity when you've got Alexander Vespez coming off that left-hand side. He's always dangerous from minute one all the way up to the end of the game. So here is Ruger, cuts back inside towards the centre circle in the Anderlecht half. He dribbles into a more central position and Eilers is there again. He's one of, we talked about him yesterday, Christoph, being one of those players who didn't really give him enough credit but he has been everywhere so far in the second half plays the ball out towards this near side hits the board and comes back into more central position Tester turns away into the centre circle just stands on the ball and he's in the uh, St. Pauli half waiting for an opportunity to go turns back onto his left foot he's still on the edge of the centre circle passes it out to that left side comes back off to boarding onto the halfway line turned away from Islas Islas coming forward goes past one goes past two he's on the edge of the penalty he slides in to try and get a touch the ball but it goes out for the goalkeeper such a versatile player Christoph, and we don't talk didn't talk about him enough yesterday but this he's coming into his own here with this this performance against this opposition because he has to play higher up he has no choice if he drops off too deep that's when there's going to be a lot of dribbles coming at him at peak speed from paul from from verner and from versen so he's going to have to play higher up and he's he's all he's swashbuckling performance at this moment in time from him so out on that far left side, a bit of a battle for the ball. It's won by Werner. Werner dribbles into a more central position, heads towards the penalty here. Werner, can he get a shot away? Oh, he misses the ball and it goes out. And that was a really good chance for St. Pauli if he could just get the ball under control. Yeah, he's had, he's had a swing there. So unlucky. Thrown Got away from him. Thrown out towards this near side on the halfway line. Ruger goes past his man, Tester. Down this left side, he's tight to the corner. In the Anderlecht half, he comes into a more central position. Ruger is about 10 metres away from goal. He heads back towards the penalty area. He's in the penalty area now. He shoots. Ooh. And that one is wide. Wants to come back on that right foot to get the shot off. And just in that moment off of the centre left, that's where he might need that left foot. And the ball just rolls off the boarding and down the line and out for a goal kick. And Tester knows. He's just put his hand up to the keeper there. He's saying, sorry, I... Didn't quite hear that one. It was rolled very slow, uh, very quick on the floor. Sometimes, again, when the ball is rolled like that, it can just go silent for a second. And just as it got to Tester, just just beat him in just through his legs there. But time out here. Regroup for Anderlet. Get a breather. Get some fluids on. Um, and they're, they're battling. And it's in, again, I, Brad, I think it's end to end. Um, you know, you've got... Vespez has gone through and had a couple of opportunity, half opportunities. Christoph is really, really working hard to to, to get to these uh, to the to the St. Pauli players quick and stop them from dribbling from deep. Um, and he, they've had success and elect from doing that. So it's just whether they can continue to do this now for the next seven and a half minutes. Yeah, 22 minutes, 30 seconds gone in the match. It is currently nil-nil. The big chance so far in the match falling to Werner from the penalty spot. That one was saved by uh, Bert Ludwig, the uh, the goalkeeper for Anderlecht. Can the deadlock be broken in the closing stages of this opening semi-final? Of course, we could need penalties to decide this one. And uh, we will we will restart with St. Pauli. Will we get a late winner as the sun just starts to beam down onto the pitch? There's a bit of cloud cover in the sky, but the uh, sun just sort of is twinkling off the tips of the trees opposite us. For St. Pauli, I feel like it's, it's a case of can we now start to be a bit more expansive? Can we get hold of the ball to start with? And can we start looking to build attacks? Push a few more players on, a bit higher up, maybe into the corners and just try and force Anderlecht back because this, in this situation here, once again, they've only one got one player forward, one on the ball. Here is Verson, tries to play a short pass towards the edge of the penalty here. It just rolls out. Well, Philip Verson, I met him on the stairs this morning, said he was a little bit tired from yesterday, but still battling, still going strong. 
and played out towards his right side from the goalkeeper for Anderlecht on the halfway line with Tester. Tester plays the pass out out towards that left side, just inside the Anderlecht half, tight to the boardings. He has two players to beat. Best peasant tries to almost force his way through, but he's been pushed back deeper into his own half. Good pressure from Werner. Ball played back to the keeper in the goalkeeper area. Side footed pass out towards this near side, towards Tester. Tester takes it on his right foot. Two St. Pauli players on him straight away. Tester has been forced back towards his penalty. He plays a long ball forward. That's going to take some running to try and chase after that, and he can't keep up with it, Vespers, and it's out for the goalkeeper. 23 and a half minutes gone. Here is uh, Sven Grono, the keeper for St. Pauli. Just gently rolls the ball to the centre of the St. Pauli half. Person comes up towards the uh, halfway line, just to the right of the centre circle. Look at Paul, look, he's, he's gone high. He's gone hopping in the top left down corner now. And first, I'm going to try and pick him out. Person tries to pass in towards the penalty. It's picked up by Eilers. Christoph comes forward now. He has the ball on his right foot. Back to goal. Passes the ball out towards his right side. It goes through the legs of Tester, but it's still a Tester on the halfway line. Lovely turn away from Tester. Plays the ball calmly out towards that left side. 50-50 here on the halfway line. Who's going to win it? It is Anderlecht and it's Vespers, but he's pushed back in towards his own half. Ball's played back to the goalkeeper in his area. Goalkeeper right on his goal line. Plays it all the way out towards this near side on the halfway line. Tester takes a touch, but it ricochets off the boardings. Back towards the St. Pauli penalty area, but it's a nice turn away from Ruger. He crosses over the halfway line. He's now centre of the Anderlecht half. He goes towards the penalty area. He's put under pressure. And the shot comes in, and it's wide. And that's St. Pauli there, just where Anderlecht have had the ball. They've lost it, and there's a massive gap between Tester and Christoph because Christoph is he's about 12 metres out on the broken line, and that's what Paul wants. He wants that space to work in and operate in. That's what he's got there. Shot just wide. Tester, can he get into a position to get a shot off? There's four St. Pauli players back and they retrieve possession the German side. And here is Verson, gets past Tester, he's over the halfway line, but the space to run into now. Verson goes past to his left, he's in towards the edge of the penalty, he tries to cut back onto his right foot, he falls to the ground and Verson, so frustrated, slams the floor with his hands and it's back with the goalkeeper for Anderlecht who plays it out to that left side Tester moves out towards the left he loses the possession of the ball and Werner comes forward on the halfway line he's centre of the Anderlecht half he's into the penalty and now Werner tries to shoot as he slides but he just couldn't connect with the ball and it's another big chance for St Pauli that goes begging just need this composure in front of goal no FC St Pauli that has three opportunities within the last minute where they've had opportunities they've gone through on goal and they've either swung and missed or they've just not got a good enough connection on the ball. But it's positive from St. Pauli. Again, it comes from dribbles, solo dribbles, or from all three of the front players. First of all, it was Paul. Then it was uh, Ver, uh, then it was um, Philip, who just couldn't quite... He wanted it on his right foot, really. It was there for his left-footed shot. And then there, just the Nathan there, he just got away from him just at the, at the moment where he just needed that bit of composure. So we're just having a brief stoppage in play. It was... Um, Best president glided into the boardings. He was just holding the top of his head. He's standing up right now. He seems to be okay. It's going to be a drop ball. Francois, our, one of our four referees, just holding the ball in his right hand. Happy to restart. And off we go. Alexander Vespez, deep inside his own half, chips it over head height towards that far side. And it goes out to play over the boardings. Just a little bit too much air there. <laughs> Here is uh, Werner who will restart with a kick in just inside their own half of St. Pauli. Over the halfway line. Runs directly through the centre of the Anderlecht half. Ball's just run loose out towards this left side, a couple of metres away from the corner in the Anderlecht half. Two on one. Anderlecht trying to clear the ball. Tester now comes away with it, comes over the penalty area, dribbles out towards that far left side. He just checks back inside though and he's into the centre circle. Goes back onto his left foot now. Good tight control by Tester. Oh, and he dribbles past and goes in between two St. Pauli players, but he's got another two to beat and he loses possession. And he comes forward now with the ball. Ruga over the halfway line, dribbles towards that yeah. far right side and wins the free kick. Again, it's always dangerous because Tester does everything right. He slinks left, he goes right, goes left again. And then just at that moment, he slits on the ball. Who's waiting to take it off his foot? Paul Ruges. How quick is he from there? He's very, very quick. And that's where you have to stop him. <laughs> and that's what Alexander Vespez did. He stopped him. So free kick here for no boy shouted. So it's a free kick here for St. Pauli. Roughly about 11 metres away from goal. 
more towards that far side of the pitch in the Anderlecht half. There's two players in the Anderlecht wall just on the edge of the penalty area. Referee asking for silence from uh, the coaching staff and spectators. So we've got uh, Baruga and Nathan Werner over the ball. Werner has his uh, left foot on top of the ball. And here comes the uh, the guide behind the Anderlecht goal. Just will start to tap the post. go. Here we go. Yeah. Didn't release the ball. <laughs> Just a free kick the other way. So opportunity wasted there for yeah, uh, Absolutely. Pilot. That is <laughs> criminal. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Yeah. That I've, I had to look twice to see exactly what had happened as well. So silent. Apologies to the viewers. But <laughs> I think what's happened there is the ball hasn't been touched forward. And so that it, it's um, it's just been turned over, the other way. So in the midst of all this, we have a timeout here with just over one minute and fifty seconds remaining. It's been a thoroughly enjoyable first semi-final. This mm. um, certainly not dull nil-nil by any stretch. Um, End-to-end -end opportunities for both teams. Obviously, the best chance coming from the penalty spot. Um, but you know. Anderlecht trying once again to hang on in there, which they've done in every one of the games. They were player short, working extreme. The teamwork that they've shown, uh, Brad, has been absolutely fantastic. How they've worked together. This is the best Anderlecht team that I've seen in years where there ain't no infighting in this team. As before, you could kind of get under this team a little bit, but because they're playing short-handed, there's no time for them on the ball. They've, they know that their decision-making process, if we're pressured, we need to offload the ball. If we get opportunities and space, we need to dribble and we need to work together defensively. We cannot win this, win any game uh, or any situation where we're just playing on our own as individuals. And yeah, it's been impressive to watch because, um, you know, it's a, a, a performance which um, certainly I've been impressed with of them playing short-handed um, against the team at FC St. Pauli with so much experience. Uh, in it in in the opposition, so um, it just remains to be seen how this game is going to end, or whether we're going to be up to the dreaded penalties again. <laughs> well, we had one penalty shootout yesterday. Are we going to get another? We restart now. Anderlecht Vespers spreads the ball out towards this near side. It cannons off the boarding, and it's picked up by Verse. And he crosses over the halfway line. He's down this left side. He goes towards the edge of the Anderlecht penalty area. He's blocked off, but he still is battling for the ball in the penalty area and wins his side a corner with 90 seconds remaining. Corner on this near side. Another big chance here for St. Pauli. And we head off now. Here is Ruger. Tries to arc his run into a more central position. He's about 12 metres away from goal. Bends his run all the way towards that far right side. And wins his side, another corner. Three of the St. Pauli players have retreated back into their own half and now having to sprint back up. It's almost like as soon as Paul decides he's dribbling, they decide to go back in defend. <laughs> it, it, it baffles me sometimes. I think you've got to offer options at full Paul because if he dribbles over that side and he needs an option, he hasn't got it. He knows he can only he can only continue to dribble and we're in the last minute, he's pretty tired. So the corner's been taken and the ball's worked from this near side all the way back out to that far side on the halfway line. Ruger just to the right of the centre circle dribbles back out towards that right side. Now towards the penalty area. Shot comes off. It's wide of the left post. So it's back with the goalkeeper under 30 seconds now remaining. A goal here would win it, but is there time for one final chance? Vespers now spreads the ball. Tester called for it on this near side. Tester now. Deep inside his own half. Can he make a run now? He crosses over the centre circle. But he's just been thwarted. He's still in the centre circle. A battle for the ball here. It's still in the Anderlecht half. But it's won by St. Pauli. Versons tries to get some space to get a shot away. And that's the end. And that is full time. And it finishes. Nil-nil. In our first semi-final.
And we will go to a penalty shootout for the second time here at the Butchevitsa Blind Football Cup. Butch. I would happily watch another half of this game. There was a very good performance from both teams. Um, just lacking, just lacking a goal, really. It's a very, very good game of football. Well, St. Pauli with the biggest chance, certainly in the game, from the penalty spot. Could have sealed their place into the final later on today. But as it stands, of course, we are going towards this penalty shootout after 0-0. Uh, At the end of, end of 30 minutes, both sets of teams have just made their way over towards this near side, just getting final bits of advice and uh, just taking a little bit of breather having some refreshments as well. Just uh, getting some refreshments as well. <laughs> um, again, pen penalty shootout, it's never nice, but I've got to get this game decided one way, and we've already seen one penalty saved uh, in this game from six metres from Nathan, from, uh, from the keeper from uh, Mandelet. So, remains to be seen who's going to step up and take these for, uh, that. we know who Anderlecht are going to choose um, so our two captains have just made their way towards the centre circle just to go through the uh, formalities the coin toss Handshakes between the two goalkeepers and the two captains. So we're just getting uh, all the uh, players just organised on the halfway line. It's also an extra job here for the referees just to make sure the process is followed correctly and uh, organised. Our referees, just a shout out to our referees, they've done a sterling job so far, been brilliant. Yeah, they've been around the block on the uh, on the on the world scene. These referees, um, and I always look forward to coming here and uh, doing doing what they do. So the first penalty will be taken by Anderlecht, and it will be Alexander Vespas, number ten. So the goalkeeper standing on his line, of course, down in the center of his goal. Sven Grono just puts his hands on his knees, crouches down. Vespes just puts his right fingertips on the ball. He's crouched down, standing directly center in front of the ball. Vespes shoots right footed and scores! No mistake, down the center of the goal. 1-0 Anderlecht. Yeah, powerful penalty. Underneath Sven, in goal for St. Pauli. And here is Werner, missed a penalty in the first half. Or I should say it was saved in the first half. Can he redeem himself, the goalkeeper? But Ludwig standing in the centre of his goal, just at leaning left and right. Werner standing over the ball, right-footed. Here we go, Werner shoots, and it's saved for a second time. Not enough power that time, and too central, so it was just a, it was just a very simple save in the end for Bert Lugwig and goal. Stood up, waited, two palms on it, beat it out, keep it out. So here's, here's the young man from the spot. Advantage. And the left. Important penalty coming up. Axe. Axe. Put them in a commanding position. Tester will take this left footed. Crouching down, put its left hand on the ball. Tester shoots. Oh, and it hits the crossbar. Wow. 
It's a very, very good strike, however. <laughs> just slightly too high. If that was in, I keep saying, if that was in the uh, hockey goals, that was going upstairs. But we're not playing in those. We're playing, we're playing in Butchovica. In our futsal goals, and that's it's unlucky from him there. He's, he's put his head down. He's in a low crouch position. And he's generated an extreme amount of power there for, for such a such a low centre of gravity that he's got. Here is Paul Ruger, Paulinho, the number six for St. Pauli. The second penalty. Standing tall over the ball is Paulinho. Goalkeeper standing in the centre of his goal with his arms spread out. Here come the taps from the guide behind the goal. Silence across the pitch here in Butovica. Second penalty. Taken right footed. He shoots and that one is saved down the centre. Two saves from the goalkeeper. But we can once again. Again, that one was too central. And with that sort of technique that you've got where you sort of almost a stand in step back. It was not even a step back, it's almost a standard, so you it's difficult to sort of move your hips and change it direction so, so those the two penalties have been very central so Christoph Eilers the number 11 for to win and the left absolutely here is the big moment a chance to get into the final here at the Butovica Blind Football Cup Sven Grono crouched down in the center of his goal with his arms spread out to his left and right here is Eilers shoots and it's saved by Sengono, and we carry on this penalty shootout. Well played, Sven. He stood up, and waited. It was tough to do as a goalkeeper. You could see his weight shifting right and left, and he wasn't sure. And then he just stuck a knee out, and made the save. Now we get. Now it's in the crunch time. Now we are in the crunch. We really are. No second chances. Skipper. He's got the responsibility here to keep his team in it. Philip Versant pointing towards the goalkeeper of his right hand. Goalkeeper Bert Ludwig eagerly awaiting the penalty. He's standing on his tiptoes, arms spread out left and right. Versant. Versant. Puts both hands on the ball, shoots right footed and scores! No mistake from Philip Verson and this penalty shootout continues. That was a, such an important penalty from Verson. He took his time, he wasn't, he wasn't happy with how he'd set the ball up. So he just took a second, took a step back and, and what is so difficult for a goalkeeper is that when you get a player that toe pokes the ball, that minimum amount of backlift and the ball comes from a slightly different trajectory you have to stand, you have to wait, and by the time you wait a little bit, and we're talking a minute, second, that's when it flashes past you with the power, which is what you saw there from Versen. So Vespers already has scored from the penalty spot. He's going again now, his second penalty. He shoots, and that one is saved! Save. Incredible save from Grono. I get a little round of applause there because that is very, very good. He got down into the corner with that sort of handball technique. The split started to split across and um, deflected it onto the post. So, well done. Well, it's amazing how a penalty shootout can twist and turn. Moment here for Werner. The number eight just puts the his toes on the top of the ball. here in the semi-final Werner with the penalty take this right footed Werner shoots saved again we keep going Lambert Ludwig hit the target just made, made him make a save once again 
And as a goalkeeper, sometimes it is just about being patient in there and, and not second guessing yourself and standing up, waiting, and seeing seeing what happens, seeing what comes towards you. So Tester with his second penalty, left footed, hit the crossbar with his first one. Tester shoots. Oh, and just tipped over. A bit of. Bit of, yeah, bit of both. Bit, was that a bit of both yeah, goalkeeper and end, crossbar yeah. again? It was a similar sort of position, a similar sort of shot that he had the first penalty. So this is going back to Paul again to win it. Ruger, the number six. Take this one right footed. But Ludwig again standing. Centre of his goal, his arms just to his side. Here come the taps from the guide. This is to send St. Pauli through to the final. Right footed. Shoots and it's saved! Yeah. Well played again. Great goalkeeping. Again, the shot's on target. Forced the goalkeeper into making saves. So, Christoph Eilers, another chance from the penalty spot. Right-footed, saved by Sven Grono down the centre. Spreads himself well. Little kick through save there, we call that. Just uh, read the way that he was going and just used his foot to not get him stuck underneath him. Just bring it through in front of him and just kick that ball away. Well done by Sven. So, Philip Versen scored a crucial penalty earlier on in the shootout. It's another big one now for Philip Versen, the captain. Can he send his team through to the final? and crouches down in front of the ball. Shoots, and it's wide this time. Didn't quite get the same connection that he had last time, where it was just a true toe poke connection. That one, it just come off the side. of His, his follow through hit the side of the ball, didn't hit the center of the ball. Penalty shootout continues. Vespers now will take this one for Anderlecht. Sven Grono spreads his arms wide, crouches down. Vespers to take this one for Anderlecht. He shoots, and that one is also saved. This penalty shootout. Well, will it ever end? Who will get this winning moment? The goalkeepers are, uh, are, earning, <laughs> are earning a lot here. <laughs> Some excellent saves, just standing the ground. Penalties have been shot. You've, you ask your players, as a coach, you say, right, go up there, go through your routine, hit the target. And that's what you've got to do. And uh, the goalkeepers have done, done their job. Just doing his job. Here is Werner now to uh, win it here. For St. Pauli, the number eight. Bert Ludwig spreading his arms wide, filling up the goal. Werner. The chance to send St. Pauli through to the final. Shoots and scores! Brilliant that, finish! That one's right in the corner off the side and they are celebrating. And it is St. Pauli who are through 
to the Bushevich Sublime Football Cup final later on today in an epic contest. An epic penalty shootout that went all the way. Yeah, and um, never a nice way to decide a game, but that's it. Just kept going that penalty shootout. It was one goal, then a save, and finally uh, it was uh, the young version got the equaliser to take it to sudden death. And then we had the goal goalkeepers pulling out some absolute brilliance penalty stops, and then that final final penalty from the young man right in the right in the side of the net and again for a young 15 year old to come up and take that penalty having already dis you know been disappointed to miss one in the game and then missing the penalty shootout as well to come back and just go through back through his routine you know it's important that when you have a with blind football having a, a, a sort of an emphasis on being, penalties being so important dead ball situations being so important it's so so important to have a routine when you take penalties and when you take your eight meter penalties which you haven't actually seen yet um, so, you know, the young man's gone back through his process again and he's got an end result there and he's taking his team into a final now against one of the two teams we're going to now see in the, in the next semi-final. So our next semi-final will be between Merseyside and Avoy Burner. That'll be coming up very, very shortly. But uh, St. Pauli, just to wrap up, are through to the final. They'll face one of Merseyside or Burno. And of course, Anderlecht will be in action again for the bronze medal for the third place. But myself and Dan will be back in a few moments' time for our second semi-final.
Well, welcome back to live coverage here at the Bushevitsa Blind Football Cup 2023. It is our second semi-final of the day. Our first semi-final went all the way to penalties. It was another brilliant match and we're hoping for more of the same in our second semi-finals. Our two teams are currently in the centre circle. I should say our two captains along with the two keepers and our two referees. As for Merseyside, it's, uh, they are in their purple home kit, purple kit with black shorts and black socks. As for Avoy Berno, they're in their changed strip of a black shirt, black shorts and black socks. There is a light blue trim that just goes around the socks with light blue numbers printing on the front and back. Our two referees, Christian and Francois, in their salmon pink referee shirts with black shorts and black socks. And the temperature is just uh, chilled slightly. The sun has just uh, gone behind one of the clouds. Slightly just dried up the pitch. Some of the shadows reflecting off the players onto the pitch. And this is our second semi-final. A place in the final at stake to take on St. Pauli. And in this first half, it will be Avoy Berno who will be playing from right to left with Merseyside playing from left to right. It will be Avoy Burner to get us underway. Kevin Seal standing over the ball with Jan Mrazek standing right behind him. Another intriguing matchup here at Dan between at Merseyside and Avoy Burner for a place in the final. Yeah, absolutely. And remember back to the first game. This was the first game of Butsovitsa this year and how end-to-end -end it was and it ended up being Avoy that came away with absolutely nothing out of that game because it was a if I remember rightly, it was a late goal that Rainbow managed to score um, in the second half. And that was the difference in the end. But Avoy did give as good as they got in that game. They had the better of the chances. It would force an Owen lock into several very, very good, smart saves. Um, and they'll be hoping that this time, Avoy, who have yet uh, to manage to score a goal in open play. That has, been their, that has been their Achilles heel. That's been the problem they've got. It's when they have had chances, they've just not been able to, to finish them. So we're nearly ready to go as the sun just starts to appear from behind the clouds. Beam onto the pitch, we're underway. Seal goes out towards that far right side. Goes back towards the centre circle and spreads the play out to this left side. It ricochets off the boardings. Jan Mrazek now has possession, but he's been picked off. By Lundberg. Coming in towards the centre circle, spreads it out towards this right side. Issa grabs the ball onto his right foot, tries to turn onto his left. But Yambango is there to put the pressure on deep inside the avoid Berno half on this near side. Yambango and Issa just uh, going at it here in the early stages in the opening minutes. Bit of a mismatch there with Mr. Yambango <laughs> and uh, Issa, but Issa's given as good as he got there, and I think he's won a free kick for Merseyside. Uh, just to confuse you even more, Craig Lundberg and Robin Williams have swapped numbers for this uh, for this game, uh, Brad. So it's Robin Williams that was now wearing number five, and uh, Craig's come back to wearing number eight again. <laughs> uh, good start for Merseyside there. Tenace tenacity of Issa on display within the first minute. There is Easton out of the ball, trying to arc his run into a more central position, being closed down, hunted down by Kerrin Seal up towards that far left side. He's not letting go of Issa. Issa putting a real battle up against Kerrin Seal. And the switch of play out towards this uh, near side now. Good flat switch across to Robin Williams. Re-switch. Williams out towards that far left side now. Issa out on the left side on the halfway line, enters back into his own half. He crosses over the 
halfway across the centre circle. Ball stuck to his feet. He gets an early shot off from distance. It's saved down the centre of the goal. Patient play from Merseyside there. Switching play and then giving Issa the opportunity then when he sensed there was a gap to come infield and then go at pace. He did. Decision making excellent. So two minutes gone here in our second semi-final. Nil-nil. Crossfield ball up towards that far right side, picked up by Kerin Seal, although a bit of a 50-50 battle here with Issa. Issa comes away with it, he crosses over the halfway line, Jan Bango's there to cut him off and win back the ball, and Bango plays it across towards this near side, towards us here in the commentary box. Body-to-body -body contact here on this near side between Williams and Jan Mrazek. The support cry comes in rightly and then Liam Archer goes in and then does support and plays a uh, flat ball across to Issa and it can rebuild the attack. Mm, deep inside their own half just on the edge of the penalty Issa just stands on the ball he's waiting to get Robin Williams further forward and then he plays the ball forward excellent and it just ricochets off the boarding however Jan Bango gets there in front of Williams Bango advances forward midway inside the Merseyside half he heads towards the edge of the penalty, cuts back onto his right foot, he shoots and it's a save down to the right by Owen Locke. First save he's had to make and he makes it well. Yes, Jan Bango, dangerous, slowed his dribble down, then accelerated, then he got a gap to shoot through from about six and a half and Owen Locke down smart to his right hand side. Well done the young man in goal once again. It's been a bright, these have been a bright um, addition to this uh, Merseyside team as the goalkeeper. So it's a corner on this near side for a void burner. We were chatting to him last night, weren't we, uh, Brad? Saying he really enjoyed his first foray into blind football as a goalkeeper mm. yesterday. Did himself no uh, no harm yesterday with his uh, with his performances for Merseyside. Yeah, absolutely. He was uh, ready to go for uh, the second day. Here we go. Corner taken. Cuts inside, Karen Seal tried to work an angle, switches back onto his left foot, he tries to force his way into the penalty, it's booted away. Archer. By Archer. Yeah, Liam, Liam's defending has really improved in recent years, you know, he's got a hand on Karen there and he's been patient. He knows he can't win the ball off of Karen while Karen's in possession, but what he can do is he can get a hand on and he can try and push him away from goal. As soon as Karen started to check back for, on the edge of the 6D and trying to go to the near post area, Liam just waited, waited and then he took it, the ball off of Karen. Well done, the young man, Liam Archer. So two corners in quick succession here for Avoid Burner on this near side. Kerry now deep in that corner. He's trying to work an angle, angle up against Archer again. But he's been forced back towards the halfway line. And maybe a chance here to try and break here. Archer now, the number 11, gets towards the edge of the Burner penalty. He shoots from distance. And that one is saved down the centre. But it was good work from Liam Archer. Once again, Liam's everywhere at the moment. He's, he's falling Kerry Seal's side. Karen Seal just switches the play, bounces off the boardings. It's now midway inside the Merseyside half. Williams picks up the ball and heads towards the halfway line, just to the left of the centre circle, runs into Karen Seal. The ball just trickles towards the avoid Burno penalty area. And it's a corner kick, final touch, just coming off the Burno player. And it's a corner for Merseyside, this time on that far side. Again, Robin Williams in a deep position and he picks the ball up in a place where Robin has made a career out of just dribbling into the middle and then assessing his options. And then on that occasion, Kerrin knew he had to get tights early and he did and it was just a ricochet and the ball went loose for corner. Here is Issa, arcing his run, bending his run, he's tripped from yeah, behind. That is a cynical foul, Kerrin. He's just been done for pace by Issa. And in the shift of gears from Issa is obviously an impressive young man at 18. And Karen just can't live with that change of direction and change of pace from the corner. So he's come out, he's assessed his option, and then Karen, he's, he's got put the afterburners on on Karen, and he's had to take him uh, take him down to the floor. It's a bright start from Merseyside. So all four outfield Berno players are back defending this one. Vadura Vladimir comes up towards his uh, his wall. I think he's just come out because there was a little bit of a... I we were just having a little conflab, not too happy with each other. Just come out and said, look, reset. It's only a free kick. We're all about 14 metres out from goal. And, that free and kick, it's yeah. been wasted, yeah. So, again, calm back in the goalkeeper's arms. Vladimir throws the ball out towards this near side. It just hits the boardings. It stays in play. Good work from uh, 
Jan Mrazek just lays the ball off to Jan Bango on the halfway line. He just enters back into his own half. But no real pressure. Jan Bango comes up towards the centre circle. East is just to the right of him. He spreads the ball out towards that right side. He's about five metres away from the corner in the Merseyside half. Kevin Seal with his back to goal just dribbles down. Oh, a lovely turn. Pirouette turn up towards the penalty. He shoots. And that one. Right, so fir first three. Karen Seal has got a good shot off here, but he's been brought back because Liam, um, I think it was Liam Archer. Yeah, it was Liam. Pulled his shirt back, and the shot was saved by Owen Lock for a little kick through save from an, an area that I'd expect him to make a save from, like seven metres on an angle. Just going back to uh, Avoy, they've they've built an attack there with Jan Bangle. They, he's playing in the one the one in the middle of the one one two. Karen Seals playing on the right and you've got Ram Razik playing on the left and that's when they look the most dangerous when they can get Jan Bang on the ball and get Karen Seal and Razik pushed into more advanced positions this is where they're going to cause Merseyside some issues and this ended up evidently winning a free kick here so free kick here for Avoy Berno roughly about 7 metres away from goal just lining up that wall Owen, Owen's down, Owen Lock on the floor, just trying to make sure that he gets the wall in the correct position. He's happy with it before then he takes his position off of, off of where the wall is. And then um, Avoy once again deploying a player in to stand in front as a screen in front of the, uh, the four Merseyside players. There you go, Karen still takes it, shoots, and that one is well wide in the end. Yeah, just needed to, he, with his left foot, just needed to wrap it round, and he didn't quite manage to get the connection that he wanted. And he has certainly had the power, but in these goals, you've got to get the accuracy. Thrown over arm towards this near side, it goes through Williams, but it uh, trickles down the line on bit this more, near side. A bit more care needed on that throw. He's gone inside a Robin there. Owen Lott, just trying to just just trying to make something happen, just trying to force something. Nothing wrong with that. Seal cups up against uh, Issa. And Seal and Issa. <laughs> Lock cut horns once again. It's just rolled back down the line. Issa comes charging in and yeah, wins back brilliant. the ball. Good work from Issa. Goes up towards the penalty area. Shoots and yeah. scores. Brilliant goal from Issa Anjit. That's class. Absolutely brilliant. Because Issa's battled with Karen Seal. On the ball tight. He's rolled the ball back to Jan Bango. Issa's immediately sprinted past Karen to Jan Bango, gone into an altercation and won the ball and come out with the ball, dribbled at pace across the front of uh, Pat, um, across the front of Mikhail Petras, the back player that's been absolutely brilliant for Yavoy in terms of blocking shots and then rifled a shot high into the goal. And a great, great finish from the young man, Issa. Yeah, very, very good. Yeah, brilliant goal from Issa Anjit. And we have our first goal of the day, our first goal in the semi-finals. And here comes uh, Kevin Seal bulldozing his way through, but he's blocked off. And he still chases after the ball alongside Jan Mrazek on this near side, near the corner, flicked in towards the penalty area and out towards that far side. It just comes back off the boardings. Liam Archer up against Jan Bango. Good battle here, deep inside the Merseyside half. Issa is also there to try and support, but Yambango comes away with the ball, he just dribbles out towards her central position, just on the edge of the centre circle, just loses it slightly, but wins it back from Archer. And Yambango plays it all the way out towards that right side. Here is Jan Razek, who's switched out to the right, but Issa is there to cover on, turns away nicely, 180 degree spin, and runs down that left side, he goes over the halfway line, he's going up ahead of steam here, he's up towards the penalty area, he shoots and scores! Oh, Brilliant goal for go. Issa, it's 2-0! From his own half, 180 degree spin off his right shoulder to go past one player. He then has the composure to then come into contact with the next player that he had met from Alvoy. And then he just turns the afterburners on and goes through the gears. And the finish, again, is composure over, over these two finishes, which was lacking a little bit yesterday. Uh, granted, he did score one you know, off his shin, but that there is emphatic. A really good connection on the strike. 2-0. It certainly is, just under 10 minutes gone, and Avoy Berno have work to do. Here's Karen Seal, who tried to switch the play, but the ball was just caught behind him, and he runs into a bit of trouble here, Seal, with Williams right on top of him, and just clears the ball into 
the Merseyside half. Archer with a bit of time here, the number 11, although he's just being pressured here a little bit by Jan Mrazic in the penalty area. Mrazic tries to win the ball back and does so on the edge of the area. Maybe a chance to get a shot off. Mrazic shoots, just doesn't get the connection. Tries to win the ball back and does. There's two on two here, right in the corner, that far side. Jan Mrazic tries to get into the penalty area. There's a bit of 50-50 going on inside the edge of the goalkeeper area. Can there be a shot off? And Owen Locke just safely collects the ball and throws quickly, trying to counter-attack here. Williams, it bounces off the board. It allows Williams just to collect the ball. Just has it on the edge of the centre circle, Williams, as he drifts out to that left side. Now back inside, into the centre circle. Williams now out towards this near side, but under pressure from Bangay, still has possession, but it just runs loose. Yeah, he, Robin doing everything that he always used to do, is assessing his options left and right, assessing, and then he tries to turn the afterburners on, and it's almost like they just misfired there for him as he wanted to go through these normal gears. He just couldn't find it, but just going back to... Um, that last attack there it was Craig Lundberg and uh, Liam Archer that worked collectively together with some uh, communication from Owen Locke just to make sure that Jan Mrazic did not get that opportunity to get contact within the sort of three metres out in the central area from goal um, but yeah the difference so far for me has been the fact that Merseyside have been able to win ball in areas um, from from the Avoy attacks and being so clinical with uh, getting Issa on the ball and he's made two he's been the difference with the first his his two finishes and they've come in such from such tenacity that he's shown but the first one is specifically to win it in where well, Avoy had possession of the ball it looked for all intents and purposes like Avoy were going to be building an attack and um, in the end it ends up finishing in their net and the second one just shows how dangerous he is coming from uh, from from his own half and dribbling at pace. And we saw that in the first uh, semi-final when we had Paul Ruzes, who was of a similar nature with his direct dribbling, uh, with, uh, with sometimes lacking in end product. And certainly Issa has shown that uh, in this game so far that the end product from him has been the difference. So it just remains to be seen now how Avoy are going to approach the, uh, the next sort of nine minutes of the game. So just over four minutes remaining in the first half. Merseyside two avoid burn no nil Lisa Amjid with two brilliant finishes that are separating the two sides work to do now yeah for me it's a case of Steve Cushion just telling his players you know like basics now doing what you're doing doing everything right keep communicating to each other just got a little bit scrappy within the first that last minute there to allow Mrazek to come through for Berno it's going to be a case of reset can we get Jan Bangle some more possession and get players beyond and start pushing Merseyside back again that in a minute it's just not quite happening for them. Kerry Seal takes the touch in the Merseyside half on that far side, turns away from Archer, rolls the ball back into the avoid Berno half, back towards the edge of the Berno penalty area, put under a little bit of pressure though here, and uh, will it, and I think it was Archer actually made the run. Yeah, the problem was that when Kerry Seal went to back heel the ball back to Jan Bango, it wasn't board side, it wasn't tight to the boards, which meant it went inside of Jan Bango and he had to chase back towards his own goal, and that's where the pressure came from Liam, excellent pressure. Aaron Seal takes it again, he's into the centre circle, switched out to this left side. Jan a lot Mrazek better from there. Avoy here. Into the penalty area now, Jan Mrazek just hunting the ball down, but it uh, goes out for a goal kick. That's what they've got to do more, they've got to get Karen or, or Jan Bangu on the ball and get players beyond, that's what they've done there with Jan Mrazek, and that's where then Craig and Liam have got troubles. And they're coming back towards their own goal, trying to put challenges in. Got away with one there. Here's Williams now coming off from this near side into the centre circle, being hunted down by Jan Bango. Has a bit of space now on the halfway line. That left side, he hits it off the board, tries to find the Issa, and the ball's just ricocheted into the penalty. Issa just hunting it down. It's just on the edge of the goalkeeper area. Is it going to be dealt with? It is. Jan Bango just trying to shrug off Issa, but he does well to get goal side. Jan Bango turns away from him on the edge of the centre circle, crosses over the halfway line, enters into the avoid Berno half. He gets closer and closer to the penalty area. He's on the edge of the penalty area. Now Bango shoots! And it just almost uh, loops over Owen Locke and out for a corner kick. It's given a corner, so I'm sorry, we're, we're just slightly off. Got a television monitor right by the goal from where I'm standing, but it looks like he got a touch on that Owen. Well done again. But Jan Bango, again, he's a danger. He just sort of like slints his way left and right, gets down that left-hand side, gets in on that right foot. He's dangerous off that right foot. You know, he's, um, he, he, he is the danger for Avoy at this moment in time, the five, Avo, uh, Jan Bango. Corner taken and it's just looped up into the air. And here a chance here for Merseyside to break. A bit careless with that pass and it's out towards this near side. Here's Archer. 
Oh, and he's uh, pushed from the back from Yambango, and it's going to be a free kick. Definitely, yeah. I mean, again, let's, let's just look at that again. The chip ball come out, and Liam flew out from the from the defensive uh, area from from that corner. Did brilliantly to get onto it so quickly, and then obviously Yambango was coming back to chase him, as as unfortunately just committed a foul there just to slow him down. But again, Merseyside they defended, weathered the storm. William switches the play, it comes back off the boarding. And the 50-50 here is won by Karen Seal, but he concedes the corner. Yeah, Robin Williams has become a provider um, within the last five minutes. He's made a couple of really, really good passes uh, into Issa and into Liam. So That's what he offers you, Robin Williams. He's got so much experience. He's not just a dribbler now. He's, uh, he's become more of a provider now in this side. So here is Issa. Oh, Karen Seal comes flying into the tackle right on the boardings. He knows he cannot give Issa a, a, you know, too much space to work in. He's already uh, taken the ball past him a couple of times uh, already. In his, in his uh, zealousness, is it the word? To, to get to him tight and, and press him early. He, he's just flown in a little bit too early, a little bit, little bit too much aggression and, and slow and given a free kick away. It's a difficult line to tread for Karen and any defender, really, when you've got someone in such a vein of form that Issa is in. It's just so fast off, this, off a sort of standing dribble. Really has developed in the last few years. Credit, credit to the coaches he's been working with. Karen Seal comes flying in on the Issa, and there is another battle for the ball, and ball just rolled back, and it's another corner. So the pressure still being applied from Merseyside in the last minute of the first half. Again, that's why you need your goalkeeper's communication because if that ball has got to go back into that square, it has to make it back into that square or else it's a corner and it's needless possession lost. Williams this time will take the ball and just runs back towards the halfway line. Tries to arc his run towards the edge of the centre circle. Just keeping possession of the ball nicely, Williams. Just trying to run the clock down. Good game management here from Merseyside. Into the centre circle now. Plays the ball forward towards the edge of the penalty. It finds Issa. Issa what pass. And shoots. Oh, he just can't get the connection. Shoots again. And it's smothered by Kadura Vladimir. Excellent pass from Robin Williams. Straight through the heart of the, the Avoy defence to, to where Issa was behind and Issa did gather and get that shot off and the keeper did make a good save. It was a smother really more than anything but again showing Robin Williams, getting Robin Williams into the game, getting him on the ball, getting him in that, into a bit of space and just getting him to pick port balls not just off to Issa but off also up to Liam Archer who's been supporting very well in the Merseyside attack. Very very good first half if you're a Merseyside fan. Yes, yeah, so at half time here in our second semi final, it is Merseyside 2, Avoy Berno 0. And at the moment, it's so far so good. Merseyside on track to potentially play in the final against St. Pauli later on today. Well, myself and Dan will just take a couple of minutes' break and we'll be back with you for the start of the second half.
Welcome back to live coverage here in Bushevitsa, the Bushevitsa Blind Football Cup 2023. It's the second half of our semi-final between Avoy Berno and Merseyside. Merseyside in the purple shirts will be playing from right to left, with Avoy Berno playing from left to right. Berno playing in the black kit, black shirt, shorts and socks. Merseyside in purple shirts, black shorts and purple socks. Merseyside will kick us off, playing from right to left. Boy Berno from left to right. And here we go. Issa stands on the ball, goes to his left, dribbles in towards the centre circle, through the middle of the Avoy Berno half, towards the edge of the penalty area, but it's just been blocked out by Jan Bango. A couple of metres away from the corner, and it's just been passed out of play for a corner kick. Seems to be a running theme of uh, Merseyside's kickoffs at Issa. He seems to find a way to, to get an outcome from it. It's either a goal or a shot or, or a corner on this occasion. And here he goes with the corner. Oh, on that far side, midway inside the avoid Berno half. And a free kick is being given here for avoid Berno. We've got Rainbow on now. Uh, for Liam Archer at the start of this uh, second half and he's looking like Merseyside like going to start with a diamond at the moment with Rainbow at the highest point of it he tries to intercept but he goes past him and uh, Seal tries to latch onto that loose ball he slides in and gathers the ball he has it on the edge of the penalty he plays it across the area towards that far side but no one was in there and uh, Art and uh, Jan Mrazek, I should say, picks up the ball on that far left side. It just ricochets towards the edge of the penalty. Seal takes it nicely with his right foot, tries to drift out towards this right side, but just loses control of the ball and is put under pressure, plays it across towards a more central position on the edge of the area. Williams picks up the ball, turns, goes out towards that far right side, hits the boardings, and is put under pressure from Jan Mrazek in the Merseyside half on that far side. And Mrazek does well just to turn away and gathers the ball, has it on the edge of the penalty. Oh, Sliding wow. tackle comes in. Now, Craig, first of all, Avoy's, um, Avoy had a very good spell of possession in the, the high up in the Merseyside half of several flat switches coming across the edge of the six. And it was very difficult for um, six metre D, very difficult for uh, Merseyside to defend. Good period of possession. And then just there, uh, Craig Lundberg actually went full, fully to ground with a sliding tackle and Jan Mrazek he actually took the ball but you cannot slide in like that in blind football um, it's dangerous and in the free kick has just been given on the edge of the 6D just off the centre to the left side as you look at the goal yeah, it certainly is and uh, Jan Mrazek just standing behind Karen Seal Seal has the ball sandwiched in between his feet and the, uh, the wall is almost uh, directly in front of the goal. Yeah, it will be here. Um, the, the wall has to be back at, at, this, at the right distance. And so now Owen Glock's got an issue where he has to now decide where he's going to put the wall uh, to block out his near, his near post. And then he's going to have sight, always have sight of the ball as Karen Seal now stands over this. Yeah, there's the wall, and then in between you've got Owen Lock, who's just down on his uh, on his knees, and then Yam Bango. So, yeah. lots going on. Yam Bango creating a screen to make it tough for uh, Owen in goal here. So the taps just being made, and here we go. Karen Seal shoots. It's saved. It's in the goalkeeper area. It's still loose. It's in the penalty area, and it's cleared away. Excellent from Owen Lock in goal. Split made a save. Bounced up quickly. Dealt with the second one. Yeah, Mrazek on the edge of the area, shoots, and that one is just sliced, and it goes wide. So the deal with it, Merseyside, good work from the young keeper. Yeah. Caused this Jan Bango there, he, he dealt with it well. That throw just a bit too much power on that, and it uh, goes, runs all the way to the other side of the pitch. Don't mind that so much from Owen, because he's trying uh, to get a, a long throw not to the board side but just inside and make something happen if that ball was controlled by uh, I believe it was Rainbow was the highest point there and there's an opportunity for Rainbow to go straight in on goal so don't mind that at all for Merseyside it's just about composing themselves again and Avoy are going to be feeling pretty good about the start of this half so it ricochets off the boardings and into the Avoy Berno penalty but just runs out of space and out for the goal kick 
that one obviously will be a little bit disappointing because there, when you're throwing as a keeper, you're looking to go board side. You're looking for it to tug the board so that the player who you're trying to hit's feet, the ball stays on the boards. There's an art to that. He's not quite learning that yet, but remember, this is his first tournament he's, and his, his shot stopping ability is not in question so far. He's been very impressive in goal for Merseyside. Here is Williams just on the edge of the centre circle, runs into his uh, teammate Rainbow and, and lack of communication there. Stationary and Jan Razek comes forward, he comes closer and closer to the penalty here but he's picked up by Issa. Issa now has a bit of chance to run into space and tries to break through two avoid Berno players and it goes towards the edge of the Berno penalty area. But there's three players swarming around Issa but Issa still has control of the ball out towards this near side. He's been pressurised by Karen Seal, tight to the boardings inside the... Uh, Avoid Berno half, and the ball's just rolled all the way over towards that far side, level with the halfway line. Oh, and Williams does well to turn away from two Merseyside players. He advances forward, shoots from distance, oh. and it's safely into the hands of the keeper, and he throws overarm. Vintage uh, 180 pirouette turn from Robin Williams, taking two players out of the game, and then uh, as I spoke to Robin at half time, he just said, I haven't got the afterburners anymore <laughs> to get past, go, go quicker towards the goal, and he ended up shooting from about 10 metres out, not so with the right uh, shot either. Ball was in the Merseyside penalty, picked up by Issa, space to run into over the halfway line, through the centre circle, through the middle of the avoid Berno half, but it's a good challenge from Yambango, picks it up. And now he runs into a bit of a space and goes into the centre circle, goes past Issa, goes past Rainbow. He's midway inside the Merseyside half, trying to get to the penalty, but he's been blocked out by two Merseyside players. And then he's and a, wins the free kick. Yeah, he's just as there the ball just ran away and he just he knew that he was he's disappointed that the ball had run away from him so he started to overreach for the ball and bundled robin williams out of the way and that is you can't do that and that's another free kick to uh, merseyside again but this there i'll come back to that robin williams he he said at half times me you know don't i do the right things i'm doing the basics right and that's exactly what you're seeing from robin you're seeing more of a sort of deeper role a playmaking role just as he's done here playing the ball through the middle so the ball just runs loose and out of play. Through Issa's legs. That was nearly straight to him. So he'd be disappointed he didn't control that one. But again, Robin Williams turning provider at the moment. Seal runs down this near side. Plays a cross field ball out towards the left side. It's in the Merseyside half. Mrazek up against Williams. Williams battles away well. And Rainbow comes away with it on this left side. He goes over the halfway line past Kerrin Seal. He has a bit of space here. If he can gather the ball. Just trickling towards the corner, he just couldn't gather it, and it goes out for a goal kick. Badura now with the throw out towards this right side. Kevin Seal midway inside his own half, a switch of play out to that left. It just uh, comes off the boardings and a bit of space now. With Jan Razek who just plays it back down the line onto the halfway line. Jan Bango heads in field towards the centre circle, out towards this right side, midway inside the Mersey side half. And Kerry Seal tries to turn back inside onto his right foot, but he just loses control of the ball and it goes out of better play. Better from Avoy Bear. You see that, that passage of play, a couple of passes and then tried to release Kerry Seal on the right hand side and unfortunately Kerry just did not manage to get his first touch correct. It just came away from him. Issa now just on the edge of his own penalty area, slightly left of centre, just prods the ball down the centre of the pitch towards the edge of the avoid penalty area. Can it be picked up by Rainbow? Well, the touch comes off one of the... Uh, Michel Petrus. Petrus. Yeah, Petrus at the back. He had to make that as well. It's a lovely little sort of flicked ball from Issa that into that area in the middle, just off the of centre, where it's a, it's a defender like Petrus will be operating in the middle area. And Issa was just um, flicking it into Rainbow, who was up there and causing causing um, a bother for Petrus and in the end it's just won a corner very good uh, drives into the penalty has a chance maybe to get the shot away sliding challenge from yeah, Jan Bango you can't do that Jan Bango Ace is so fast uh, off, of, off a standing start he's gone right across about four metres across the D and Petrus has slid in front of him trying to block it because he's he just wants to stop him <laughs> and it's very it's difficult it's desperation it's desperation yeah it's yeah. desperation and where we are, there's a monitor right in the corner, so we can just we're watching the monitor and just seeing Issa change gear. It's a it's a joy to watch mm. the 18 year old. He's so so quick off a standing start and dribble. Yeah, yeah, I've overheard a conversation with uh, with Robin talking about going through the gears. Well, that man certainly can. Yeah, but it's it's a it's a it's an art to be able to do that, remaining in control of the football. I mean, the people, uh, players that will try to go through the gears, but they'll leave the ball behind or it'll clip their heel and it will be left. Whereas with Issa at the moment, it's it's a it's a natural sort of one two three four five gear. Mm. You know, it's just nice and smooth. Always seems to have control of the ball. 
So this free kick is right on the edge of the penalty area. And the wall is just set to the left of the goalkeeper. Vladimir Vadura, he's standing in the centre of his goal. Here we go. Issa shoots. Oh, and that one is wide. It came early. It was a snapshot. But that one is wide of the right post. Just wide. Thrown out towards that left side. It just rolls into the path of Yambanga. Goes through his legs. He's up against Rainbow. That's a good battle out on that far side on the halfway line. Rainbow just uh, gets the ball back down the line. But it's in the Merseyside half. Williams just trying to come away with the ball. Yambango fighting for it. There's two on two here. Yambango comes away with it. He's sent to the Merseyside half. He dribbles towards the edge of the penalty. Just trods on the ball. Loses it. And Issa has a chance to break away over the halfway line. He comes to the left of the centre circle. Out towards this left side. He gets towards the penalty area. But it's a good last-ditch challenge from Kerrin Seal. Oh, I've heard that a lot of times over the years. He <laughs> last-ditch tackle from Kerrin Seal. Um, that one was excellently timed as Issa just tried to dart back inside before he was going about to unleash a uh, ferocious shot from inside the four metres. Last ditch tackle from Karen Seal. Well done. So just uh, over four minutes remaining in the second half. Issa now again trying to work some space. The tackle comes in from Karen Seal. Full hearted, full blooded from Karen Seal and just prods the ball forward even further towards the Merseyside penalty area. It rolls towards the goalkeeper area as Jan Razik just came sneaking in behind. He did indeed. He tried to uh, gather the ball and create an opportunity, but he just couldn't. And it goes out for the goalkeeper. And uh, Owen Locke just uh, throws the ball under arm towards that far side, towards Williams. They're still in their own half, Merseyside, on the edge of their own penalty. Williams plays the ball forward down the centre of the pitch. And it just runs out of play. Goalkeeper with the possession for Avoy. I can hear Craig Lundberg from the commentary box in that back position, screaming to get the shape off of him. It's so, so important to have a back man that's communicating to, to the rest of the players to bring them back into shape. And that ball, ball just rolls safely into the hands of Owen Locke for Merseyside. His all orange kit on Owen Locke. And it's just picked up, picked up by Yambango. Comes forward centrally the Merseyside half. Heads towards the penalty area. He's been thwarted though by Issa. And Owen Yambango still really trying to win back that ball and wins the corner kick. Good, tenacious play from Bango. Yeah, Owen Locke just trying to force when there's not really any need to um, with his throw there. He, he just, just tried to rush it um, and threw the ball, trying to get, trying to get. I think it was Rainbow in who was behind and Yambango just stepped in, took it, bring it all the way back towards the Merseyside goal there and managed to win himself uh, in his team a corner. Corner comes in towards the edge of the penalty area. Maybe a chance to break here. Put the pressure on. Ball just trickles out of play. Yeah, good defender from Merseyside there. Robin Williams has just cut that, that ball out across the box. And just let it all go all the way back down the pitch. Ball thrown out towards this set near side. Karen Seal frustrated. Yeah, it wasn't the best of throws to him, but should be controlling those. He said goes to his right, midway through the avoid burner half, shoots from distance, and that one is wide. Yeah, he just shot a little bit too early there, Acer, but again, just quickly be beating two players off of off of the shoulder and getting an early shot away. So a battle here between Seal and Rainbow on this near side, a couple of metres away from the corner in the avoid half. The ball just ricochets into the centre circle. Who's going to pick up the loose ball? It's uh, basically stationary now. It is Yambango picks it up, goes to his left of Rainbow out towards that far side, cuts back inside. He's about 10 metres away from goal. He shoots, and uh, that one is blocked and out corner for a kick corner kick. A bit of desperation again, creeping in here, shooting from too far out. And that one was blocked. They've managed to get an outcome, but 10 metres out and score, trying to score past Owen Lock from them. 97 That's to be something special. Yeah, nice little turn from Karen Seal. Chance maybe to see if they can get a shot away. Been put under pressure though. Merseyside are back in numbers. And here comes Issa just trying to get away from Yambango. The ball's prodded back into the Merseyside penalty. It just rolls towards the corner on this near side. Corner and it's ball. another corner kick for Berno. It's now or never really for Voy Berno if they want to have some time to try and force this to penalties. A minute remaining as the seconds tick by. Corner kick.
And the ball's just still on this near side. And uh, Jan Mrazic comes away. It comes into the penalty. Great tackle from Issa. And now maybe a chance for uh, Merseyside to run into the avoid burner half of Rainbow. Rainbow's about uh, just on the edge of the penalty. It just loses it at the critical moment. But there is a last touch from Petulus. And it goes out for a corner. And that should be that. What I love seeing about it, um, we talk a lot about his attacking talents and his change of pace and his direction and, and how quick he can go through the gears. But once again, it, he's back there defending Issa that time in his shape and winning the ball for his team and getting another opportunity to, to build an attack here on this corner see the game out now 10 seconds left 10 seconds remaining and the Merseyside are just uh, rolling down the clock seconds to go here and there we go Merseyside are through to the Bushevich Sublime Football Cup final they will take on St Pauli in the final it was another really entertaining match and it was two moments of brilliance from Issa Amjid who separated these two sides but it is Merseyside who are through to the Bushevich Sublime Football Cup final yeah I, I, I want to say first and foremost I think that Avoy have had a uh, you know they've, they've again once again created some opportunities um, Merseyside weathered that storm Owen Lott made two good saves um, but again the young man Issa he was the difference uh, his the dribble the dribbles from him the, the, the two the, the one that he created from himself when he when he managed to uh, take rob the ball off of uh, between Karen Seal and Jan Bango and when it looked like Avoy for all intents and purposes were going to keep possession of the ball and he took that towards the goal and obviously dispatched it with a plum. And then the second goal, you got to see a little bit of his individual brilliance from deep area, where he's in that 180 pirouette to take out the, 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 the press early and then take his dribble and take it all the way up to the other end and, and finish it. With at, the, the finish was absolutely superb, better than even the first one, which he lifted into the top corner. This one was dispatched right into the side netting of the goal. Um, and again, second half performance, it was a case for Merseyside of just trying to be you know defensively resolute working together communicating doing the basics right which is what they did um, and Avoy really didn't they puffed and puffed but there wasn't really any mm. real opportunity well actually they made the one chance didn't they off of Owen Locke yeah. of the free kick um, which he made a really good save off of once again um, but yeah it was, um, it's going to be an interesting intriguing final where you've got players in both teams that are going to be outlets dribbling from deep dribbling from areas and causing issues you've got um, the, the the team work the team play that the how they how they're going to pass and the intricacies of how they're going to bring others into the game it's not just a case of two individual players for one of one on each team it's definitely going to be who who works better as a team is going to win that final but um, thoroughly enjoyable something to look for well, it's a thoroughly enjoyable game to look mm. forward to this afternoon but we've got another game, haven't we? We certainly well, have. We've got a couple more games before that final. We've got our two placement matches. And uh, our next one will be our fifth to sixth placement match between Thessaloniki and Obersvau Vienna. And that will be coming up next. But just to confirm to you, our bronze medal match will be Anderlecht against Avoy Berno. And our final to wrap up the Bouchevets Blind Football Cup final will be against St. Pauli and Merseyside. But we'll be back with you in a few moments time for our 56 placement match.
Well, a very warm welcome back to live coverage here at Bucevica for the Bucevica Blind Football Cup 2023. It's our first of the placement matches. It's our fifth and sixth placement match between Obersval Vienna against Persos Thessaloniki. So these two teams are out on the pitch with Vienna playing in their white tops with black slashed down the sleeves with black shorts and red socks. As for Thessaloniki playing in their red tops with a black and white stripe going through the centre of their shirt, on the chest region of their shirts with black shorts and white socks. The goalkeeper for Thessaloniki is in the luminescent yellow top with black joggers. As for Vienna, the uh, Tanya Hengel, the goalkeeper for Vienna in a chain strip today, an orangey coloured shirt with lime green goalkeeper gloves, uh, black joggers and orange socks. It will be Vienna who will be playing from right to left from our position here in the commentary box and Thessaloniki playing from left to right from our position here on the, in the commentary box and on the live stream. Our two referees, uh, Christian and Michael, just going through the final preparations. They are wearing their turquoise light blue tops with black shorts and black socks. And it is uh, Traore who is standing over the ball with his ball sandwiched in between his two feet in the centre circle, who will kick us off from right to left. And off we go. Traore goes to his right, out towards that far side. He's just inside the Thessaloniki half. And he makes his way through there, the midfield, and he's intercepted. And Traore tries to win the ball back. It's still in the Persos half. A build battle for the ball, still just inside the Persos half on that far side. It's now into the Vienna half. Just kicked forward slightly. And it's still in uh, possession of Vienna, back towards the halfway line. Just to the left of the centre circle, ball prodded forward and it's just an air shot from the Thessan Leakey striker that goes out for a goal kick. You know, uh, uh, he's trying to link play as he did yesterday uh, trying to bring uh, Dimitrios into play there. Didn't quite work out for him but good bright start. Thessalonica first minute. Soliok picks up the ball just to the left of the centre circle, comes out to this left side midway inside the Persos half as the tackle comes in. Kulis uh, clears the ball forward out towards that far side. Space here for Traore to try and pick up that loose ball as it cannons off the uh, the barrier, but picked up on the halfway line, prodded forward, and a chance here for Thessaloniki to break in the Vienna half, but just brought back towards the centre circle. Ark in his run now towards the penalty area. Shot on goal, and it's saved in the midriff from Tanya Hengel. Dimitrios once again, he's, he is a danger uh, up front for Persos. He was in the walls yesterday. <laughs> he was on the floor a few times, but certainly he showed that, you know, that early goal he scored yesterday. He is a danger. He is a threat. Dimitrios takes over responsibility and runs through towards the penalty area. Soliok just puts her body in the way in front of Dimitrios towards the penalty area. It comes out towards this near side, a couple of metres from the corner. Two minutes gone so far. Nil-nil. Battle for the ball here, Dimitrios and Soliok inside the Vienna half, deep inside the Vienna half. Who's going to come out on top? And it's just prodded across the pitch towards that far side. It stayed in play. It's still in the penalty area and it's half cleared away up the field, but it's still in the Vienna half, searching for the ball, trying to locate the ball. And it's still on that far left, on that far right side for Traore. It's back to goal, facing his goal, trying to turn away from trouble. The ball just runs loosely towards that corner it's still picked up but it's by Thessaloniki this time the number 13 up against two Vienna players just sweeps the ball out towards this near side it's on the halfway line just inside the uh, Thessaloniki half 50-50 here for the ball Dimitrios picks up the loose ball can he run with it can he create an angle he's tight to the corner on this near side turns away prods it towards the edge of the 
penalty area and it's cleared all the way out towards that far side. Traore putting on the pressure, wins the ball inside the Persos half. Traore put under pressure from two players. He's about five meters inside the Persos half. He escapes and goes in towards the center circle, comes forward and the ball's just run loose all the way out towards his left side now. Traore up against the barrier in the Persos half, trying to turn away from his man. Traore still with possession of the ball, tries to work into a more central position, tries to wrap the ball around and come back inside, but he can't do it. And there's a two on two battle on the edge of the centre circle in the Persos half as the ball just rolls out towards that left side. It's on the halfway line. Played across the centre circle out towards this right side. Dimitrios tries to pick up the loose ball. He's up against two Vienna players. Ball's just played back towards the Vienna penalty area. Ball just was uh, slowly rolling out of play, and it is with the goalkeeper. Just under four minutes gone in this 56th placement match. The ball's thrown out towards this left side. Traore just crashes into the barrier, and it goes out again for a goal kick, this time for Thessaloniki. Yeah, not quite able to get control of that this time, Traore. But he is the threat, he is the danger. He's been at the heart of most of the good things that Austria have done in this tournament. Yeah, scored a really good goal against Anderlecht yesterday. Smashed it in. And the ball's over on that far left side. It's in the Vienna half. Ball's played out towards his near side. Right in front of the commentary box. Right in front of us here. Suljok with her back to goal. Trying to get away from her man. Plays it forward but it's intercepted it's back into the Vienna half just to this action all happening just in front of the centre circle in the Vienna half two on two as the ball just lands at the feet of Traore can he uh, get control of the ball he can but it goes all the way out towards that right side he's just inside the Thessaloniki half and a 50-50 here battle for the ball it just rolls back into the centre circle just prodded forward so look gathers the ball again for Vienna tries to turn with the ball comes out towards this near side so look for Austria being put under pressure right in front of us here in the commentary box on this near side. It goes over the halfway line, back into the Vienna half. Another 50-50 battle. Traore is everywhere, as is Dimitrios. Dimitrios tries to turn onto his left foot, get away from Traore, but Traore just sweeps him to one side and heads over towards that far right side of the pitch. You're right, he is everywhere at the minute, and he's uh, he needs a bit more support. I think Suliuk's going to support on this side. Suliok uh, picks up that loose ball from uh, Traore and heads towards the centre circle. Just gets the ball caught behind her and it's just prodded away and out for a goal kick here for Austria. That's what, what Traore is going to need. Is he's going to need support from Suliok and the rest of the team. And Guerin Hubert is certainly not going to be able to do this on his own. Here is Traore once again. He's on the edge of the centre circle in his own half, being tracked all the way though. And he's lost possession of the ball. Thessaloniki win it back and it's now on the edge of the penalty area. Can Dimitrios win the ball back? It just trickles into the penalty area and goes back for the goalkeeper for Austria. Thrown out towards this near side, lands at the feet of Suljok, who takes it down nicely. Good first touch, heads towards the centre circle, just can't get the pass away and he's been hunted down. Thessaloniki win the ball back, but a space to run into. Now for Thessaloniki, and the shot comes from distance, but scuffs it into the hands of Tanya Hengel. Long way out there for the attempted shot as the throw is all the way out towards that right side. Traore tries to beat two players, and he does so successfully. Gets into a more central position. He heads towards the penalty. Can he get the shot away, Traore? It's good defensive covering on the edge of the penalty area. Just couldn't get that shot away as the ball rolls out towards this left side, deep in the corner. Seven minutes gone, nil-nil. And Suljok wins the ball back. She has it on the edge of the Thessaloniki penalty. There's three Greek players around it, though, and clears the ball out towards that left side. Ball over the halfway line. Maybe a chance to break here. Dimitrios now, can he keep the ball in play? Yes, he can. Just does well. On this near side, he heads back towards the halfway line. He's midway inside the Austria half, twisting, turning, trying to work an angle. Just prods it into the penalty area, and it's just picked up comfortably. Mm. Direct play from Persos there, and, and Dimitrios is a threat, but again, he just didn't get any sort of connection with that shot at all. And it's just trickled through, and the chance is gone again now. 
better support here from Austria. And there you go. So in that moment, Daniela Anguera was supporting uh, back down the boards and you had Suliak across the pitch with Traore. He was waiting, paying patient on the ball, waiting to try and find a gap for him to be able to, to bring them into play. And he's, he's run a free kick. Done excellent there, there, Traore, once again for his team. Here's Traore. Passes it out to this left side. It just goes through the legs of Sulia. She takes another touch, but is being uh, hounded on this near side, being put under pressure, Sulia. That's right. She, she she is offering an option, though. That, this is good. And what only the difference? Of, the only thing that really I can say is that she just patient-wise, she just takes a little bit too long at the moment to control and then decide what she's gonna if she's gonna dribble. And it's just taking that extra fraction second too long, which is allowing the pressure to come from Jakulis or allowing the pressure to come from Ampatsis. So um, if she can tidy that, that first touch up, that's, um, then Suliak would be in an op with an opportunity to either dribble down the line or, or to bring others into play, as she's done here. Ball's prodded forward. It's into the uh, Persos penalty. A Traore running onto it, just couldn't control it. Nearly got it though, nearly. That was a very good pass actually into that corridor of, corridor of uncertainty, the angle between the angle ball and it going into the area in the square area between the, the sort of four metres in the middle of the goal um, where Traore he was lurking at the back post. <laughs> so just over nine minutes gone, it is nil-nil in our fifth to sixth placement match. I think technically um, what we're seeing here is first touches haven't been good enough to start attacks quick enough. Um, so really I'd be saying if I was a coach of either side here, I'd be saying, look, I just need to go back to our basics of controlling the ball quicker and then our decision making can then follow from that process. At the moment, the balls are ricocheting off the boards. We're not getting our first touches, which is inviting pressure to come in. And that's what's making the game a little bit more scrappy than it needs to be. Um, when there have been good passages on play, it's because the first touches have been good and, the, and then the decision making of whether to switch or whether to dribble solo has has been a better one but um, we're just seeing a few too many missed touches at the moment so hopefully we can just coaches can get that into them in this time out so we're going to restart here with the goalkeeper for Thessaloniki after that timeout Nine minutes and seven seconds gone. So there will be a goal clearance by Thessaloniki. Thrown out towards that far left side. It comes off the boardings and into the Vienna half. Picked up and number 13 for Thessaloniki. Turns on the ball. Just heads back towards the centre circle. Spreads the play out towards this near side. Goes in front of Philip Huber. An obstruction call has been call has been given against uh, Philip Huber, and it's going to be a free kick here for Thessaloniki. So it's right up against uh, the board here on this near side, about midway inside the Vienna half, but a good opportunity as we approach the 10-minute mark in the first half. Three players in the wall. Just lined up in the penalty area. Seem a long way back. Mm. And off we go. Mitrios trying to work an angle, comes more centrally up. Traore's uh, pounce on that ball, but uh, the ball's just been played down that left side, and that feels like a chance wasted, really, for uh, Thessaloniki. Thrown. Over arm, above head height. Picked up by Huber. Good first touch. Goes towards the centre circle. Just chips it forward, but uh, yeah. too much power on that one, and it That's goes. What we were out. talking about though, better first touch, and then it just allows the next, you know, the next action to take place. And just that, unfortunately, that was not the pass that we, what he was looking for. But the area of the pass would have been good. It's Traore was lurking in that area up there. On the halfway line now, into the centre circle. Nice little turn away. Turning to his left, Traore puts a leg in, but he's still going, number 13, up towards the edge of the penalty, but just has the ball caught behind him. Goalkeeper Austria. And it's with the goalkeeper for Austria, throws over the halfway line towards that far side, hits the, the boarding, goes down the line. 
A scream of frustration from Traore, but he's battling away from the ball once again in front of the floodlight on that far side, and it's cleared away out towards this near side. A little bit of a wind just coming across the playing surface now, a bit of a chill in the air as it goes into the Thessaloniki half, cleared away into the Austria half now on that far side. Just a reminder that Thessaloniki playing from left to right from our position, Vienna from right to left. Mario Gulmai is onto the pitch for Austria. The ball just trickles into the goalkeeper area and just cleared away first time. On the left foot of Tanya Hengel down the pitch. Philip Huber comes racing into the uh, Thessaloniki half to put the pressure on. Ball's just played forward to the edge of the penalty. Maybe a chance here to shoot. Oh, and just scuffs it. There's Dimitrios into the penalty area. Good opportunity. Really good chance that. You know, he's come onto that ball. It's a loose ball that he's running, that's going towards the goal, and it's not going to get to Tanya Hengel's area. And he's got there first, Dimitrios, and his connection onto a, onto a loose ball. He just needed to hit the target with a side foot there. But just wasn't able to do that. That's probably the closest that they've come. Uh, best chance that they've had. Thessalonica. He'll be disappointed with that, Dimitrios. So two and a half minutes remaining in the first half. Just got a uh, referee's timeout here. Shoelace. So it currently is nil-nil in this 56th placement match. And we'll restart throw from the goalkeeper underarm towards this near side it runs down the line bit of space here for Dimitrios to run onto if he can control the ball he does so but he heads towards the barrier he's a couple of meters from the corner deep inside the Vienna half but it's good defensive work in the end Philip Huber but Dimitrios wins it back it's a really good tussle between these two Huber falls to the ground the ball's just loose on the edge of the Vienna penalty area can it be cleared away a couple of shots come in but this ball's been missed and it's uh, Played all the way up to that left side. Now, chance again from the shot from distance. Jakulis. And it's saved. Just a bit, a few shots that Jakulis has had have just been a bit too far out to uh, to trouble Tanya Engel in, in the Austrian goal. But he is everywhere. Lucky he's won it back again. And here is Jakulis. Comes forward up towards the edge of the penalty. Takes the shot. It's slightly deflected, but into the hands of the keeper down the middle of the goal. She's been busy, is Daniel Hengel, so far, but uh, hasn't put a foot wrong so far. Intercepted. Oh, and missed, and Kukulis comes forward. Gulmaya just pulled back. Kukulis, uh, good battle there on that left side in the Vienna half. Spread out towards this right side, just on the halfway line. Slightly back into the Persos half. There's a two-on-one battle in favour of the Austrian side inside the Persos half. And the ball's just run loose again. This time it's in the Vienna half. Here is Philip Huber, just slightly kicks the ball forward, keeps hold of possession and plays it forward down the line. Back onto the halfway line now. All this play happening in the midfield. Huber, he's, he's, he's battling for the ball, he's constantly up and down, not quite got hold of it. And Jakulis is out. Jakulis, can he uh, make some space? He just turns on the ball, goes towards the penalty, gets the shot away, but it just dribbles into the path. Tanya Hengel, she throws it quickly towards Traore on that right side, it hits the boarding but into the shins of Traore, he tries to turn inside, he's just thwarted though. Traore still though battling away, goes down that right side, can he create an angle, he shoots from distance and it's blocked. Uh, substitution of both teams, uh, the, the team Austria, the player number 19 goes out, 19 from Austria goes out, and the player from Greece, from Thessaloniki, Number three goes out. So Philip Huber comes in Greece, off the the for goes Vienna. And in Austria, Dimitrios the comes, comes off goes for three. Thessaloniki. It's our man Luanis Papalaku, the 53 year old Greek former international player. You mentioned yesterday that you played against him, is that right? In my debut yeah. in 2006, yeah. yeah, yeah. First game of blind football in Thessalonica was against uh, a little pre, little sort of four-way tournament and Greece was one of the teams. And the first game I ever played was against Greece. And uh, yes, the young one. 
Uh, the, the younger Loanis was playing in that. <laughs> it's a goal's draw. Well, it's half time then here in our 56th placement match at the Butsovic Blind Football Cup. And it is nil nil, arguably the best chance falling for Dimitrios for Thessaloniki to take that lead in the first half. But overall, not many clear cut chances. There's been more shots for certain from Thessaloniki. And uh, Trevor is just, I think we've mentioned it a few times, just feels like he's just been a bit isolated once again in this game. Yeah, he has been. Um, and I I'm surprised that they haven't tried to, to, to sort of support Traore a little bit more now um, with with uh, Suliuk. And when, when, when they have managed to do that, they have looked like stringing some first touch. It was like I said, that's where they needed that mm. first touch because Suliuk and Daniela Anguera when she was on, they started to support him a little bit higher and help him out and give him some options. And that's when um, they started to have a period of possession for about 45 to a minute where they looked like they could string a few passes together. But it's mainly, mainly been Thessalonica who have, yeah. who have certainly been in the ascendancy. They've won, had more possession of the ball. They've had some shots. Yes, granted, they've not. They've been a bit too far. Actually, mm. Koulis has been, uh, you know, involved in some of the good stuff that mm. in regards to winning the ball back and, and getting some shots off but it is the it's the um in front of goal they just need a little bit more composure um and he, that showed with dimitrios there he, he rushed the shot that he had it ran onto it and instead of taking a touch he just swung a boot at it first time um i think Thessalonica could probably be the happier of the two sides at half time but again evenly poised match we've got the nil nil at this moment 15 minutes left and in the second half, if the coaches can impart some of their wisdom onto onto Austria and say, look, can we get a few more bodies forwards? Can we support Traore? He's he is a fall in anyone's side. You know, you showed yesterday that he is a danger to Anderlecht. He scored a really good goal yesterday from the halfway line. He shows that he can dribble. If you give him a little bit of space and time, he's got a ferocious shot. Um, but yeah, again, he just needs a little bit more help. So at half time then in our fifth to sixth placement match, just to confirm, it is nil nil, and of course. The fifth and sixth places up for grabs. Well, and certainly the fifth place, of course, up for grabs in this one. So the second half will be coming up in a few moments' time. But myself and Dan will just take a short break before we get the second half underway.
So we are back underway here with Thessaloniki playing from right to left. And uh, they're coming forward straight from the kickoff towards the edge of the penalty area. Shot comes in, but it's missed and it's cleared away. So Thessaloniki playing from right to left with Austria playing from left to right in this second half. Drury just comes on the ball, charges forward, just gets the ball caught between his feet and it just rolls all the way towards this near side. Thrown over arm, overhead height towards this near side. It just comes off the board and taken down nicely. And uh, cleared away out towards that far right side of the pitch. So look up against uh, Salman Luanis over there. Luanis putting his body on the line. So look wins it back and on the halfway line comes forward. Tackle comes in. It's a successful tackle and it's onto the centre circle up towards this left side. Coolest number 13 coming forward to the left of the centre circle, enters into the centre circle, just stands on the ball, goes back over the halfway line into his own half, now into the Vienna half, nice tight control from Gakoulis, goes past another, as Nomi is onto the pitch now for Austria. It's tight in the corner on this near side. Corner kick, the Sonic yeah, One in the corner there. So first corner of this second half goes the way of Vienna. Just lining up that uh, wall, Tanya Hengel. And here is Johannes who tries to get the cross in, but uh, misses it. And Troy maybe has a chance here to have a run at uh, the Thessaloniki defence. Troy over the centre circle. He's midway inside the penalty half. He comes towards the penalty area, takes the shot from distance. It takes a deflection and it goes out for a corner. He was pushed out wide and he got the shot in. It would have to have been a a really good effort to have beaten the keeper from that angle. He has got a powerful shot as a uh, as own tri as Triore, and um, he he gets a little nick on that as it went through. I've seen those end up in the net over the over the years, you know, because it all it sometimes takes is a little t a little deflection to unsight a keeper or to, to to deflect it in towards the goal, especially when you're shooting with the power that that he has. Here is uh, Troy coming towards the edge of the penalty here from the corner. Good, uh, tenacious work though from Thessaloniki up towards the boardings on that far side. A real battle for the ball happening. Very tight to the boardings. Just the ball's been rolled down the line. It's still in the uh, Thessaloniki half. Vienna still with possession. So look, just uh, passes the ball out towards this near side. It just comes off the board. Thessaloniki now midway inside their own half, coming up towards the centre circle. Troy just puts his big body in the way and just palms yeah. Gakoulis away. He's a powerful, he's a powerful, yeah, uh, powerful player, definitely. He's, he's very, very tall as well. Out on that far right side, here's Suljok, just back heels it down the line in towards the Thessaloniki half and it's cleared away up towards the halfway line. Into the centre circle, Thessaloniki with possession, trying to get through Nomi. Up towards the edge of the penalty, the shot comes in, he just falls over and actually Nomi collapses over the top of him. Gokoulis gets the shot off from distance, that one is wide at the left post. We said it a few times now that the shots are just coming from a little bit too far out. Again, it's just... They're not advancing the play quick enough. They're not getting enough. Even Persos are not getting enough players in front of and building play. So the shots are coming from a from a, are comfortable positions for goalkeepers to make the saves. So the ball's just uh, in the on the edge of the centre circle in the oh. Thessaloniki half, and it's just out towards this near side. Can Traore pick up the ball? Yes, he can. Traore. He's up against three players, needs some help. Nomi's back down the line. Troy tries to break through that Thessaloniki defence, but it's cleared away out towards that right side. Soljok chases onto the ball on the halfway line. She's just inside their own half. Tight to the barrier on that far side. Now, we need a, now she needs options. Where are her options? She's, got, she's had to turn herself down brilliantly to do so. She certainly has, and she plays the ball forward. It just rolls gently towards this near corner and goes out of play. See, see there, you know, in some, what we've seen from St. Pauli and we've seen it from Mersey's side of when those situations happen, the clinch situations on the boards, there are options behind, there's an option across the pitch, there's an option higher up the pitch at some times. So there's op multiple options and then you've got your individual brilliance that you've had to see from Suliok there because she doesn't have those options. 
Here is Nomi inside his own half on this right side, tries to get past his man. It's right in front of us here in the commentary box. Nomi. Ball's just been tapped by the referees. It's stationary with Kukulis picks up the loose ball. He, sh he shoots. Oh, and it was an awkward one for Tanya Hengel. Just bounced right in front of her. She had to really get her body in the way. That's Does right. Well. Yeah, she watched it really well. Those ones that dip on you late. Gotta watch them all the way. And it's now deep inside the Thessaloniki half. Nomi puts the pressure on right in the corner. 20 minutes gone here. Nil-nil. Traore now has maybe a bit of space here. Let's try and turn. Gokoulis is right on him. Traore just lays the ball off onto the barrier. Suljok opens up some space in the centre circle. Can she find some room? Nomi picks up the pieces on this right side. Put under immediate pressure though. It's good gritty defensive work so far from Thessaloniki. No way through at the moment for Vienna. Nomi on this near side. The ball's just run loose and maybe a chance here for Thessaloniki to break forward. Kukulis just steps on the ball, comes forward. He's midway inside the Vienna half. Again, just checks on the ball, goes towards the edge of the penalty. He shoots, it's blocked, and it's out towards that left side. Kukulis now just sprays the ball out towards this left side, the near There's side. Nobody the pitch, there. But there is no one to pick up that ball. And now Nomi with some space to run into. He's over the halfway line. Can he get towards the penalty? He keeps going, Nomi. The ball's just behind him, and the tackle comes in, and it's cleared away. Is this game just starting to open up now? As the ball rolls all the way across the penalty area and out. It has become a little bit more stretched in the last minute. Nomi there nearly nearly managing to get through. It was better from Jakulis in the previous attack as well because he dribbled, he put his foot on the ball, he dribbled again, put his foot on. And the reason why he's doing that is because he's trying to offset the defender, getting them to overstep, overcommit, and then he'll pick the gap off of the, off, that he, he feels has been created by that overstep from the defender. It's a move that he has practiced. And you can see that he's, he's put his foot on and he's listening to the guide all the time. And it's unfortunately what's happening is He's reckon well, what's good about it is he's recognised he's shooting from too far out. So he needs to get closer to the goal if he's going to score. Um, so, he's, yeah, that, it was promising that the last attack that he had, he did that. We got, um, well, we've got um, we just had a substitution, haven't we? So we've now got Dimitrios back on, nearest to us. And Hubert, I think, has come back on for um, yeah, Hubert. Austria. Know me off. And Triori, I think, has gone off too. Yeah, so Triori's off. And Soyok is the furthest forward here for Vienna. She gets past one and it's cleared away, but only into the path of Soyok. It's on the edge of the penalty area, out towards that far side. Soyok up against three players. She needs help. Three of these Vienna players are all in their own half. She's doing it all by herself at the moment. Soyok with three players around her and out towards this near side. Huber now comes to support. The ball's just sprayed out towards that right side. And Guerrero now picks up the loose ball. However, Dimitrios gets it. He's now 10 metres away from goal. He shoots and that one is saved. They are getting shots away are at Thessaloniki, but uh, so far they're not really testing Tanya Hengel. Now here is Suljok. She's about 10 metres away from goal. She goes up towards the edge of the penalty. She can't get the shot away. And it's cleared out towards this near side. Philip Huber gets his body in the way. The ball rolls into the Vienna half. Can Dimitrios get onto this one? He has his back to goal, trying to get control of the ball. Sprays it out to that right side, and he's Down just holding again. his right shin. He's been in the wars so far in this tournament. He's battled on as the ball's just on the edge of the penalty area. Kukulis just tries to ball roll away from his opponent. Oh. He shoots, and that one is wide. And it was a good snapshot, actually. Yeah. Oh, we got a clash, a clash here. Coming together, they're not happy. Dimitrios is not happy with Philip Huber. I mean, Philip Huber didn't really do anything wrong. He just stood his ground, and Dimitrios has walked into walked into him. Just going back to the shot from Jakulis uh, there. Um, good snapshot through the crowd. He's had shots off his left foot and his right foot in this game. That one was from a closer range. He just needed to hit the target. 
Well, there might be a little bit of a chill in the air, but the uh, the temperature on the pitch has uh, just risen yeah. slightly as it's just been rolled out to this near side. And here is uh, Hubert, just goes down this right side. He's just almost covering the ball, just shimmying around the ball to protect it as he uh, works it down this near side. It's a two-on-one situation and uh, free kick has been given the way of Thessaloniki. As we approach the 24th minute, it is nil-nil. Thank you. And it's just been rolled towards the edge of the uh, Vienna penalty area. And it's goal kick. And the ball just uh, trickles out for the goalkeeper for Thessaloniki. Looks like we're going to have a timeout call here from the Austrian coach. Just lands at the feet of Dimitrios. He tries to turn on a sixpence, goes towards the edge of the penalty. Still has possession of the ball. Sporting those light blue shirts. Wow. Pushes his own player away, Gakoulis. But he does well to regather and shoots from distance. And it's into the hands of Tanya Hengel. So they are getting the shots away. Yeah, Dim Dimitrios is not happy. He's... Um, He's he's palmed off his own uh, teammate Jakulis, and then Vin, uh, Hubert, who he's already had an altercation with already, is uh, he's already pushed him away when he came over to just run past him to start an attack. He is not a happy guy at the minute, is Dimitrios. He's taken a few hits over the course of this weekend. I said to you, I thought he'd come into this tournament um, with an injury, but yeah, he, he is a cut in a very. Ex, uh, very frustrated character at the moment. His body language isn't very, very, very positive at all. Hands on the boards at the minute, uh, speaking to the coaches and his teammates. Not happy with the performance from per, uh, from his from his team and from himself as well. He's um he's just getting some treatment here for the shin injury that he looks like he's he's been uh, suffering with for the whole tournament. Yes. Keeps getting kicked yeah. on it, but I'm full, you know I didn't really see anything wrong with what Hubert did. As part of the game, and I always say, if you've got issues with that, get some better shin pads because uh, what we see now in the modern game with uh, the modern <laughs> modern football is that the shin pads seem to be getting smaller. But in Ryan football, I think it should be the opposite way around because the game is so much fiercer now. You saw so many, uh, it's even from our first two semi-finals, how how quick the game is and how those challenges come in so quickly and um, can be missed times just so by almost being so, almost too early. You can be sometimes the tackles, but yeah, you've got to be aware. You've got to, you've got to be accepting of that if you're going to be playing this game. Those those shin pads that he got, he has got. They are they are a little bit on the small side. Wouldn't you agree? I would say so. Yeah, they don't seem to be covering much, do they? Just needs to reset himself because he is he is good. He you know he has got ability. You just get hold of the ball like he has now. Start an attack for his team. Take a moment to compose himself. Yeah, he turns in the centre circle, comes up to this near side, just plays a nice little ball through into the penalty That's area. a good idea. What? And uh, just, Kukulis just didn't get there just in time, but it was a nice idea, as Dan mentioned. I like it. It's a, it's a little bit of invention because the, he's putting the ball into a corridor, which is very, very difficult for the defenders to deal with. Just off of the centre, in, inside the inside the D. Where it's coming from, a, from, from, a, from an angled position. Are we going to get a winner? Hubert tries to bundle his way through into the penalty. It's uh, not cleared away, but it is this time over the halfway line. Dimitrios now turns. There's a bit of space as he uh, just checks back towards his left. He goes down this left side. He's aiming towards the, getting towards the penalty area. He's in the penalty area now. But he just can't get the ball under control. And he goes closer and closer to the barriers just plays it into the penalty maybe a chance here for Koulis and he just couldn't uh, time his kick as the ball rolled across the penalty area the Koulis just turns nicely away from uh, so, so just, uh, here, here this is the example now so Dimitrios has done everything right there and he's put a lovely ball across the uh, across the four in inside the four meters right across the goal Jakulis has not quite managed to gamble at the back post and be in the right position so the ball goes out to the boards and Jakulis now goes out to retrieve the ball and instead of re-switching the ball which would have been the right thing to do and bring and continue the attack and keep Dimitrios up there and, and try and build he's tried then to switch it back onto his right foot and shoot from such a wide area which he's never going to really 
um, trouble Tanya Angle from. And that's probably what's happening now is that some of the players like Dim um, Dimitrios are starting to get a little bit frustrated because he's not he's not having that reciprocated you know, that switch in the play and the teamwork that's gotten to this point. It seems to have just deserted him uh, in the last few minutes. So Traore now possession midway inside the Thessaloniki half and it's just cleared away yeah, into cleared the spectator out. area just having to take it. Take cover. If Strafios, who's been playing in that 1-1-2, um, one, one, he's been playing the one in that position. He's very defensively minded, is this uh, is F. Strafios. He, he will break up play like he has there. And his important job that he gets to try Ore and stops him from starting his dribble. And as he's done so well there to clear the danger. I haven't really spoken about him too much in this tournament, but he's always there doing his work quietly. Troy just dribbling towards the penalty. He, there he is again. He's out by two players. He's almost like a battering round Troy. In comes the kick from Kakoulis, but he doesn't connect with the ball. It's been 50 50 here. Yeah, could see Jakoulis now. He stood still. He's, he realises that his patches and his blindfold has been lifted. He stood still and he's, you know, the patch is on the floor. This, like again, it happened yesterday in the same circumstance with him. And it's straight away the referees are hot on it and they've stopped the play to allow Jakoulis to be repatched. Nothing doing there. As you saw, it was um, a mixture of Jakulis and, uh, and Estratios working really hard to stop Traore from... Because uh, <laughs> Traore is a very strong man. He, he, he is able to hold off players and it took two Greek players to stop him there. So we're going to have a, a drop ball here. Midway inside the Thessaloniki half on that far side. Into the barrier, Traore... Wins the ball and turns nicely, 180 degrees. He tumbles to the floor, but it was a fair tackle. And it's gone back towards the halfway line. It's just inside the Vienna half. Suljok facing her own goal under pressure from Gakulis, who wins the ball back. He's under pressure, though, from two Vienna players. Trior is trying to get his feet into the ball. And the ball's just Good sprayed pass. out towards this near side. And just trying to open it up. Can Philip Huber get control of the ball? And that's a battle. That's a battle that's raging, those two. Philip Huber and Dimitrios. I think it's... It's a corner kick, there was a first signal. Nothing wrong with that. A corner kick for He's doing, Sanity. you know, once again, Hubert's got a job to do there. The ball's come off the boards into a dangerous position. Hubert's done a very good bit of defending there to get to Dimitrios and frustrate him. And there was a coming together and once again, uh, he, uh, Dimitrios ends up on the floor. But now he's up again. We've got, what, two minutes left of this game now? Are we going to see, see a goal it's here? It's better, though, from Thessalonica. That was more. They're bringing each other into the game, the, the two front men. So here is uh, Dimitrios just uh, shimmying the ball in towards central position. Troy tries to put a hand on him, tries to win the ball back. It's loose inside the Vienna penalty area all the way out towards that far side. And it's another corner. Is there going to be a winner with just over 90 seconds remaining? Towards the edge of the penalty, a corner kick's been taken. Corner kick Again, another corner, third in succession. Can they make this one count? As we approach the final minute of the game. Nil-nil. Going down the far side touchline. Two of them against uh, Nomi. Nomi comes out on top. Is this maybe the opportunity to try and break? Nomi almost has to bundle his way through two players. And the ball's all the way, all the way on that far side, on the halfway line, just trying to get past Nomi. Suljok is also there, but he breaks through. Two players tries to play it square. Just a small little touch from Hubert takes it away from the path of Dimitrios. On this near side, he collides into the boardings. He's back into his own half, Dimitrios. Tries to turn away from Traore. No. No one. There's only one person winning that duel. And it was a foul by... But you can just see him getting more and more frustrated, Dimitrios. What hit the deck again? In the end, Traore was not goal side, and it's been given against him. For a moment there, I thought that there was going to be a start of a wrestling match. With how angry Dimitrios has been in the last few minutes, as he's walked past us a few times, hasn't he, Brad? And he, he, you can just hear him muttering around, and you can just see it in his demeanour that he's uh, he's getting quite frustrated. Yeah, he's for a moment there, I thought him and Traore were going to be a, <laughs> a wrestling match. Wrestling on. <laughs> Here is Dimitrios. Can he produce a bit of magic? He shoots, he and shoots. that one's saved. Yeah, good effort. 
And there's the other side of his game. May, you know, a player like that needs that to be fired up to be able to to, to bring that to the table. Good, la good lash. Get you know, went went through the gears, got a shot off. Good save from Tanya Hengel. And there is the full-time hooter. And uh, so end of the game. There was no goal, so it is nil-nil uh, after thirty minutes of football, and we will go to a, another penalty shootout here. We've already had three so far here at the Buchevitsa Blind Football Cup. This is our third. It is nil-nil after thirty minutes. And it all comes down to penalties to decide who will finish fifth and sixth in the Vucevitsa Blind Football Cup 2023. Yeah, again, the game itself, um, quite a scrappy game, if I'm if in truth be told. Um, with I felt Fossil Honor could probably shaded the best of the chances. Um, unfortunately, I think that with with regards to Austria, it was just Triore, uh, who was, again, isolated like he has been in this tournament. So it made it very difficult for them to, to really sort of create any sort of chances against the goalkeeper of uh, Thessalonica. And as for um, uh, Thessalonica, the main main chance came in right at the end there from Dimitrios, which um, was expertly dealt with um, by Tanya Hengel in goal. Um, and several shots from a bit too far out or on the angles where really they weren't going to trouble Tanya in goal. So we now get to have to uh, decide but another penalty shootout. The drama of penalties once again as our uh, referee stand just uh, near us actually, just in front of the centre circle on this near side as the two uh, goalkeepers and captains just come over. Kulis and uh, Suliok, I believe, have just come over as one with the, uh, the goalkeepers. Here comes the coin toss, the red coin. Okay, as the players start to make their way to the halfway line to get into position here. So the penalties will be conducted to our right. And uh, the goalkeeper <laughs> for Versos Thessaloniki. He's uh, trying to help <laughs> get get all the players on the onto the field, making sure that the orders are correct and, and double checking it. It's a situation where you just want to be thinking about what your job is as the goalkeeper <laughs> and not not worrying about uh, the rest of the team and making sure that they're all happy is important. But your job as a keeper is to focus on when you're ready to do, and that's the that's the, to do the job. Like as we saw in the last game, the goalkeepers. We're in imperious form in the penalty shootout, St. Poli uh, and Andalek goalkeepers. It looks like we're going to see trial Ray up first, and he's already notched from the spot already, hasn't he? Mm. Yeah, yesterday, yeah, scored from the from the penalty spot. So Traore. This looks like it's going to be a step and hit. <laughs> this could uh, be a fierce effort. This it's going to be taken right-footed. The goalkeeper at the Thessaloniki standing in the centre of his goal, just slightly crouched over, his hands up by his chest, and just bends down low, puts his arms out to his side. He's going to be taken right-footed, Traore. He steps up, shoots, and scores! No mistake from Traore. He, uh, he wasn't going to miss that, keep, was he? <laughs> keeper's got, <laughs> he's got a smile on his he's face, got the no old, He's done the old cross because he's hit that like an absolute <laughs> rocket. I think if he realised if it had hit him, he would have been in trouble. But yeah, Traore once again, the power that he has in front of goal has been evident in this tournament. So Ampatsis um, will come up for this uh, next penalty for uh, Saloniki. Tanya Hengel standing in the centre of her goal. Yellow gloves on, orange kit, goalkeeper. Here come the taps. Pats is just with his hands behind his back, just patiently waiting, just hearing all the sounds. Here we go, taken right-footed. Good save, Tanya Hengel, yeah, really to her left. Yeah, good save, very good. Hit the target, toe poke. It's well saved. 
Uh, Guess right in these goals. You go right the right way. You've always got a chance. Well played. Philip Hubert. He was in a battle in this game up against Dimitrios. Can he uh, took away his penalty? The number 19 standing over the ball. and scores well he, uh, he scuffed it it wasn't the cleanest of penalties but he gets it and it's 2-0 yeah he's um, he, he has literally scuffed it into the left hand bottom corner as the goalkeeper in that situation just didn't set himself and able to react he kind of just bounced as, it, as the strike came in and um, yeah just trickled past him well, crucial moments in this penalty shootout now. Dimitrios, he's been revved up in this game. He's been bat battered and bruised a bit, but he's been fantastic throughout this tournament, giving us so much entertainment. Can he uh, score his penalty? The taps come from the guide behind the goal. Tanya Hengel standing in the centre of her goal. Arms out either side. And Owen oh, scores through the legs of Tanya Hengel and she is frustrated with that one. She punches the floor, but it is a penalty scored by Thessaloniki. An important penalty scored by Dimitri Osset. He's took a big back swing at that. Caught it. I didn't think he caught it clean, but like we said earlier, those one down at the goalkeeper's feet are very, very difficult to deal with. And that's where you need that to be able to get your body weight from underneath you and get your foot there. Easier said than done. Sitting in the commentary box. <laughs> yeah, it makes it sound all very nice and easy, <laughs> doesn't it? But here is that Suljok now will take this penalty for uh, Vienna. And a chance to claim the fifth spot in the championships in this Buchevica Blind Football Cup. Suljok will take this right-footed. She just bends down and touches the ball with her left hand. The taps come in. She shoots right-footed, and it's saved. And we continue with the penalty shootout. Good height for the goalkeeper. And, uh, and, and kept out. Yeah, Koulis now. Uh, yeah, crucial Koulis. penalty. Yeah, yeah, crucial. Got to score. These are the moments, no second chance moments here for Kukulis, the number 13, Tanya Hengel. She's uh, made a good save so far. She let one go underneath her body. She was frustrated with. But can she save this one? Or can Kukulis keep this penalty shootout going? He'll be shooting right-footed. He puts his left hand on the ball. Here we go, right footed. Oh, brilliant penalty. Fantastic penalty. Best of the day, arguably. Right into the top right hand corner. And we continue with the penalty shootout. Yeah, that's a brilliant penalty. It's one of the best we've seen uh, from this tournament. Ball in Nomi. He would have been troubling uh, any goalkeeper with that. Steps up now for Vienna, number 15. Goalkeeper standing in the centre of his goal. Crucial moments this. Nomi will take this right footed. Shoots and saved. Well, it's amazing how a penalty shoot out can one just when you think it's going to uh, go one way, it twists the next. And now this is an opportunity for Thessaloniki to win it. Estratios. Inglesos, the number 12 now will take this. Yeah. We Two. talked about him early, didn't we? Just that in that middle position, just going about, disrupt. He's basically just disrupt, disrupted playing defensive duties. He's got his chance now. 
Yeah, can he win Thessaloniki the match and secure the fifth place? Listening intently to the taps from the guide behind the goal. Tanya Hengel, can she produce another magic save? Just bouncing on her feet. Shot comes in, it's blocked. And we continue. So it's still a draw. Well done, Tanya. Good save. Stood up. Hit the target, but too central, really. And just not like, you know, Jaku look at Jakulis's penalty and how he, how he found the corner. It's, it's a hard thing to find the corners in these goals in these pressure situations. It's all about those penalty takers that are routine, routine, routine practice over and over again. So these moments with these dead ball specialists that can just rely on a technique that's going to be able to um, be relied upon under pressure. So Angelica Anguera will take this one now for Vienna. Puts her right hand on the ball. Will shoot right footed and scores! Brilliant penalty into the bottom left corner. No mistake from Mangada. Brilliant finish and puts the pressure back on Thessaloniki. Well done. I've, I've noticed that, that the goalkeeper stood slightly to his right and, and she was she, she dispatched it fantastically into the corner. So almost fair, into the well side netting it was now. Yeah, this is um this is a moment we haven't seen him play in this tournament. This is Babis, who I also played my <laughs> me and my debut against. <laughs> and Babis is fifty seven years old and he's um he's not played at all in this tournament no. until this point. So this is an important penalty for him. So a crucial penalty. Has to score to keep this penalty going. Penalty shootout going. He stands on top of the ball with his right foot. Takes a run up, shoots, and it's wide. <laughs> Unfortunately, oh. what the connection. And when you take a step back penalty as a blind athlete, you have to be 100% confident in your technique. Unfortunately for Babis on that occasion, he wasn't able to get the contact as he stepped back. A lot can go wrong with a step back penalty. On this occasion, it's uh, Austria that have claimed the victory. It certainly has. And it's a penalty shootout victory for Oberswald Vienna. The team from Austria, they will claim fifth spot in the Bucevica Blind Football Cup 2023. And it will be Persos Thessaloniki who will finish sixth overall in the Bucevica Blind Football Cup. We will now have an extended break here in Bucevica and we have two final matches coming up for you. It's the third place match between Anderlecht and Avoy Berno and then of course the final between St. Pauli and Merseyside. But we'll be back with you in just under an hour's time. Thank you.
Well, a very warm welcome back to live coverage of the Butovica Blind Football Cup 2023. It's our final two matches of the Cup and of the weekend. And this is the third to fourth placement match. A bronze medal, bronze trophy up for grabs. And it is between Avoy Berno and Anderlecht as we await the two teams to make their way out onto the pitch. The sun beaming down onto the playing surface. We've had a bit of cloud cover throughout the morning. There's been a bit of a chill in the air, but the sun has made its way out of the clouds and is beaming down onto the pitch. And the grass is just glistening as the sun soaks the pitch. So this is our penultimate match of the weekend and our two teams are making their way out onto the pitch. To the left of us we have Avoy Berno making their way towards the halfway line into the centre circle to the left of the halfway line and Anderlecht are to the right of the halfway line. Our two teams line up facing us here in the commentary box to the left of the halfway line we have Avoy Berno in their black shirts, black shorts and black socks with the goalkeeper in light blue shirt, shorts and socks. As for Anderlecht they are in their white shirts, white shorts and white socks with the goalkeeper in all green, green shirts, shorts and socks. Our two referees Michael and Francois are in their salmon pink shirts with black shorts and black socks and they're just going through all the formalities shaking hands getting ready before the game gets underway so this is for the third place in the Bujovica Blind Football Cup the two teams just going through the formalities of the coin toss and deciding who will kick off but this is our penultimate game of the weekend Dan and it's a chance to finish third overall in the competition lots at stake yeah to finish on a high and, and to claim the third place third place spot and um, I'm hoping that this game will be better than the game that we saw from the MOF in the group stage which was a which was a nil-nil draw um, and and they have both since since that first game gone on to uh, to, to have a better game uh, games in, in, in the knockout stages so just hoping we'll see uh, with the sun now out in the sky we'll see some uh, some good football on the pitch and some uh, some some more of um, Tester that I'm looking forward to seeing as well <laughs> as uh, as far as Karen Seal, Jan Bango, uh, and the rest of the Avoy uh, Avoy team. But um, it's been a it's been a very very good um, spectacle so far today on the pitch uh, and um, this game hopefully will show uh, will will uh, live up to that as well. So, of course, we will have a winner, come what may. Can go all the way to penalties. So, the two teams just going through the formalities, the eye shades. Uh, we've got two players just in the centre circle from Avoy Berno. Jan Bango's there. Along with uh, Jan Mrazek, I believe, number 11, just standing in the centre, ready for kick-off. Lots of smiles, lots of positive uh, attitudes and lots of laughs going on the final two games. What's going to be key here for me is how much energy do the Anderlecht free, the three players of Anderlecht have left to give to this tournament. They want to try and claim that third spot. They've been absolutely brilliant this whole tournament. All three of them and the goalkeeper collectively have played some fantastic stuff find themselves unfortunately in this uh, in this third and fourth playoff after a penalty shootout loss but they've, they've been absolutely fantastic throughout the tournament so we are just about to get underway our two referees are going to come over to the uh, coaches just to shake the hands getting ready for the start of the game with uh, Voy Berno going to kick us off here yeah, Mrazek has the ball sandwiched in between his feet with uh, Karen Seal just standing directly behind in the shadows from the sun just uh, reflecting on the pitch. It's just warmed up a tad which is very nice because it was a bit chilly about 10-15 minutes ago. But we are uh, set, we are ready. And off we go. Berno 
Playing out towards that left side. Jan Mrazek gets his first touch and dribbles all the way to the boarding. Back towards the halfway line. It's still on that far side. Jan Bango switches the play towards this near side. It just hits the boarding and goes out for the goalkeeper. It's a feature of Avoy Bernard's play during this tournament was to try and spread the play, bring others into play. Jan Bango, once again, he's been the playmaker. He's been the one that's been looking to bring in the forward players of Mrazek and Seal, especially in the last couple of games. So the ball's right in the corner in the uh, Voiberno half. Yambango up against Tester, who uh, will really hound players. He will be all over them. And it goes back to the goalkeeper in his area. Just throws the ball towards the board, and Karen Seal just picks up the pieces, and he's on this uh, near side. It's a bouncing effort that goes all the way out to that far touchline towards the board. 50-50 battle here for the ball. That Hugo Tester wins. Tester... Going up towards the uh, the halfway line, into the centre circle, cuts back onto his left foot, passes it out to this left side. It hits the boarding and keeps, stays in. Vespers goes towards the penalty area, has a shot. It's blocked and it's a corner. Yeah, it's that man again, Michal Petras. Defensively, he's been very, very good during this tournament. In the back there just came across and blocked out the shot that Alexander Vespers had managed to get down the line, get inside, into a good area. Yeah, myself and Dan have been making some big decisions on uh, players of the tournaments, players of each team. Found, of course, those awards at the end of the final and the closing ceremony. But back to the action on the pitch. It's just on the edge of the penalty area on this near side. A bit of a tussle here between Vespers and Seal, right on the edge of the goal line. And it's just been played forward to the midway point of the Berno half. Jan Bango picks it up and drifts out to that left side. He's about set five metres away from the halfway line. He's just coming into the centre circle now. He's over the halfway line. He's been tripped from behind from Testa. Testa immediately goes over to Jan Bango just to apologise. And Jan Bango is just on the floor, just uh, readjusting his boots. And uh, we'll get, have a free kick in the centre circle. Yeah, change of pace and change of direction from Jan Bango in the centre there. Just living middle, uh, Testa, uh, getting non -goal, not getting goal side quick enough. And unfortunately... For him and his team, he's given away this free kick. So free kick for Avoy Berno. In the centre circle in their own half, Jan Bango is just standing with the ball sandwiched in between his feet. Out towards this near side. Karen Seal picks it up. He's under pressure from Vespes. He's midway inside the Anderlecht half, he's being forced back towards the centre circle. He's still in the Anderlecht half though, he went out to the right, cuts back onto his left, then back onto his right, and swifts the ball onto his left foot. He goes towards the edge of the penalty area. Can he get a shot off? He does, but it just doesn't generate the power desired, and it's comfortably picked up by the keeper. Tester managed to get his body in line, and as the shot came in, it hit his shins and just took all the pace that Karen had tried to generate off of the ball. So Vespers right into the corner under pressure from uh, Jan Bango, tight up against the boardings. You can hear Christoph right in front of us here asking for the ball back from Vespers. It's just got stuck on the board. And Christoph's going to sneak forward now and try and win the ball now. He He's trying to support his teammate. A free kick has been given, I believe, right in the corner. Difficult to see from our position, even on the, on the with that post right in the way of the um, on the video here. So it's an indirect free kick for Anderlecht right in the corner. It's practically almost a corner kick, yeah, really. Pretty much right in the corner. So three players in the wall guarding the near post. Here is that free kick. Shot comes in, but uh, just collides into Karen Seal. And uh, once again, the ball's been trapped into the boardings. Can they work an angle there? Anderlecht as the ball just goes all the way back towards the halfway line into the Anderlecht half. And uh, Jan Brazic gets his body in the way and collects it and goes down that left side. He cuts back in field. He's about 10 metres away from goal. Just can't get space to open up a shot. And Tester wins back the ball. Tester's right up against the boardings here. He's midway inside his own half. 
just starting to come in field towards the centre circle. Ball close to his feet, cuts back inside, goes in between two Berno players. He's advancing towards the penalty area. He goes on to his right foot. He's just on the edge of the area of his back to goal, trying to work an angle tester. He has the shot. Oh, and it's fumbled by the keeper. And it goes out towards the edge of the penalty area. But uh, Berno come away with the ball. Jan Bango going down that left side. He goes past Tester. Tester hunting him down. He's on that left side. He's midway inside the Anderlecht half. He's been pushed back by Christoph Eilers and a switch of play out to this right side. It's going to hit the boardings and Kevin Seal is going to pick the ball up here on this right side, close to the board. Almost he's got his right hand on the board as he plays the ball back down the line. He's into the Berno half. Jan Bango now put under pressure from Vespers. About five metres inside their own half, Berno being pushed back towards their own penalty area on this near side. Theme here where Alexander Vespers and Testa are just not allowing Avoy to have any possession of the ball without pressuring them at every chance they get and forcing mistakes from them when they're switching the ball across it's the, the ball. pitch. So the ball's just run loose just inside the Anderlecht half. It's now on the halfway line of 50-50 here between Razek and Testa and being forced all the way back into the deep point of the uh, Avoy Berno half, a couple of metres away from the corner on that far side. Testa's pushing him all the way, not letting him rest. And it's a switch of play out to this near side, but uh, the game has just been temporarily stopped. Jan Bango has lost a shin pad. So in the space of about the first six minutes, he's had his boot and his shin pad <laughs> off. Two separate instances. Just a coming together there with Tester. So it's going to be a drop ball here from our referee Francois on the edge of the Berno penalty area on the near side. Karen Seal just advances forward to the midway point of his half. He's still on this near side. Seal he just takes a couple of touches and plays it over the halfway line. A pass over to that left side, but it's intercepted by Tester. Controls it well, comes up to the halfway line, turns onto his right foot, then back again onto his left in the centre circle and plays the ball out to this near side. It hits the barrier. 50-50 here on the halfway line. is won by Anderlecht. Eilers slices the ball towards the edge of his own penalty area. It's intercepted by Mrazek. Can he get the shot away? And it's saved by the keeper. Smothers it. Gets in the way well uh, Mazek Mazek is up the furthest man forward and he's, he's he's in that little pocket inside the six there and the ball's broken to him and he's got a shot away just didn't quite get the cleanest of connections on the strike still troubled the goalkeeper smothered save so the ball's in the Anderlecht penalty area Isla's put under pressure from Jan Mazek can he get the shot away he kicks the ball as uh, the keeper practically had the ball in his hands Good brave keeping from uh, number one for Anderlecht, the keeper, as the ball crosses over the halfway line, back into the Berno half. Forced backwards, but it's been uh, blocked on the edge of the penalty area, and uh, Berno trying to come forward, but Tester is uh, hitting the ball down off, off Jan Bango, and he switches the play, Jan Bango. It hits uh, the left leg of Kevin Seal, and he manages just to collect the ball. Has a bit of space to uh, work here, does Karen Seal. Just a reminder that Anderlecht only have those three players, of course. Towards the halfway line, to the right of the centre circle, a chip ball. Yeah, goes out of play. That one's just a bit too high, but Karen, Karen needs a bit more support from Jan Bango. He's, he's only got Jan Razek as support. He's the only art ball, and Anderlecht are starting to, to see, to understand that that is the only outlet at the moment. So Karen really, when he has, has possession, he needs more support. Needs to send Jan Bango along, past him up high onto the right-hand side of the pitch. Too easy to defend at the moment for Anderlecht. Ball over to this left side, it just comes off the boardings and on the halfway line to the left of the centre circle. They're coming forward here, Anderlecht with Vespes. He just gets the ball cut between his feet and he's got his back to goal, but a good tackle from Kerin Seal. And it's over the halfway line, Vespes just comes tumbling to the floor, just an accidental collision. And uh, Christoph Eilers has it on the edge of his own penalty area. Sprays the ball out to that right side. It just comes off the boardings. And Tester comes back in field. He's about 10 metres away from goal. He has the shot, but he just misses the ball. And Kevin Seal now has the chance maybe to run away with it. He's brought to the ground, but no foul given. And Anderlecht look to rebuild just from the edge of their own penalty area. Just, um, just a moment there where Jan Bango ran into the back of Kevin Seal. He lost his shape, lost his discipline. And that just allowed Vespes potentially to get in behind here that one's run too long certainly has will be with the goalkeeper for Burnout. 
Karen's remonstrating with the rest of his team, saying, "Come on, we've got to get, keep our shape. We've got to keep, we've got to keep the shape that we've, we've we said that we were going to go with at the start of the game." And Jan Bangle's bringing it out now. He needs options at the moment. He's only got Mrazek as an option. Now Karen starts to push on, and that's much better from Berno. It's a little pirouette turn from Jan Bango on the edge of the centre circle as he drifts out to this right side. He's got a bit of space here, Jan Bango, midway inside the Anderlecht half, but a crossfield pass is intercepted. Now this is a chance for Hugo Tester. He's running towards the penalty. He just goes out towards that right side. He cuts back onto his left foot. He shoots from distance and that one goes wide of the left post. That was a chance. If you're going to play a flat ball across on the halfway line, it needs to go in and behind. It can't go in front of Tester. He's easily picked that ball off and he's brought it back towards the Avoy goal with some uh, with, with some with some uh, pace. Here is uh, Karen Seal going down this right side. He's midway inside the underlect half. He cuts back onto his left foot. He's trying to cut back onto his right. It's a good tackle from Alexander Vespes. Now maybe an opportunity here for Anderlecht to break forward over the halfway line through the centre circle. Vespes is heading towards the penalty area, slightly right of centre. He gets the shot away and that one is wide of the right post. Just starting to really assert themselves here, Anderlecht in the game. Two good chances. But now the ball's deep inside the Anderlecht half. Karen Seal looking to try and work a better angle for himself. There's a 50-50 on, a couple of metres away from the corner on this near side. Now these two know them. They know each other well, Christoph and, and Karen. They've played, played in the same team together in the past. They've obviously been international foes as well. Time against out. England and Belgium. Time out. It's, a, it's a solid battle, those two. So time out by... Uh, Andelect with uh, just under four minutes remaining. They, need, the first it, they half. need to just get their discipline and get their shape back, um, Avoy. Karen's obviously um, asking for a little bit more support there. Tell me when you've got the ball. And tell me when you haven't got it. So I can then, uh, if I have to transition back into the defensive shape, playing as that one in that one one two. I can come back and I can help out in defence. You're not. You've got to let me know when you've when you've won the ball and when you've got it. If you've won the ball, I can go and, and support you further forward. If you've lost it, I need to get back into shape and help the, help the defensive cause. But I've been ha I'm pretty impressed with the start from both sides. Anderlecht are always very dangerous on the counter attack, and as you just saw, though, if if a ball. Uh, the, Avoy, the Avoy plan is to try and get the angled balls in and behind, trying to bring Mrazek into play, trying to bring Seal into play when uh, Jan Bango is taking it forwards. But if any of those switch balls are, in, are not played in and behind and they're played in front of the, 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 the Anderlecht free, because they literally are playing, they've split the pitch into thirds and they've gone, right, we're going to play as a straight V, slightly dropped in in the middle man, and they're just picking off these balls. Um, so I'd be asking, if I was the coach of Avoy, I'd be saying, look, our passing has to be, it has to be more penetrative. We can't just be playing these sort of flat, what we would call in the game, a flat switch ball across, which is in front of the players, uh, and a safe ball. We need to be more, um, we need to be more expansive. We need to take more risks with our with our switching balls in and behind. And then that's that way, Mrazek might get a bit more joy. The one time when Mrazek actually did get in, in and behind, was in that space, in that angle between the corner flag and the near post area, or the back post area. So, um, yeah. As we're about to resume, we've got about nine minutes left. Been a good start from both sides. So restarting in the corner on this near side as Vespez turns onto his left foot, but under pressure from Karen Seal. Tight to this uh, boarding on this near side. Seal turns away nicely, just plays the ball up towards the halfway line. Oh, just missed by Eilers, just misjudged, but the ball rolls all the way to that far corner. Can it be kept in see, play? It can't. See, that's exactly what we were talking about. Granted, the ball's come from a more deeper position, but that ball is a better ball to play than playing a ball that's easily cut out. And that one, Christoph can just totally misread the, the angle of that switch. So here is Vesuvius. Inside his own half on this near side, just plays a loose pass out towards that uh, far side, potentially put his side in trouble here. Jan Mrazek up against Tester. Tester's oh, he's all over him though and uh, really hunts the ball down well. Puts the pressure on. Good work from Christoph Eilers to get away from his man. Ball's just loose in the centre of the Anderlecht half. Who's going to win this one? Bango or Eilers? It's Eilers who comes forward over the halfway line. He's midway inside the Berno half. He comes closer and closer towards the penalty area. The shot comes in. Good effort. Just, just wide. Did so well to get that far forward. You know, under pressure as well. Ball's all the way up down the we'll Keep saying it, but... 
not only has he got that defensive, you know, how good he was in the last game in the defensive, but he can get forward and he can be dangerous if you give him space at Christoph Ayers. Back into the Anderlecht half, midway, Berno coming forward on the edge of the penalty. Now Jan Mrazic tries to get a shot away, but that was what a, a tackle. brilliant tackle and kept in well. How has he got back round there? That is an absolutely last-ditch tackle. Mrazic had done everything right. They've still got possession, though. So just over two minutes remaining. Jan Bango, about 10 metres away from goal, shoots blocked. Good block from Vespers, out towards this near side. Over the halfway line, now midway inside the Berno half. Coming towards the edge of the penalty area. Karen's asking why, why the, that ball didn't come to him. When the ball got switched back down the line, it should have come across and it didn't. And he's very frustrated. This has happened a few times now over the course of the weekend. And the free kick. And Karen will let you know if he's not happy with him. We can hear him from the commentary box here. We won't, we won't repeat what he said, <laughs> but he isn't happy. So free kick here, roughly about 10 metres away from goal, slightly left of centre. Three-person wall for Boy Berno. Silence falls across uh, the playing surface here. Vespes has the ball, shoots, it's blocked, and rolls into the path of the goalkeeper. Over the halfway line, into the underlect half. Jan Rezek does well to hold up the ball and squares it out towards this near side. Cohen Seal comes running onto it. And we've got the ball back over the halfway line. Lost the feed. So I'd like to have it on the in the centre circle inside the own half. And that is half time. Here in our 34th placement match between Anderlecht and Avoy Berno. Chances for both sides, but it is nil-nil. But uh, overall, I don't think we're really too much clearer into finding out who will take that third spot, Dan, really. Not at the moment, no. Um, you can hear Karen in front of us here. Not happy about the fact that we've not... What, what, what's happening is Avoy are trying to pass the ball. And, and so, especially when they're attacking. And it's just a moment, I'm going back to it again, where the ball was back heel from Razek down the board. He was under pressure. It came back to Jan Bango. And then Jan Bango, who has been excellent at dribbling the ball from that position off of the boards on the halfway line and going at goal with pace. He's done that so often that people are now have started to read what he's going to do. And what, what um, Anderlet, the Anderlet players have, just, have done is they closed the space in the middle already. <laughs> Really, that ball should have been switched across, and that would have given Karen Seal some room to work in. And that's the whole game plan, is about trying to bring others into play. And he's just getting a bit frustrated, Karen, because he, he's almost like the game plan is there, and it's not being adhered to by his teammates. So, knowing Karen and being a teammate of him for many years, he would be putting that across in the only way that Karen knows how to. I won't repeat what he said, but it's, yeah, the point has been made, uh, and a note has been made in the notebook. So, what they've got to do now is um, Anderlecht have really... They've created probably the better of the chances. They've, they've got in a couple of times, got some good shots off. Unfortunately, um, well, it's got shots off. and say the good shots, they've gone just wide of the target. Um, and in Razek as well, one, when Avoy did get the, the that they did penetrate those, with those balls into the into the deeper areas with form Razek, did get a little bit of joy out of it. Um, got a shot off, which was well well saved um, in the in in the goal there by uh, by was it Vladimir? Mm. Goal? Yeah. yeah. Um, so again. It's just a case of going back to the game plan for Avoy and for Anderlecht it's a case of let's just keep plugging away. Like we said earlier, they can't attack all the time, but they'll just pick their moments when to, when to go. Um, and really for them, they've got to try and build as much of the play as they can, bring Vespers into the game, 
bring um, Tesla into the game a little bit yeah. higher up. At the moment, Tesla's really trying to um, stop um, Mrazek from getting hold of the ball. Uh, he probably needs to play a little bit further forward. If he picks the ball up a little bit higher, that's when he can be really dangerous. As we've already also said as well, about when, when Avoy do switch the ball, which they have done on occasion, if their switch play is not in and behind and, and, and penetrative, that's where Anderlecht can pick up and counter-attack quickly. And they've got the players to counter-attack from the halfway line to the goal within a couple of seconds. So uh, going into the second half, it's still all to play for. It certainly is. It is nil-nil then at half time in our third to fourth placement match between Anderlecht and Avoy Berno. It's a big second half coming up, of course. We could have penalties. We've already had three penalty shootouts throughout this Bushevica Blind Football Cup. We'll just take a very short break before we come back for the start of the second half. So we're nearly ready to go for the second half here of our third to fourth placement match here at the Bucevica Blind Football Cup 2023. It's our penultimate match of the weekend. The sun is out. It is blue sky everywhere. Only one or two clouds in the sky. The chill has just gone slightly. The trees are glistening. The pitch looks magnificent. And we are nearly ready for the second half here between Anderlecht and Avoy Berno. It will be Anderlecht who will get us underway, playing from left to right from our position here in the commentary box and on the live stream. Avoy Berno will be playing from right to left. Anderlecht in the white shirts, Avoy Berno in the black. Our referees, Francois and Michael, just checking with the keepers to make sure they're ready and the timing suite, and we are ready to go. 
And it is Vespez who takes a touch and goes to his left. Oh, a nice, neat little touch. He's still on the edge of the centre circle in the avoid burner half. He's advancing forward. He's about 10 metres away from goal. He's just keeping the ball tight to his feet and plays the ball out to his right side towards Testo, who's right next to the boardings. He cuts back inside onto his left foot, tries to go back onto his right. Pirouette towards the edge of the penalty area, but he just gets the ball stuck behind him. And Jan Bango just gets in the way of Testa, almost just blocking him away from the ball at every opportunity. But Testa nips the ball away from him and plays it out to that left side. Vespez, back to goal. Again, turns away from Kerin Seal. Vespez, who is back to goal still. The ball glued to his feet and Kerin Seal just trips him up as uh, Vespez got away from him and Kerin Seal immediately put his hand up to apologise. They both are wily old pros and they know, and Kerin knew straight away that Vespez was going to buy that. As soon as that contact came, uh, Vespez hit the ground, so yeah. So free kick here for Andelect. It's at 13 metres away from goal. Centrally, Vespers goes up towards the penalty area, shoots, he just slightly slices it into Bango and he just flicks it back into the penalty area. He now has it on the edge of the penalty area. Avoy Berno just coming forward. Petrez plays it up towards the halfway line in the centre circle. Kerin Seal running onto the ball. He's intercepted by Christoph Eilerst. Test is also in the centre circle, but Christoph but comes away with it. Seal. He actually runs into his own play. At Kerin Seal in towards Jan Mrazek. But uh, Kerin Seal is just holding his head. Head, head injury. Head injury. And he's, to make matters worse, he has a head injury and it's come from his own player, Jan Mrazek, who was stood. Going, Kerin was going to challenge for a ball. Jan Mrazek was already stood there. He's apologising to him. He hopes he's all right. And he's just asking, he's asking, <laughs> he's asking Razek if that's who he, who he bumped into. And he's like, yeah, I'm really sorry. <laughs> it was funny, Jan Razek, you seemed to be absolutely fuming. And then when he got told uh, that, then he rea <laughs> Ke 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 Karen realised it was Razek that he bumped into. And he was like, oh, is it you? He was like, yeah, yeah, it was me. I'm really sorry. And he was like, oh, it's all right. Don't worry about it. <laughs> it smiles in the end. Yeah. Um, <laughs> ask Karen, that's for you. One minute he's angry. And then he's all right again. There, so he is. Back up. Everything's fine. And we get restarted shortly. A oh, really, really good fun moment then. Well, the main thing is that he is okay, and he is. He's back to his feet as he walks over towards the, the far side of the pitch. And we're going to restart with a drop ball right over on that far side, midway inside the uh, Avoy Berno half. I think they're just going to drop it at Seal, Karen Seal's feet, get him to restart. And straight away, see how and elect have split the pitch diagonally into first. This is going to bounce over into us in the commentary box. Oh. Nice play, Kez. <laughs> Just wanted to get me involved. The way that the way that Andelec dropped off in a is sort of a, a a staggered line there. They 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 already are anticipating that switch happening even before the play took place, and it's becoming quite um, easy to read from for what have we in terms of their attacks at the moment. So it's walled all the way over on that far side in the avoid burn no half. Kerin Seal coming forward. Feels energised now, coming out towards this near side. It just comes off the boarding and uh, Jan Mrazek was uh, tripped up. No voice from Jan no Mrazek. He, he went into an area where you've got to shout boy. Loose ball. No boy at all. Quite rightly, that's a free, uh, free kick to Anderlecht. Tester plays it over the halfway line across the centre circle out to that far side. Kevin Seal comes forward, he's midway inside the Anderlecht half, he gets in towards the penalty, he puts a shot, there you go, scores! I'll get the roll out. Oh, lovely little saw, and there's a trumpet, there's a roll, there's a trumpet. <laughs> he's finally managed to do something. Kevin Seal, well done. There's some end product, and finally a goal for Avoy. <laughs> It's, Finally, taken, like it's it. taken two days, but we've got there. Karen Seal has come from a long barrier. The ball got switched across by Tesla and straight into where Karen was. And Karen sort of up the long barrier is something that he has deployed at times over his career to stop the ball when it's rolling very short on the floor. From there, he was able to start a dribble. He went right, then he went left. He went through a gap that appeared between Christoph Eilers and Alexander Vespez and got a left-footed shot off quickly and went through the goalkeeper in goal for Anderlecht. 
So it is 1-0 to avoid Brno, and they are currently leading the race to third place here at the Pujavica Blind Football Cup. Here is Vespers. Can he do anything about it? Oh, strong challenge from yep. Karen Seal. He's fired up now. He is indeed. And he plays a lovely through ball in towards the penalty area. Can Jan Rezic no, just get onto it? The defensive performance from Eilers when he's been facing his own goal over this, these two days it has been absolutely fantastic. Once again, he ran, I'd say he ran about 14 metres there to onto a loose ball that was going back towards Jan Razek, who was behind him, and he managed to take it off the toe of Razek. And again, great defending by Crystal Vyers. So it's a corner on this near side. It'll be taken by Voiberno, and Bango plays it square all the way towards that far right side to Kerin Seal. Seal just uh, has to be forced back. He's about just coming up towards the centre circle. He's in a better of a battle here with Vespers. Vespers wins the ball back and he goes round Kevin Seal over the halfway line, down that far left side. Oh, and he just treads on the ball and he's unlucky as he was away there. But Jan Bango comes with it now over the halfway line into the centre circle in the Anderlecht half. That's better from Bango. Plays it over to this left side. Jan Razek gets round Tester, but it's still down this left side. Good work from Christoph Heiler. So how many times have he said that? Too many. He's, he's been everywhere. He certainly has. And he's just working so hard to try and get the ball clear. And he does so over the halfway line to that far side. About five metres from the halfway line. I can tell you that fatigue is starting just to creep in now for Anderlecht. Vespers and Tesla have been doing so much work over the course of this, these two days that their runs have just started to take a little bit longer to, to, to get up and support. There was a classic case. Eilers kicked it into a, an area where he would expect Vespes to be and he just wasn't there. He was still defending, he was still back getting a breather. Yambango on this near side now, just on the edge of the centre circle, squares it out towards that far right side. Kevin Seal goes round Vespes, cuts back inside, has his back to goal and just chips it out towards this left side now, towards us in the commentary box on this near side with uh, Jan Mrazek, plays it back down the line. Again, this is better. This that's right better. Side. That's what that's what what Karen wanted Jan Bango to do. That allows Karen now to bring Mrazek back in and keep the play, keep the possession. That's unlucky though. It's come away. Tester's come away with it. Test over the halfway line. Here he goes. He's on the edge of the centre circle. Cuts back onto his right. Now back onto his left. He's ten metres away from goal. He shoots. It's blocked and out for a corner. Again, there Avoy doing all the right things in terms of getting the ball, switching the ball, sw really switching the ball. It just happened that Tester was able to just get there first ahead of Mrazek and then take the ball away. But again, from half time to now, Avoy in the ascendancy a little bit, and that's come from that half time where they had that chat and could hear the chat in front of us, in the, in, right in front of the commentary booth. Our switches had to be better, I had to be quicker. How did you get um, Jan Bango making those passes? Because he was, he was going quite a lot on his own and became quite predictable with his dribble. So corner right on the far side here for Anderlecht. Vespers standing in front of the ball with Tester right behind him. There's a three-man wall just guarding that near post. Here comes that corner. And he's just trying to get through uh, Kerin, but uh, gets the second ball over on the edge of the penalty. He tries to get the shot away, Vespers, but he just falls to the floor as he missed the ball from that shot. But there's a real good uh, tussle on this near side. Two against one, but Jan Bangos coming away with it off the better but Tester's really battling hard but Jan Bango wins it on the second chance Tester comes flying back in on the edge of the centre circle it's a really good battle for the ball here in the midfield in the Anderlecht half but Vespes comes forward he's in the avoid Berno half on the edge of the penalty area and it's cleared away well they hold on that was Mikhail Petrus getting a foot in Mikhail Petrus got the foot in and then it, it dropped loose and Karen Seal then cleared the lines Petrus again Put in the last ditch tackle in when he needed to. That's a foul. Another one from Razik. That's been a. He's, he's had a couple now within the last few minutes. Starting to just get a little bit tired, Razik, and he hasn't got goal side there. And he's another foul. Test has drawn another one. So that's now three team fouls for Ravoy. This game is far from over yet. So Avoy Berno, three team fouls. And this free kick for Anderlecht is just on the edge of the centre circle in their own half. Here goes Hugo Tester, he sets off. And he's midway inside the Avoid Berno half, goes onto his left, back onto his right, but it's a wall of defence from Avoid Berno. The ball's played up to that far side, it ricochets off the fence. And now here come Anderlecht, Vespers comes forward. He's pushed to the floor, no foul. Nothing in that. Just to come in together, happens a lot. 
can just see now uh, Vespez is just taking a little bit of time to get back into shape. He's put a great shift in over the weekend. Teague's starting to set in. Karen Not Seale. quite quick enough to the press there. Next side of the foot pass to the centre circle, out towards this near side. A battle here between Christoph's going to need support. Yeah. and Jan Bango play back down the line. Testo on the edge of his own penalty area. Nice pass out to that far left side. It hits the board and maybe a chance here for Vespers to break. He gets onto it. He's on the edge of the penalty area. He tries to get a shot away, but across the goalkeeper area and out to this near side. Unlucky. Just a bit too wide. He went with the left foot, which is a right play. Just couldn't get it on target. He is always dangerous. He's still there. Less than, it's less than seven minutes to go. Andelet's still in this. Jan Bango plays the ball out to this left side. Midway point to the... And the left half picked up by Jan Mrazek. He's just on the edge of the area. Can he get a shot away? Tries to get back onto his right foot. He shoots. Oh, oh, takes Christoph again. Christoph with another tackle. Or oh, more of a deflection on that one. He got in the way. Mrazek got the shot off. Is that man again? He has been everywhere defensively throughout this tournament. That's Christoph Eilers. And now here comes the corner. On this near side, Avoy Burner, Jan Mrazek squares up to the goal, goes into the penalty area, tries to squeeze his way through, but it's picked up by the goalkeeper, Bert Ludwig, who throws over arm towards his right side, it hits the boarding, onto the halfway line, a battle here between Jan Bango and uh, between Testa, Jan Bango coming forward, Bango shrugs off Testa, he's towards the edge of the penalty, shoots, what and a chance. it's wide at the left post. That, that's the one we saw with Triore getting through similar where they get caught flat in a line and one of them gets beat as an individual where, where Jan Bango, a moment of brilliance, like we saw with Triore earlier in the first day, a moment of brilliance beats all three of them and then he's got a run into the goal, which you saw there. And he just wasn't able to get the shot on target, but what, an F, what a chance that was to double the lead. Yeah, it certainly was. 24 minutes and 20 seconds gone. So just over five minutes remaining of this third to fourth placement match. Chance to finish third at the Buchevica Blind Football Cup. All up towards that left side. Square pass from Vespers up towards this near side on the halfway line. Tester just nips in and gets the ball on the centre circle. Goes back onto his left foot, plays it out wide to the far side. It hits the board, comes back in play. Vespers tries to turn in field. Nice little turn away from Kerry Seal. He cuts back onto his right into the penalty area and wins the free kick. Yep, right on the edge. I think. Yep, time up. But it's a timeout for under Timeout. 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 Time yep. That's said a few times, but we got there in the we end. We got there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the process is full. Anderlecht really have put a shift in here. Yeah. Vespez. Vespez continues to, uh, to, to, to work really, really hard. Christoph working extremely hard as well at the back there to keep the shape and keep them ticking over. And the young Tester, who just seems to be full of energy, he just keeps, keeps going all the way to the end here. But Avoy have grabbed the goal they needed. They've just had another opportunity. They would be disappointed that they haven't killed the game off already. But right on the edge now, we've, got, we've now got Avoy Berno on 14 fouls. And I believe the next one will be an eight metre penalty. Got to keep their discipline now, have we, Bernard? It's very, very important. No more fouls. Get in line with your defenders. Get there early. Get your boys in. No silly fouls. No stupid fouls. Mm. Only the ones you need to make. Those ones that we've seen a few times over the course of this weekend <laughs> from various teams. Uh, players got away from uh, and got through and then had to be brought down. So four minutes and 40 seconds left in the second and half. And elect have got to go for this. They, you know, they've, they've, they've been playing with the three the whole weekend. They've, they've, been, they've been expansive within that setup as well. They've not dropped in and been defensive. They've had a high line. They've, they've had possession of the ball. They've been willing to give teams opportunities to counter-attack against them, like we've just seen with um, Jan Bango, because they know that if they play that way, they're going to get chances and they're going to enjoy their football. And they certainly look like they have been enjoying, even in now with less than uh, five minutes to go in this game, 
they're not out of it by any stretch. Credit to them and their fitness. So this free kick over on that far side for Anderlecht, just on the edge of the penalty area, there is uh, three players, or four players in the wall. Talked about earlier, making sure the safe side of the goal is blocked off and that the defenders do their job here on the wall. I'm going to have a charger, and there's only one guess who that person's going to be. Karen Seal ready to sprint out. So we're nearly ready. Just the guy tapping the uh, the posts. And here comes the shot. It's blocked and goes out for a corner. Just the right side of the post from a, an avoid Berno uh, perspective. Well done, Wall. Yeah, they got the right side there. Did the, did what they needed to do and stayed together. So Vladimir Vadura for making sure that 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 the wall did its job and and did not split. You always get problems when the wall starts to split and the gaps start to appear, but that that didn't happen. So on the edge of the penalty area now, the shot comes in. It's uh, missed though, and maybe a chance for Avoy Berno to break up towards the halfway line. 50-50. On the halfway line, Karen Seal wins it. Maybe a chance here to break Karen Seal. He's on the edge of the penalty here, just slightly left of centre. He shoots yes. and scores! There you go. The left foot of Karen Seal. He, he loves It's a great left footed finish across the goalkeeper, Bert, across Bert Ludwig in goal. And it was just the patience off of the corner. If you notice, just as um, Vespers was about to shoot, Karen Seal took his, just, just nicked it off his foot left foot and that allowed Karen to chase after the ball and as we said about once Christoph came to engage and tried to get back or sorry it was tested tried to get back and engage he just knocked it past him to the left and that allowed him that free running on goal mm. and the uh, and the Anderlecht defenders were always then trying to get back goal side and they weren't able to do that and as I've seen many times before over the years Karen's led left foot did a lot of work on that in practicing with Karen over the years to improve so he could shoot not just off his right footed side which is more predominantly is just to be able to swing a left foot at a shot and hit the target which is what he's done there and he's got his just rewards 2-0 Avoy excellent counter attacking goal so it was Christoph Eilers who was down on the floor he's uh, back to his feet now it's good to see that he's okay Brad Christmas have come up once Avoy have scored two goals <laughs> in the same game they've waited all weekend for this and Karen Seal will be one happy boy after having a quite a frustrating weekend from his own perspective he's mentioned oh and a late oh, challenge that's that foul I told you about no void and came late and you know what that means it's going to see our first eight metre penalty of the weekend so after the four accumulated fouls then the next penalty oh sorry the next foul and any foul thereafter within the rest of this half is a penalty so this game is not yet over this is what it, having a dead ball special, specialist in your team is so so important within the game of blind football because when you get these opportunities sometimes they are just like having a, a penalty in a, you know, from six metres so this uh, double penalty from eight metres out. Alexander Vespez will take this uh, right-footed goalkeeper. Vladimir Verdura just standing in the centre of his goal. You can, hear, you can hear Karen saying, get ready for rebounds here. Yeah, the uh, Void Berno players are eager. Testa just getting in front of them. He's also eager. And it's wide at the right post. A big moment goes by and it remains 2-0. Promising though, it, again, one of those goes in and you're back in it. There's a few minutes left. Stay positive, Andalek. That's what be, the coach will be saying. He's saying, look, come on, let's keep getting 1v1 opportunities to dribble at, 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 the Avoy, at the Avoy players. Let's try and draw some fouls. 
Vespas takes over to the left of the centre circle, drives forward. A bit of a sense of urgency now in their play for Randelek. Tester comes back into more central position. It's a nice little flick out towards this near side, but it doesn't find a teammate. And it's going to be picked up by Avoy Berno. Just over three minutes remaining of the second half. Over the halfway line it comes, Jan Mrazek now with the possession of the ball. It's just gone more square, more centrally. Jan Mrazek tries to get into the penalty head. Nipped away Van Vespes. He has some space to run into. He crosses over the halfway line. Centrally, a shot from distance is blocked on the edge of the penalty area. And it goes out towards that right side. It's that guy Petrus again at the back, just getting in the way. Vespes wins the ball back in the midway point of the Berno half, plays it back towards the halfway line, but it's still in the Berno half. Still on that left side, on the edge of the penalty now, in the penalty now, maybe a chance here for Vespes on the edge of the goalkeeper area. A shot comes in, it's blocked. Vadura there was there in the right position. He swung, he had the chance, Vespes, he got the shot off, and Vadura was there, he spread, and he blocked the shot, and then... He's as he kicked the ball, he's, he's been tackled as a, a kind of last ditch to effort from Petrus coming from behind. He's fallen on top of him, and now uh, Vespers just down trying to get to his feet. Hopefully, he's okay. And there's a round of applause for him coming back to his feet. He has been absolute a battering round this weekend for Vespers. He's really put a shift in, he hasn't shirked it this tournament at all. Question marks about him in previous tournaments that I've watched where he's at times been a well, he's been he's been a, he's been uh, withdrawn from play. He's, he's not been as robust as he's shown this weekend. So he's credit to him and his, his the work he's done away from here to get fitter. So a long ball goes out of play. It's really shown up this weekend, Vespers, as of all the other players. Thrown towards the halfway line, over the halfway line goes through Tester. It's in the avoid Berno half on this near side into the barrier. And Bango just takes the ball and. Uh, turns 180 degrees and he's tripped up by Testet free kick that won't help the cause of Anderlet but brilliant work from Jan Bangle to get that one just takes the sting out of the game now running the clock down less than two minutes to go one minute and a half to go. Just under 90 seconds remaining of this third place match and Avoy Berno are nearly there. They will nearly confirm their place in third. Karen Seal just standing in front of his teammate Jan Bango. Karen Seal just chips the ball overhead height towards the penalty area. Can he latch onto it? Jan Mazek, he does, and tries oh, to get the shot away. Oh, what a ball away. that is, by the way. That little chip ball through the middle was a bit of vintage stuff from Karen there. Mazek was there, got onto it, unlucky. Best best coming forward up towards the edge of the Avoy Berno penalty area. Can Christoph Eilers just get in the way of that ball? Jan Pango, Vespes and Eilers all in there. Almost like a rugby mall to try and get the ball away. Wouldn't want to be anywhere near that. <laughs> As the ball comes towards this near side, about a few metres away from the corner, with just over 30 seconds remaining of the second half. A real battle for the ball, deep inside the Avoy Berno half. And they come away with it, Avoy Berno. Runs into trouble, picked up, and Christoph Eilers has a shot from distance. It's scuffed. And it goes wide of the left he's post. Fuming with him. It really, he's had a great tournament, Christoph. He's getting this frustrated with that shot, but he's up and down. He's really put, a, really, really been a, a, a good performance from him this weekend. Should be proud of his efforts. Well, it goes down the left side and out of play. Seconds remaining. And there and it. is full time. And it is Avoy Berno who will finish third here at the Bushevitz Sublime Football Cup 2023. Anderlecht will finish in fourth overall. But it was two bits of brilliance from Kerin Seal. He'll be absolutely delighted with those two goals. And it's Avoy Berno who confirmed third spot. But having a player like Karen Seal in your team, you know, he's, he's been in this Avoy setup for a number of years now, and he's helped to develop the players in that setup. Um, but just, just for a little reminder of what Karen used, you know, as, as a veteran of an England, you know, England international player with over 100, 120 games for his country, this guy could score goals. And there's, there's a, a little reminder for people that Karen Seal can score goals with his left foot. Well done, Kez. Good effort, fella. Um, and, and again, he, he, those two finishes were the difference. Yeah. But I, I do question whether if Anderlecht had had a couple of more 
uh, substitutions they could have relied on over this weekend. They just, it just seemed to me that Anderlecht they run a little bit flat in that second half, run out a little bit of steam. The amount of pressing that they have been doing from the front over the course of this weekend has been absolutely brilliant to watch. The way that they split the pitch again, I'll say it again, split the pitch into thirds. At times, they were able to they were able to close teams down. They were able to make it very very difficult for teams to play against them. They were able to turn over the ball a hell of a lot, play into their strengths of being able to counter attack quickly with Vespers, with Ayers, and with um, the young man Tester. Have been very very impressed watching him play this weekend, um, and so. That I think that for Anderlecht finishing fourth, they can be very uh, proud of what they've done, especially considering they've done it with uh, three players uh, and a bear, bear, only only the three and a keeper. So hmm. um, going back to Abel, they'll be really happy that they finished this tournament off on a high. You know, getting that win there, two good counter-attacking goals, uh, and they come away from this tournament um, with, with finally scoring two goals in open play, <laughs> which will be obviously brilliant and something to build on. But most importantly, with an outcome, and that's getting that third place, that third place, third place trophy. So that's a that's a great way to booktail that and uh, move into our final. Absolutely, one more game remaining here at the Butchovitz Sublime Football Cup, and it all comes down to this. This is the final. It is. St. Pauli from Hamburg and Merseyside from Great Britain. We'll be back with you very shortly for the final here at the Butchovitz Sublime Football Cup 2023.
Well, welcome back one final time this weekend here at the Buschewitzer Blind Football Cup 2023. It is game 13. It is the final. It all comes down to this. It is St. Pauli from Hamburg and Merseyside from Great Britain as the two teams line up in front of us here. Facing us towards us, St. Pauli to the left of the halfway line, Merseyside to the right of the halfway line as we look out onto the pitch and on the live stream. So Merseyside are in their purple shirts, their black shorts and purple socks with the goalkeeper in an all orange strip, orange shirts, shorts and socks. St. Pauli in their brown strip, brown shirts, shorts and socks. The brown jersey has thin pinstripes going through the shirt. And uh, the goalkeeper for uh, St. Pauli, the chain strip of the white shirt with brown shorts and white socks. As for our two referees, Francois and Christian, they are in their salmon pink shirts with black shorts and black socks. The sun is reflecting on the pitch. It's a perfect afternoon for football. And it's we're all set for a fantastic final here at the Buchevitsa Blind Football Cup 2023. They're just going through all the formalities here, just on the uh, on the halfway line, the coin toss. And the two goalkeepers, two captains, and our two referees. Yep. Come on, let's get in. Come on. And in fact, the Merseyside team have just handed over a nice pennant to the uh, St. Pauli team. And uh, we are moments away from getting this final underway. Well, Dan, it all comes down to this. After 12 games, it's our 13th and final match of the weekend. It is St. Pauli against Merseyside. I think we're in for a bit of a cracker here. Very looking forward to it. These two teams have been in very, very impressive um, across the board, not just in their attacking play, but also defensively, uh, resolute. Um, Owen Locke has been excellent in goal for Merseyside, as has Sven, shown in the penalty shootout in the uh, semi-final that he was what he was about. Um, and you've got two teams with attacking threats in, across the board. So really am looking forward to this one. And it's a, a great, well, we, what will hopefully be a great end to the Bucevica the ninth edition of Butchevica Blind Football Cup. Absolutely, it's been a fantastic weekend here in Czech Republic. We're in the east side of the country, just to the east of uh, the second largest city, Brno. And uh, the weather is absolutely gorgeous. The temperature is really nice. Blue sky just covers us here in the primary school up in the, uh, up in the hills of the town of Butchevica. The sun just glistens off the surface. And as we've seen already from uh, from Pauli in this tournament, Michael Loeffler dropped in on the eight metres and then they've that fan of three players in the line of of uh, Werner, um, Paul and Philip Verson. And they're going to go hunt and packs and try and win this ball back early. We know how quick Issa can be from a dead ball situation on the dribble through the gears. So Merseyside will be playing from right to left from our position here in the commentary box with St. Pauli from left to right. Merseyside in purple, St. Pauli in the brown. We are nearly ready to go as our two referees just meet in the middle, just in front of the centre circle, just in front of us here. And they will come and uh, shake the hands of our, uh, <laughs> our coaches. Good smiles and uh, laughter from uh, our uh, two referees, Christian and uh, Francois. They just make our, their way in front of us here. Thank you very much, Francois. Thank you very much. <laughs> it's all smiles. The referees telling us to enjoy the commentary. <laughs> I'm looking forward to the game immensely. I'm very excited for this one. What will be. Issa be able to do here? Last few uh, free uh, sorry, centres for uh, Merseyside. He's gone very, very direct and very quickly at the goal. Here is Issa, he goes and steps to his right, steps to his left, left, he goes out towards this near side, he carries on his run towards the edge of the penalty, cuts onto his right foot, he shoots and scores! I called it, Issa. I have called it early, 12 seconds, he's gone down the left quick and off the shoulder of Philip Werner, got behind Philip Werner quickly on the edge of the six, darted past Michael Luffler who came across to try and defend, 
and that created the gap and as he went across the goal he hit the right footed shot back across Sven giving him no chance with power under control and that was the key under control shot great finish by Issa 12 seconds that's the quickest goal at this uh, tournament and now can they respond quickly Paul Ruger goes in towards the penalty area he tries to get the ball under control in the area he just loses the ball and what a start to this final oh, it's, it's almost like someone has lit a match and just exploded into life inside this opening 30 seconds absolutely incredible here's uh, Robin Williams coming up towards the halfway line under no pressure straight away Robin all. Williams using his experience he's, he's settling the pace down again he's bringing the ball forward he's waiting to bring others into play and just slowing the pace to Merseyside out towards this near side Issa just putting under pressure by Loeffler and it goes out for a goal kick well Kerin Seal is sat next to us and the first thing he said was that was different gravy from Issa as the ball's rolled all the way to the penalty area shot up goal and it's blocked and goes all the way what out to say that, that is side he splits to the floor and it hits his foot as he hits the floor Paul Ruguez the long ball forwards he turned on a sixpence he was in unopposed and as he went to shoot the ball didn't get the cleanness of connections and Owen Locke was able just to get into the split position and actually the, it caught his foot and went out for a corner brilliant stop Paul Ruger arcing his run now, coming into a more central position. He goes back out wide towards the left. He tries to control the ball. Issa tries to tackle him, but Ruger still has possession of the ball. Comes from that far left side into a more central position, arcing his run towards the edge of the penalty area, towards this near side now. But he just loses control at the crucial moment, and it goes out for a goal. Ten to end. It's frantic. Owen wow, oh, Locke just trying to play a short one out and just get him to resettle on the ball. Yeah, just taking his time here, here comes uh, Archer just tiptoeing his way forward, he's midway inside his own half and just uh, boots the ball down this near side, it ricochets off the barrier and goes out. And that's where Issa is, he's, he's employing a high line, he's staying in behind, he's, he's occupying Michael Offler and he's giving the St. Pauli players something to think about, so half they, they, their high line that they want to play, they always have to think about Issa in and behind them. If they get caught too high, either from a goal clearance from Owen Locke or from any switchboards, it allows Issa to get in the spaces that he wants to operate and he wants to operate between the broken line and the six metre D. That's where he's real, really dangerous and he can change direction and pace very, very quickly. And Will Schmidt is really aware of that and doesn't want Philip Verson to push too far forwards. I'm hearing talking to him already. So it's a free kick here for St. Pauli, midway inside their own half. Just on this near side, almost in front of us here in the commentary box, Philip Verson goes to his left, more centrally, back out to this near side, plays a ball forward towards the edge of the Merseyside penalty area, down this near side, but it goes out. Three minutes gone, St. Pauli nil, Merseyside one. Thrown out towards that far right side, it comes off the board. Williams collects it and goes into the centre circle, put under pressure from Philip Verson. He's being pushed back towards his penalty area, but plays the ball out to this near side. It's still in the Merseyside half, but Verson turns lovely and goes towards the edge of the penalty. Goes past another. Can he get the shot away? It's just caught behind him. Still has a chance to get the shot away. Philip Verson tries to, but he just misses the ball. He still has possession of the ball with his back to goal. Turns into a more onward position and tries to shoot, but misses the ball and collapses onto the ground. And they get away with that one, Merseyside. But now East has maybe a chance to run here. He cuts back inside and goes into the centre circle. Tries to go back onto his left foot. He still has possession of the ball out towards this near side. Right in front of us here in the commentary box, Issa. With his back to goal, shrugs off Werner. He goes towards the penalty area. He tries to get a shot off. And that one is with the ball. He still has it. It's been saved and it's come straight back to him as he, as he had his follow through and he's managed to take it down. But now Paul's on the attack. Paul Ruger over the halfway line across the centre circle through the middle of the pitch towards the penalty. Ruger shoots and it's wide. Hit the target. You score there. Too many times in this tournament he's been off target when he's had these opportunities where he's beaten the last man. He's cleaning on goal. And he's just got to hit the target. Chance. Williams over the halfway line to the right of the centre circle. He enters into the centre circle now. He's just calming things down a little bit for Merseyside. Oh, that's Turns. fantastic. He's brought two players into him and he's beat them. 
He's still going, he's Williams out towards that far right side. It's brilliant work from Robin Williams. Just runs into a little bit of trouble, but he still has possession of the ball and switches it brilliantly out to this left side. Issa collects it off the barrier, goes past one, goes past another. He's into the penalty area, tries to get a shot off. He collapses to the ground. The tackle from Loffler, it's half cleared away. It's in the goalkeeper area, but it's cleared away eventually. Loffler making the last ditcher, then he's just got enough on it to stop Issa from that, pulling the trigger. Ruger from one end of the pitch to the other. Runs into Williams and now just coming forward here, Merseyside into the centre circle, picked up by Thurston, the number nine, comes out towards this near side, trying to arc his run back into a more central position on the edge of the penalty area. And it goes out for a corner. Well, just catch your breath, everyone. Catch your breath. What a start. End to end, literally end to end, attack after attack. Robin Williams there, absolutely brilliant. He drew the, the, pre he drew the press and the two press from St. Pauli. Pirouette did too. You managed to bring Issa into the game. That's when Michael Loughlin had to make that last ditch tackle. But it's just fantastic football from both sides at the moment. So just under six minutes gone in the first half. Corner on this near side for St. Pauli. Werner with possession of the ball. Versens to his left. Werner just centering on the edge of the penalty area. He gets into the area. He shoots. Oh, Good save. Wow. Good save. It's still in play. It's out on this near side on the corner. Werner collects it. Tries to get back into the penalty area. He still has possession of the ball. Back to goal. But uh, Issa wins it back on the edge of the centre circle. He runs through one, runs through another, but it's blocked. And the ball just runs into the St. Pauli half centrally. Loffler is there to cover on the edge of his own penalty area. Goes out to that far side. Issa tracking him down. The ball's just stationary right next to the board. Right in that far corner in the St. Pauli half. And they come away with the ball, St. Pauli. Ruger comes away with it over the halfway line. Goes past one, goes past two. He's in the middle of this Merseyside half. He's into the penalty, a shot on goal. Uh, it's wide. And, and he's right never wrist. under control in that attack. He never ever had the dribble under total 100% control. He was always chasing after it. And then he pulls the trigger on the run. It's, he just needed to get hold of the ball before he uh, set himself for that shot. Back underway, here's uh, Liam Archer. No St. Pauli players in the Merseyside half. It's a long ball off the, the boarding and into the penalty area and into the goalkeeper area. Issa was running into it, just anticipating Merseyside it. Merseyside is starting to drop deeper and Paul starts picking the ball up in front of him. There's going to be danger. Robin Williams better out. He got out quick that time and he's on the ball now. He is. He advances forward. Williams, but he's intercepted by Ruger. Transition. Over the halfway line they come, Ruger on this near side, advancing to more central position. Shot is wide of the left post. That's what they have to be aware of when it gets turned over in the transition. So when Robin had there had the ball, then he didn't. Paul started his attack. Craig and Liam's position is key. Craig's starting to drop in on about the eight metre spot, and Liam needs to be a little bit further forward. Williams over the halfway line, switches it to this left side now. Issa, it's about five metres from the halfway line in the St. Pauli half. He goes in towards the centre circle, switches it back out to that right side. Williams under pressure from Ruger. Ruger tries to win the ball back and does so successfully. There's two St. Pauli players around the ball on that far side, tracking Williams. Williams puts the pressure on the ball, just rolled back into that far corner. St. Pauli under pressure and it's just kicked out. Excellent. To more central position. They have it on this near side now, midway inside their own half. There's a bit of a head collision. A head collision. On. Issa's got it. Issa's in the penalty. He shoots and scores! Issa! Oh, 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 oh. So there, the ball got switched back into, into the middle in a dangerous position when you're defending and you want to switch play. You want to probably clear that longer up the pitch. It got switched across and Nathan went to get the ball and there was a head collision that occurred which took him out and then Issa just picked up the pieces, mopped up, took it inside, went into the area gets the shot off four meters out through Sven 2-0 clinical finishing once again from uh, Issa so 2-0 eight minutes and 13 seconds gone in the first half in what has been a scintillating first half of the final substitution oh no Nathan's he's, Nathan, Nathan Verner's blood coming from his mouth here on the sideline that, that head clash such a shame I think it's his I think it's his mouth it's coming from his mouth yeah, he's just jumped over the boarding. here. He's right in front of us, Werner. We hope he's okay. He, he suffered a bit of a head collision in the semi-final as well. Number eight goes out and the number 18 goes in. It's, 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 a, it's just a shame for him. You know, he's been excellent throughout this tournament. The young man. Just went into an area there where he was putting his face into an area where he's just kind of, I think it was may have been a shoulder that he, he managed to hit there. And 
took him out of the game momentarily and it allowed Issa to just get hold of the ball and make it two. Ruger straight from kickoff goes down this near side. He tries to get into the penalty. He shoots, but it's into the hands of Owen Locke. Just throws the ball out towards this near corner. So Jenny Dabblestein is out on the pitch, the number 18 for St. Pauli. Ball played over towards that far right side. It's on the halfway line. Ruger, Philip Verson, I should say, intercepts from Williams. And Verson goes forward into the penalty. A chance to shoot. It's a good save from Great Owen Locke. And it comes to the midway point of the Merseyside half, centrally. Brave goalkeeping, stood his ground, allowed Verson to come towards him, but he made sure that he was in his shape and he was ready to make the save. Issa takes the ball, he's on the edge of the penalty. Issa carries on going forward, he's into the goalkeeper area, shoots, and it's off the crossbar. It's a free, I think they've yeah. brought it back for a free kick on the edge of the 6D, left-hand side. Issa did manage to wriggle his way through as Michael Luffler, who who dro dropped in deep to try and deal with the deal with Issa's pace, which he, which he couldn't. And then it hit Sven, hit the crossbar. But the referees have brought it back now. What a start. Now we're nine minutes in and end to end always, but... Yeah, it's flown by this first half. It's been uh, scintillating to follow. So... Uh, Robin Williams standing over his free kick. He has the ball between his two feet. Issa is standing right behind him. The wall is placed in the goalkeeper area. Just covering the right side of the goal from the St. Pauli perspective. Sven Grono is having to just bend under, look between the feet of the St. Pauli players in the wall. I'm not sure about this wall. It's a very, this wall is, should be more spread out if, I, if you ask me. Robin can go either way here, left or right. There's a gap at the near post. And never should be a gap at the near post. Sven can see the other side save. It's going that way. William shoots, it's well blocked. blocked. Well done, wall. It's out on this near side. Issa now takes the ball, tries to go past one and does so successfully, goes past another. Just gets the ball stuck underneath his feet slightly and goes out towards that far right side, but he still has the ball stuck to his foot. He's like a magnet. And it's uh, midway inside the St. Pauli half. Issa is just being forced back towards the halfway line. Has it on the centre circle. Tries to play a ball out to the far side. It's intercepted by Dabinstein. Actually, from Jenny there to get in line with the ball. Cuts it out and starts an attack. She works it all the way down that left side. Being put under pressure. And there's a real battle over on that far left side in the Merseyside half. And it's cleared away out to this near side in the St. Pauli half this time. Paul Ruger's come deep to collect. He has a bit of space to run into. Can he just uh, build up some momentum here? Ruger goes past the Issa over the halfway line. Midway point of the Merseyside half. He gets towards the penalty. He's still going, Ruger. He tries to take the shot. No. But misses the ball at the crucial moment. And that's the problem. Crucial moment, crucial moment. He's gone through brilliantly. He's through on goal. And he just, at the moment he needed to pull the trigger, it just ran away from him again. For Merseyside, Robin on the attack, switches play. Williams gets it and fries it over to Issa on his near side. Ruger sets off again over the halfway line. He's in the centre of the Merseyside half. He's running towards the penalty area. Ruger, Ruger goes through what to the edge of the penalty area. Craig, oh, actually, no. It's been given as a penalty, that one. Craig Lundberg going to ground again to make a sliding tackle. He's done it several times and been penalised for it. I believe this is a six metre penalty. Yeah, pointing straight to the spots. In that instance, again, and where, where Avoy Berno are very, very dangerous um, is when Paul has the ball and he, he wins the ball from a, from a Merseyside attack. And he, on this occasion, he didn't have anyone to pass the ball to. He had to go solo. But he is becoming quite predictable with um, dribbling solo at the moment. He needs to try and remember to bring other players into the game, such as Philip Verson, such as Jenny, who is over on that left, providing an option. Just to keep, keep the team second-guessing, because... Liam Archer and Craig Lundberg are holding the middle position and aren't unable to get hands on. So it's going to be Philip Verson who's going to take this set penalty. Will be right footed. The goalkeeper Owen Locke, who has been very impressive so far throughout the tournament, stands on his goal line. Right on his tiptoes, Owen Locke just uh, moving his body left and right as Philip Verson raises his right arm, pointing straight at the goal, puts his arm down, he will take this right-footed. Here come the taps from the guide behind the goal.
Person will take this right footed, puts both hands on the ball, shoots right footed and scores! That's a great penalty. Nothing the goalkeeper can do about that. And as he did in the penalty shootout with his first penalty, he dispatched that with a toe poke into the same uh, right handed corner as, as he looks at the goal. And as Owen locks left hand side, right into the stanchion, it's a very good penalty. And it brings it back into the balance again. It certainly does. Brilliant penalty, tucked away nicely. But it's like a set piece, this, this uh, centre for uh, the Merseyside, because Issa's on it again. And it took him 12 seconds to get, take this to the goal last time. Here he goes, Issa, who's in the centre circle. Has three to beat, beats one, beats two. But he can't get round Rugrits on the edge of the penalty area. Issa's still going, it's in the penalty area. Can he get a shot away? He's crowded out by two and three St. Pauli players. The ball's stationary on the edge of the goalkeeper area. Tries to get a shot away. Two more hits the side netting. I tell you. It, it's incredible to watch the change of direction and pace that he uses his head position and way he turns his shoulders to get past players. He took two out in one movement then. So long ball down this near side. Deep into the Merseyside half, goes out for a goal kick. So two minutes remaining of this first half. What a first half it's been. Sent Merseyside now pushing a couple of players further on. Robin Williams further on in a deep corner area. And Issa up there as well. Tried to find him. Here comes Jenny Dabblestein. Good run here up towards the edge of the penalty area. Just towards the goalkeeper area, but it's uh, gone out. Craig, Lund goal Craig Lundberg got his body between uh, the ball and Jenny there and managed to shepherd it out. Good defending. 90 just seconds need to left. calm the game down now. Just there's only 90 seconds left just calm down remember Merseyside are winning this Liam bringing it out nice and slow trying to build an attack now he's asking where everyone is and that ball's been cut out Ruger coming forward over the centre circle he comes forward towards the edge of the penalty area Ruger good tackle from Williams but he still has it on the edge of the yeah, penalty area great tackle well. Williams he had to make that one so a minute remaining of this first half Ball's right in this near corner, deep inside the Merseyside half, although Williams comes away with it, tries to get past Burson and does so. Burson tracking him all the way down this near side, but it goes out for a goal kick. Timeout for St. Time out. uh, all round yet. So there it was, you know, Liam Archer bringing it out nice and slow, and he's asked a question of what, where are, where is everybody? He's got it, he's got the information back, and then the ball needed to be a lot more accurate than it was and it was easily cut out and again that was straight to the man the danger man Paul Paul Ruzez who was able to bring the ball back at pace and it on, only for an intervention by Robin Williams was that uh, that averted that dangerous attack I think Merseyside just need to just calm the game down it's become very very end to end and um, within the last couple of minutes obviously they've got the they've got the penalty and they've, they've managed to get back in the game so Steve Cushion will be asking them to communicate better to each other Go back to the basics, making sure that they are getting in line with the, you know, when they're making tackles. Something that I'm noticing a couple of times where they kind of swung a leg at a couple of players, such as, the, um, sorry, uh, Rouges when he's gone through and the ball's coming like loose, or Verson when the ball's gone loose. Even when Jenny's now coming on and actually providing a, a good pressure, good pressure onto the players, they've been de they've been hanging their feet in a little bit. Discipline's very very important now, just to see this half out. Less than a minute. So 47 seconds remaining. In this first half. Going up towards this uh, near side. Deep in the corner. On the edge of the penalty area, on the edge of the Merseyside penalty area. And it's uh, 30 seconds remaining in this uh, first half. So uh, a chance here for St. Pauli. Can they just grab an equaliser before the half-time interval? Rugo trying to bend his run into a more central point. About 12 metres away from goal. Tries to get towards the edge of the penalty. Ruga tries to have a shot, but it's uh, an air shot. And it goes out towards this near side. Seconds remaining in this first half. 
And that is half time here between St. Pauli and Merseyside. And it is St. Pauli 1, Merseyside 2. What a scintillating half that was. And what a final we've got in store. That's what you want from the first half of a final. Entertainment. And we got a lot of that. And it even started after 12 seconds when uh, Issa started through the challenges. Took, took his line to goal expertly. Change of direction extreme change of pace through the gears we've already seen it during this tournament and and finished with a right footed venomous right footed shot past Fenn it got even better for him as he came, he went through again he, he, he uh, capitalised on a little bit of fortune when uh, Werner had a head clash and he picked up the pieces mopped up took the ball back to go across the goal got back inside the four metres out on an angle right footed shot venomous past Fenn again but during that time, there were many, many counter-attacks by FC St. Pauli, and in particular, Paul Rouges, who has been impressive with his dribble and his change of direction, but when it came to his finish, had been lacking. He forced Owen Locke into a number of good saves. One particular save he made with, with his uh, down low to the split save and a diving save, excellent. And then uh, they were given that lifeline when uh, Craig Lundberg went to ground with a sliding tackle on um, Philip Verson in the area and, and drew the penalty, which Verson then converted. So we're back in, a, in an evenly sort of poised game at 2-1. Going in now at half-time, I think that Steve Cushion, like I've already said, he'll be telling the lads, right, just calm yourself down, compose yourself, go back to the basics of your first touches, your discipline, communicate into each other. It's getting a bit frantic and the, the lads, I can just notice that the communication levels have dropped a little bit within the last few minutes of the game. So they'll be looking to reiterate to the guys that it's very, very important that we let you know where each other are on the pitch so that we can get the shape. Craig Lundberg has to sort of be in charge of that and Owen Locke at the back to get that shape off the, off the whole team early on. And if I'm looking at um, FC St. Pauli, I'd be saying, right, what's really, really important here is we continue to... We don't want to be going at counter-attack in every single attack with one player, but in that being Paul Ruzes, we need to bring others into the game. Whether that Werner does go back on or not, I don't think he looks like he's going to go back on. He's got a nasty uh, mouth injury, but um, now Jenny, Jenny's come on on the left-hand side and she's actually been excellent at closing, uh, closing down Robin Williams on the left-hand side and, and winning the ball for her team and giving the ball off to Verson and giving the ball back to Ruzes. But I think they should build the play a little bit more. It just can't be counter-attacks from their own half. For, for Paul he's going to get very very tired very very quickly if that is the case so I think mixing their play up and obviously they need to get tight to Issa early if they do not get tight to him and give him any level of space that's when he's going to get going to get a lot of joy well one thing's for certain it's going to be a very entertaining second half in the final here at the Bushevitsa Blind Football Cup 2023 We'll just take a couple of moments just to pause and breathe. I need a breather. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Go again for this second half. But uh, don't go anywhere. This is set up to be a fantastic second half. How was it?
Well, we've just had a moment just to pause and, and breathe. I just want to have a sip of the beer just to calm my nerves. <laughs> <laughs> now nah, it's been a great hour for football. A great advert for the ninth edition of the Butcher Vizsa Blind Cup, this final match. It certainly has. And St. Pauli will restart this second half playing from right to left from our position. With Merseyside from left to right. Merseyside in the purple shirts. St. Pauli in brown. Our two referees, Christian and Francois, nearly ready to get this second half underway. It is 2-1 to Merseyside. Two goals from Issa, one goal from Versant. And we are underway. Paul Ruger straight on to him with Williams. But as Ruger goes forward towards the edge of the penalty, Ruger's in the penalty area. Chance, oh, and swipes at it, and it goes wide. Well, that would have been nine seconds if he had connected with one of his many, many dribbles, because he's in the area, he's in the slot, he's done everything right, and he gets in there, and you're just hoping and praying, if you're an FC St. Pauli fan, that he connects with it. He doesn't. Let off from Merseyside early. Too many gaps already between the defence of Merseyside, and he exploited them easily. So Archer just slowed things down. Ball out towards this near side. Can it be kept in play by Issa? He can't, and he just Ooh. glides into the boarding. I hope he's okay. So that was a heavy collision into the boarding. Yeah, it, there's no runoff on this pitch, really, for any... Uh, just hope everyone's... Open. Those balls do not move. They are bolted into position. Yeah, there's no give on those No, balls, not at all. all. Oops, that was a mistake, I think, from Sven Grano, and the ball's just played into the midway point of the St. Pauli half, and uh, Williams comes charging in to try and claim that ball. He's got two players around him, just on this near side, midway inside the St. Pauli half. Versen regains possession and goes over the halfway line into the centre circle, comes out towards this near side, tries to cut back onto his right, goes through the legs of Issa. He's on the edge of the centre circle, Here we go. Issa gains it back, who's over the halfway oh, line, he's hello. charging forward. He comes oh, into the hello. penalty area, Issa shoots oh, and scores! That is outstanding from Issa! Fantastic. And it was on It was on as soon as he got it. Versen went forwards, he, he went to the right, then he went to the left, and he decided that he was going to go on his own. Then in, uh, the... Then the tackles came in from uh, Lundberg and, and the ball broke loose to Iso, who was just happening to do, be on his defensive duty in that sort of middle position and he picks it up. And as you heard by myself, as soon as he picked it up and he started to shift through the gears, there was a lot of space for him to operate into. Straight line, straight down the middle of the pitch. Dalberstein, Jenny was too far forward. She was looking to, for the support ball from Werner and Paul Ruzes could not get back to Iso. He just went through the gears so, so fast got into the right hand side of the goal and once again as I've been very impressed with his finishing in the last couple of, the couple of games he's just absolutely lamped that past the goalkeeper Sven no chance so 3-1 to Merseyside here is uh, Ruger midway inside the uh, Merseyside half he comes up towards the edge of the penalty area but Defending Issa gains it and off he goes again down this near side he's over the halfway line down this near side almost hugging the board he goes towards the corner cuts back inside onto his left foot he's into a more central position he goes to the left side of the penalty area he keeps the ball tight to his feet tries to get a shot off but all four St. Pauli players got back into position and now comes Verson over the halfway line to the right of the centre circle midway inside the Merseyside side half he's blocked up by Archer but Verson skill is going out towards this near side he's on the edge of the penalty cuts back onto his right but the tackle comes in from Issa it's still in the penalty it's not cleared away the ball stationary can a shot be claimed it isn't well it's sort of swat swatted out and it just goes into the hands of Owen Locke and throws the ball out but uh, Williams now restarts with Merseyside inside his own half on that far side Lundberg held his ground then just at the moment where Werner was looking like he was going to get the shot off and he held his ground and then the ball went dead and then just ended up with Owen in the area just after a little tap into it because they defended it well. Now Elrond Williams is slowing the bay down, he's just building, he's moving backwards and forwards, he's waiting for his options, he's drawing the St. Pauli players up, then he passes the ball. Brilliant. He's now moved on to that left side and he's midway inside the St. Pauli half. He cuts back inside. He's about 10 metres away from goal. He goes towards the penalty area, shoots, and that one is saved. That would have been fantastic. It was the way Robin drew the players out, played Issa in, and then he went in for the dribble. That's what the football's about. Making it look good here. He's now midway inside the Merseyside half. Is uh, verse and he goes up towards the edge of the penalty area Bow. and wins himself a free kick. They're starting to back off Merseyside when uh, Ver Ver Versen and Paul have the ball. They're not putting the tackles in high enough. Just for like a couple of minutes. We are going to um, we're going to bring over Karen Seal into the uh, into the into the commentary booth here. Good afternoon, everybody. And um, K 
Kez, what have you made of this final so far? It's, um, I think you call the game stretched, wouldn't you? But there's a lot of counter-attacking going on here. I think Merseyside are obviously doing it in a lot more of a methodical manner, or a lot more thinking behind it. St. Pauli have counter-attacked mainly down the middle, and I think Merseyside, by and large, have been able to snuff that out. Free kick to uh, FC St. Pauli, seven metres out to the right of the goal. All the Merseyside players are back in a four-man war. Owen Locke just making sure that he gets the wall in the correct position as the guy taps the posts. Got Jenny Dalberstein standing on this free kick with Paul Rouges. Ball goes loose, far left board. Rouges in control of the ball. Right in the corner, challenged by Issa, and it's stuck in the corner at the moment. He needs support from Werner back down the line. Still battling Issa with uh, Rouges, stuck in the corner. Right in the corner at the moment, still there. Liam Archer bringing the ball away. Over the half, over the top broken line and then onto the halfway line. Not into control. Back Werner battles with the ball as well. And he comes away with the ball on the right-hand side. Pirouettes looking to bring others into the game. He slows the play down, then goes left over the halfway line. Down the left-hand side, going inside. Pass one, pass two. Foot on the ball. Takes it back to the left. He's on the six. He's passed one. He's got a chance to get a shot off. Robin Williams gets his body in the way. And Brink comes away with the ball down the left ball. Clears his lines. Goes all the way back over the halfway line. Unopposed. Jenny Dalbson will gather. She gathers it. Takes it forwards. Issa comes to press. And gets his boy in and takes the ball away from her. And he's away. Not under control, however. The of this pitch today. And now you've got the big bat matchup between Issa and Paul. On this board nearest to us at the moment, Kez. Back board support, back ball, back down towards Liam. Liam doesn't manage to gather it, but Ruzes takes it off his foot, takes it inside, still not under control. And then the referee, Francois, gives a free kick against Liam Archer, who left his foot in on Ruzes. And that is a free kick. What are your thoughts, Kez? That's not a bad foul to give away there, is it? But uh, yeah, game's very, very stretched. Both teams seem to be just going straight up the guts as soon as they've got the ball. It doesn't matter where it is. I think, uh, I think it requires a bit more Robin Williams to put his foot on the ball and spread, spread the play. And, and I can see by Paulinho here in front of us, he's got both his hands on his hips, bent over in a crouch. He is getting a little bit tired with his very direct style of play. A lot of work in today, but some of it maybe he didn't need to do. Yeah, Werner down the right-hand side comes into altercation with Robin Williams. He gets his body in the way and they're battling on the right-hand board at this moment in time. And it's just stuck and the ball isn't moving anywhere. Robin Williams is looking to slow the play down and get a pass back to Liam Archer, who is supporting him. But Werner is there as well, and it, the ball's a bit of a stalemate at the moment, right in the corner. Liam Archer gets it, switches it across. It's a really switch close quick to the other side of the corner, and it's made Issa have to go and get it, and he brings it across into the middle so fast, and then straight through the middle, and he's off, and here we go. He's in, 12, 8, 7, 6, shoots left foot, goal! Left foot finish. He's got two feet, this lad, and he's got a massive change of pace. And that is the fourth goal for, for, for Merseyside. Makes it 4-1. Four, four goals, like Dan said there. there. That's the difference. If you can go down, down the middle, a few jinks, change direction a little bit. But ultimately, he was on, he was on the side for, his, for the finish with that foot. And he's used that foot. I think some Pauli... Some other teams have well become a little bit predictable with where they're all going to manipulate it back onto that stronger. Great throw. coaching. Whoever, the, the people responsible in the coaching of Issa have done a great job with him. He's done excellent. Absolutely fantastic. Ball back in play again as uh, Paul Rouget is looking to bring it forwards. Robin Williams, once again, doing his defensive duties here right in front of us, keeping him tight against the boards. No foul committed. Rolls the ball back down to Werner, down the boards, now on the 12 metres out from his own goal. Goes across the pitch, straight line. Robin Williams goes to chase. Goes over the halfway line, Werner. Puts his foot on the ball. Goes back left. Then left again. Puts his foot back on the ball, dead centre of the pitch. He needs support. He hasn't got anything at the moment as Rouges looks to start making a run. Werner comes towards us here on the left-hand side, on the halfway line. Plays a little angle ball. It's not going to be enough. Guess who's got it? It's Issa again. Straight line. Left, then right. And then he's... Fouled by Jenny Dalberstein, who left her foot in as he started to change from gear three to gear four very, very quickly. And that's a free kick. And that is 12, 13 metres out, I believe. And central for Merseyside. Take a breath. It's a good foul to give there. Brave play from, uh, from Dalberstein. Not afraid to stick a foot in there. Fresh from uh, run out of the championships uh, in Birmingham for the Ipswell Games. Yeah. 
Robin Williams taking the ball right down the line. And he comes into contact with Paul Ruzez and he needs support. He hasn't got it at the moment, but Liam then goes to support him and he's back down the ball as an option. But Robin chooses to switch the ball fantastically across to Issa. He gathers the ball, goes inside, pass one. Comes into contact on the edge of the six metre D. He's got two players around and shoots. Right foot shot. Nice. And that looks nice, nice spread of the play. like it went through FC St. Poli player leg, Michael Luffler. And it will be a goal clearance, not a corner that's been asked for. I'm not sure Steve Cushion can believe that that's, that's not a like corner. A and it sounded me. like a deflection from here. But it's not been given. Timeout has been called. We've got less than seven minutes to go in this game. And it has been frantic. It has been end to end. Yeah, Issa has been uh, electric as every time he's had the ball and he's had opportunities to run at the uh, FC St. Pauli defence. And that time it was the left-footed finish down the left-hand side. Finished expertly across Sven Goran in the goal for FC St. Pauli. Beautiful stuff. Beautiful. It's, it's the difference, isn't it? He's the difference maker. Him and Paul have both been the star men on each each of their sides over the last two days. But the difference is he's just been clinical with his finishing. It doesn't matter from what, what angle, what foot, what distance. He's got the right surface of the foot for the right shot at the right time. And like you said, coaching is fantastic, but he's obviously been doing his basics for a very, very long time. <laughs> he's only 18 now, and let's just think how good he could be. But, uh, one thing you would say is that any any young players out there, any young football players are watching, it's all about practicing and uh, doing the basics correctly because those are the things that add up. And then obviously when you come onto a game like this, in a final like this, and it's such a big tournament, you're able to execute. And that's certainly what he's done when he's had the opportunities here. But it's not just all about Isa. It's also been some expert performances. The defence of Merseyside have weathered the storm, and it certainly has been a storm in this second half because there have been opportunities. But the difference again, obviously, being at the defence, Robin Williams, Liam Archer, and Craig Lundberg have worked expertly with Owen Locke to reduce the amount of chances that they had been given away in the first half. Yeah, definitely. And the, keep, the keeper, when he's been called upon, has pulled out some top, top draw saves, unconventional saves, but. Uh, yeah, he's a, he's a real find as well. Some of us in the Coventry box made a career on being unconventional. Exactly, so. yeah, exactly. <laughs> Here we go, we're getting the game started again. Uh, Sven rolls the ball out to Werner, takes the ball across, sorry, out to uh, Versen on the right-hand side, plays the ball down the line. Ooh, a pass. And it's a pass to uh, Paul, who's uh, six metres out, goes out to the eight metres, comes central, fast dribble, cross arc in left, goes back right. Gets a shot off. It's blocked by Lundberg and rolls into Owen Locke again. Lundberg once again getting his body in line with it, with Paul. Hand on and not committing a foul. And being patient in there. It's all about the patience. Very much important when you're defending, Kez. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Wait, wait, wait. The best defenders don't have to make tackles. Liam Archer plays an expert fall through the gap for Issa. He's in again. Here we go. Two metres out, shoots, and doesn't connect for the first time as the ball rolls into Sven Goran in the uh, St. Pauli goal. Thrown out, looking to try and bring Versen into play on the left. Liam March is there as well to provide pressure, and the ball there now battling on the broken line. Left hand side, Versen gets hold of the ball. Liam March at his back, trying to uh, apply pressure in the right way. The ball gets rolled back down the ball, balls to Michael Loeffler and he's not gathered the ball yet as Issa starts to chase. And Issa starts to chase across the pitch and the ball is still not in control. Paul comes across to try and get hold of the ball and try and start an attack. And now it's become a little bit frantic up there. The battling for the ball, but Issa takes it away. He's brought it across, he's got the shot off and the ball's run loose. And Jenny Dalberstein will clear the lines. Just when you thought the ball had gone a bit frantic, Issa comes away with it and then uh, it all goes dead. So Liam Archer again over the halfway line now. Brings it forward and tries to switch the play across, but there is nobody there. And Paul will pick the ball up. And he's got a bit of space to work his magic. He brings it forward in a straight line. Then he turns it right. He's over the halfway line. 12 metres broken line. And then Liam Archer with a recovery tackle. Excellent. Takes the ball brilliantly. Paul's run out a bit of gas. He's not quite got that, that gear five now. <laughs> going to need to use the ball, use the rest of his players, because that 35 metre, metre dribble is not easy when you're gassed. Bruges on the edge of the box, gets a shot away, and it's in! Oh, and it's gone in off the top of the crossbar. Liam Archer tried to clear his lines, and he came away with it, Paul Ruzez, and he took it left, and dragged it back onto his right foot, and then a high shot. He hit a hard, vicious high shot in off the top of the crossbar, Bobo and locking the goal. 
Oh, nice. Like a man in an orthopedic shoe, I stand corrected. Paul, Paul Rugger was not gassed at all. He, he followed that ball to its, to its uh, end position. Rassid got back inside on his strong right foot. I think Merseyside might just be a little bit disappointed. They didn't tidy up that one and just the ball ran a little bit loose. And then just that Rouges was great in the broken play there to pick it up and dispatch it. But Robin Williams down the left. It's like vintage Robin Williams. He's got forward quickly here inside the box. Has a swing, misses. And oh. then the ball runs away loose. Unfortunate. Robin Williams, who thought he was rolling back for years then. He's been very, Luffler very... comes away with the ball over the six-metre D, then goes down to the right-hand side towards the right-hand boards. He needs to get hold of the ball first, and then he's supported as he runs into Liam Archer, and Liam Archer then comes away with the ball over the halfway line. And he's in, and now with the broken line, but he needs support, Liam Archer. He needs some support back, and he needs some support across. Battling with Michael Luffer, then battling with Verson. Then Verson picks the ball up, takes it down the line. Liam Archer continues to battle with him, and Liam, unfortunately for him, has committed a foul. He was in too quick there and he managed to almost bear hug Werner as, uh, sorry, Verson as he uh, went past him down the line. That's the third team foul for uh, Merseyside and then looked quick to get it underway. And that's another foul in a quick succession because as he travelled left, Verson, Liam Archer was just coming back to get into shape. And he obviously there was a no boy situation there as he came back. A little bit slow to uh, to get back into the shape. I'm just handing over to Brad now for the last few minutes of the game. And Steve Cushion asking for a timeout. And he wants to get a timeout into his players now just to kill this game. Less than three minutes to go. It's been an excellent final, this. Six goals, end-to-end -end football. Exactly what you would want from a final match. Players have given everything. Yeah, substitution, Liam coming off then. Liam Archer. Rainbow coming onto the pitch, scored in the uh, the first game of the day, which almost, oh, I said first game of the tournament, which all feels like a bit of like a lifetime ago against uh, Avoy Berno yesterday morning. So uh, under three minutes remaining in the final. And we've not seen a great deal of Rainbow since the first game. He, he's, he's been a bit part player in this team. You know, he's, uh, he's coming on now for the last three minutes. Can he make an impact? Let's see. So it's with the goalkeeper for uh, Merseyside, Owen Locke. Just slowing this game down, thrown out towards this near side, midway inside their own half. Issa's come deep to collect, he's put under immediate pressure from Verson, deep inside his penalty area. He's been hunted down by Verson and it goes up for a corner, really good pressure from yes, Verson. Yes, he, he got excellent pressure early and the communication there from the goalkeeper has been really, really important because Issa didn't really know what he was running into and the danger that he was running into. So, a little learning point there for Owen and goal. There is uh, Verson now, just with the corner, comes back inside onto the edge of the penalty. He shoots and it goes wide. So as the seconds tick down, under two minutes remaining. Yeah, they've, got to have, they've got to take some shots, they know it. They've got to get some shots off and they're trying to hurry the play. Like these free kicks and corners, they're trying to hurry along. Well, this is the man you want in uh, an experience moment. And uh, it's intercepted, however, Rugas coming forward. Issa comes into the side of him, it just dribbles into the penalty area. Oh, it's a sliding challenge from Ruger, takes yeah, out. Because he's trying to shoot, he's trying to slide and shoot, but that is dangerous play, and he's ended up sliding into Lundberg at the back, who, who was just literally tracking the ball out for a goal clearance as uh, Ruger, it was rolling away from him. Dangerous play, that. So, free kick for Merseyside inside their own penalty area. Last minute coming up. Ladies and gentlemen, the final minutes of the Buchevitsa Blind Football Cup 2023, unless St. Pauli can do anything about it. Issa goes past at Philip Verson and wins his team a foul. Brilliant work from Issa. He's kept on battling with those four goals. He's kept the energy levels up. Not just attacking wise, but also in his defensive duties and his fitness levels to get up and back. Um, he's been. Uh, He's been very, very good. 
Robin Williams now just dribbles out to this near side using all his experience. Lovely turn away over the halfway line. He's midway inside the St. Pauli half on this near side, getting closer and closer to the corner. And it's going to be with the goalkeeper for St. Pauli. Sven Grono rushes back to his goalkeeper area, throws over arm towards that far side. It's Mass Loffler and it's down that far side barrier. Tussle battle for the ball inside the penalty area and it's picked up by the goalkeeper and Locke who plays it out. Yeah, that's it. That's the game done. Seconds ticking down. And that is full time. And it's a brilliant victory for Merseyside Blind and 11 Football Club. They beat FC St. Pauli by four goals to two in the final. A superb individual performance from Issa, but it was also a really great team performance in the final. Handshakes all around. Commiserations to St. Pauli, a brilliant tournament for them. They finished second overall in the Butrovica Blind Football Cup, but what a performance from Merseyside, Dan, and they are the victors. There's a what you have to see there is that game started so brightly, with just after 12 seconds, obviously Visa getting in straight away and scoring, and then the the literally within the next five you know 20, 20 seconds it was uh, it was St. Pauli and it was like that for about three or four minutes then there was a key moment that occurred the second goal I feel was key there was two incidents that occurred the first one was when Nathan Werner who's been absolutely brilliant the 15 year old during this tournament he's going to be a bright light in the future for the blind football if he carries on the way he's going he had a head clash or a mouth clash which meant he had to go off but during that same situation, you had the ball. He had the head crash, the ball went loose. Issa picked the ball up, took it back towards the goal, over the broken line, that pace, inside the box, inside, and finished it well for 2-0. And that's when really the, the game became quite stretched. Um, Merseyside then sort of started to drop off the pace a little bit. And um, there was a, the, the penalty was awarded for a foul in the area by Lundberg. He went to ground, um, and that was dispatched. And it kind of get, made a game of it. But the second half, it's sort of been all about Issa's finishing. Um, there is a number of opportunities where he's got the ball uh, either in a counter-attacking situation where he's sent Poli have tried to pass between them or he's got to the ball first and bought it away and brought it back over the halfway line at pace. His dribble has changed the direction. Uh, the speed that he can change and go into, the gears he can go through, you know, are so quick and he brought it straight back to the goal and then the finishing was just expert, right foot and left foot, we saw him in the half. And um, although St. Pauli did make a fist of it towards the end with, a, with Paul getting a goal, finally getting a shot on target and it was a very ferocious shot of that from outside the box. Um, the best team I feel have won this tournament. And we talk about one player in Issa, but it wasn't just that, it was the collective performance from the, from the back to the front. First of all, we'll start with the goalkeeper. Over the course of this tournament, I feel that there's been a number of uh, chances that he's, he's, he's stopped from going in the net. Early in the avoy Berno game, Avoy, I felt, had the better of the chances, but it was him that stopped the, you know, made, made them actually get that result in the end. And then Lundberg, who's made a number of last-ditch tackles, getting his body in line and also communicating to his team at the back. I think that's very, very important. It allowed players like Liam Archer, Rainbow, uh, Kieran, when he's been on the pitch, uh, to get the shape off of them and obviously then get, the, get, get their awareness and being able to get in line with the ball and, and be able to do what they do, which is to disrupt play and then give the ball to the likes of Robin Williams, give the ball to Issa and then let them try and create creators going forward. So it was a collective effort. They've done absolutely brilliant. And I think overall, the best team have won this, uh, this edition of the tournament. So we are finished in terms of the match action here at the Bucevic Sublime Football Cup 2023. We will, of course, have the closing ceremony. We'll be handing out many awards. But just a final word, uh, Dan, on the Bucevic Sublime Football Cup as uh, Francois just shows the yellow, then the red. <laughs> he wants this done. He wants this finish here. He's giving me the yellow card and the red card. He's, he's saying, I've had enough. Get him off. Oh, he's for me. Oh, you legend. Thank you so much. Uh, <laughs> he's given me two cards of his name on that's brilliant I'll tell you what that's a little moment now uh, but just the final amazingly word. he didn't give me one of these when I was actually playing no no he's had the Karen one Seale. off you yeah the yellow yeah. and the red card off with Karen yeah, just to, just to, I just want to close by saying I think it's very very important I just want to say a quick word personally about coming out to the tournament yeah. and um I know we've lost someone this week who uh, is very dear to us all in uh, Philip Dixie Dean. He's, uh, he, over the years, has been a... Uh, in, in terms of the English blind football scene, uh, when I first rocked up in 2006 and players are like Karen, who's on my left ear, 
back even earlier than that. Dixie was uh, such a charismatic man and he, he started his journey, you know, as a goalkeeper in the early days of blind football in the 90s. And then in, as the, the game progressed, he, he went and he became a coach and a guide. And then from there, he's, his love for the game, even when he, he left the England setup to still be involved uh, at Royal National College as a, you know, as a teacher and a sort of helper there. Um, and also then he became a, a qualified uh, IPSA referee. And he, he was such a help, not only to myself as a, as a goalkeeper, but as the rest of us as international blind football players, the lads were really appreciative of like, the feedback that he would give us. Or he would attend all the league meetings and he would be uh, someone who would help us as players get better and become better defenders. And, and he would always be really honest and open with you. But one thing that's even better than all that is how charismatic he was and great to be around. And I know that a lot of our, our lads that, that known Dixie and the people that might be listening to this, um, this commentary and, and listening to the final uh, are feeling like, you know, uh, very sad at his passing this week and wish his family all the best going forwards. And we'll be thinking of them and also Dixie and remember him in this weekend. And I'm certainly raising a, uh, I've been raising a few uh, jars to, uh, to him this weekend in his, in his memory. So uh, I just wanted to f throw that out there and um, put that out there. So all the best, Dixie. And I uh, hope you were watching this final and you, uh, and you thought it was a really good uh, uh, advert for the game of blind football. A lovely tribute, Dan. Thank you very much. And well, that wraps up our coverage of the Butchovitsa Blind Football Cup. The closing ceremony will begin in 10 minutes' time. But that concludes all the action on the pitch here at the Butchovitsa Blind Football Cup 2023. It's been a fantastic weekend of football, and we'll be back with you in about 10 minutes' time. We'll have uh, the closing ceremony for you.
So, thank you for gathering up on time. Misha and Luki, thank you very much. Yeah. Jogging, come on. Yeah, yeah, thank you. So, what a tournament. What a weather in October. And, of course, what a final. I don't know whether as many goals was scored in the whole tournament, but six goals in the finals, what can we wish more, right? Anyway, let me start with a little story. Roughly a year ago, we were sitting in a, one of our internal Avoy MU Brno meetings and was wondering whether we should still do blind football, whether we should still enter any tournaments, whether we should have any trainings at all. And since we decided that we should do these activities and we should even host some tournaments, I saw a grim on Yitka's face when she asked a simple question. Should we do another edition of BBFC? To my even bigger surprise, Tomáš Buki Bukowski didn't say no. <laughs> he came up with new ideas how to improve the standards of this tournament. And of course there's also one important person who decides what's gonna happen and that's Lukáš Masilko. And he had his first words. And his first words were, let's find some sponsors. So in this way, I would like to thank all the sponsors that made this happen. The amount of money we had together for this tournament is kind of a large in our, let's say, country. It's a roughly, what, well, 700,000 crowns, which translates to 20,000 20, euros. Yeah, that's a lot. I can't earn that in my whole year wage, so that's a lot. <laughs> so, once again, thanks to all the sponsors for making this happen. And of course, it wouldn't be possible without the help of all the volunteers and our colleagues. It can maybe have some specific names for that. Yeah. I just want to say that I feel completely blessed to be surrounded by my amazing friends and colleagues. And uh, I will very quickly read their names. So first, thank Alda, Luki, Franta, uh, Tonik, Bani, Shimsha, Itya, Kuba, Mati, Bezdja, my brother Milan, Sabir, Lenya, Borek, Tariash, Milan, Mirek, David, Pavel. Thank you from all my heart that you put some energy in this tournament. Thank you. And of course, I mentioned our colleagues as well. And for that, I need to thank our employer, the Theresia Center of Masaryk University, that made it possible for us to work on the tournament and or the organ on the organization of the tournament while we were at our jobs, which is a bless, of course. So a big thank you to Theresia Center, which also, which also made these beautiful trophies we're gonna get in a second. It's a, it's a 3D printed kind of a trophy and it's hard to explain but it's movable and you, it's audible and you will love it I think. Also let me thank uh, the catering, the accommodation that I think that we every, that every each of us enjoyed and mostly let me thank the school for borrowing us the pitch as always and a little bit on the funny side the, the, the nets that were hanged like a week before was hanged by the director of the school himself and the vice director so everybody got his hand on it Then there are four more people that I would like to thank personally. 
Well, maybe three, rather. These are our lovely, lovely referees, which voluntarily came. Three because Michael Peake, Christian Jung, and Stuart Winton volunteered to come here and help us. Uh, unfortunately, Franciszek had to go because there's no other option for him. But please come here and receive these gifts, and thank you very much for your great, great work. Stand still for the photo. two more very special persons who made this tournament accessible for not only all of us, not only for the fans, and not for the online fans that were watching the stream, but also were the voices and the minds of this tournament as well. And I think their work was just amazing. So please, big applause for Brad Hope and Dan James, the commentators. my little nostalgic story I would like to thank one special person one more special person to go through the organizing of such a tournament which needs to get on the standards that were set in the previous years it's kind of a to go through hell and back for me at least maybe not for it's kind of but for me it is it's exhausting and it's painful but one person told me, as it was one of his many lessons that he gave me, that through pain you will find love. Love for the sport and love for the friendship. Thank you, Milan, for waking my eyes. Yeah? And to finish the full circle of this story, I would like, love to thank, let's say, the mother and father of this event, the people that bring their heart on the full plate, the people that make this tournament as it is. The biggest applause for, for Itka and Boogie. And now maybe a little bit untraditionally, I would like to give those two the microphone and ask them one more question. This is a ninth edition of BBFC. The question for you two. Will there be a tenth edition? So this is gonna be just three words. I do promise. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. <laughs> it's going to be huge. 
<laughs> okay, so enough of the thank yous. Some of you had to go, right, on the, to catch the train. So now let's uh, announce the best players in, in, the, in each position. So Itka, will you do the honors? So the best striker of the whole tournament of the ninth edition of BBFC is number 10, 18 years old, Isa Amjit from Mercyside. <laughs> Thank you. Go on, Isa. Yes, Isa. So, one more applause for Isa. He's amazing. He scored seven goals, four in the final. Wow. Isa's on fire. Your face is terrifying. Isa's on fire. Your face is terrifying. And uh, the trophy will go to uh, Belgium. And uh, the trophy goes to Chris Ehlers, number 11. <laughs> and uh, he comes, I guess, from Liverpool. And uh, his name is Owen Locke! I went through some emotions through my last two weeks. My son was born and my father died. And by this week, by these two weeks, you imagine 
and you know only one thing. You need a pe you need a people around you. You need companions. And by that I know that I needed to be with my mother, with my wife, with my son. I was traveling a lot, but the only place I needed to be today is here. So thank all of you, because the friendship you bring here is the best thing that we can have. And a special thank you goes to Alda, because he is one of the best guys I have ever met. When you need a lift to the hospital, when you need anything, he's here for you. I'm complaining sometimes he's not, not going to drink with us that much, but all the time he's here for us. And without him, this tournament would not happen. So I would like to thank him. Alda, thank you very much. So, let's talk about the final standings. I personally believe that each and every team here was a valid addition to the tournament. I didn't see any weak links. I didn't see any super strong points. It was even on all the fields. And I think that you could recognize the competition and it was not easy for anyone. The fighting was hard. The goals were scored. Sometimes the penalties had to decide who will go through the quarterfinals or semifinals. With this, let me announce in the sixth position Pirsos, Thessaloniki, and the best team player will be... The best team player from Pirsos, Thessaloniki will be number 13, Nikolaos Gagulis! This team come for the photo. Okay, I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Thank you. Okay, big applause for Nikos. Big applause. And in the fifth place, the team from Vienna, ÖBSV Select Team. And the best player from uh, this team is Asmin Traore, number 20. Congratulations. Let's go. Big applause again. And for the fourth place. Well, I'm at loss of words here a little bit because it's one of my most favorite teams. And what they managed to do here at the ninth edition of BBFC, to play the whole tournament in three players, to be able to outplay us in the first game, and to be able to withstand the exhaustion and the pure pressure you had to do. And I would be cheering for you if it was not the the
play the match for the place with us, of course, obviously. But anyway, the fourth place goes to Anderlecht. And the best player from Anderlecht is number 12, Igor Krista. Yes, on a bottle of silicone du corps. Okay, good picture, good picture of you. Okay. Can you see where you are? Can you call? Okay. One more big applause for Andre. So for us, the Mozi Panda team is being here with people that are really um, near my heart and that uh, we love. Uh, so we have a little present for you and uh, we want to thank you for doing all these things. Because the most fun, important thing is, I think, being here more than having a, a, a trophy. Um, the memories you make um, go longer than all the rest. So. I just don't want to imagine if you come with four players next year, what will happen, by the way. So, now the final three. Who could be number three again? <laughs> well, I'm hoping that one day in my training career we can finish higher than third. It's being really the same. But anyway, a big applause for the home team of Avoemu Brno and the best player, Jan Bango, JB. Když vám ještě se dává, hned vám zmizím, hned vám zmizím. Pojď, 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 Na mě, na mě, na mě, na mě. pojď, OK. So, for the second place, after such a great finale of a game, I don't want to be too personal, but you were my favorites. I thought that you have it this year. But since you had some changes in your team and maybe you had to get, to get used to it a little bit, you didn't make it this time. But anyway, your effort was great, and I think that you deserve to be in the second place. Sant Pauli and the best player, Philip Hippo Versen. Come on, our thing. Pivate, away at it. Away at it, pivate. Jabi, that's pivate. San Pauli. San Pauli. Yeah. <laughs>
Das war Aber das ist deine Art. Das ist meine Art. Ja, hör doch mal zu. Das ist natürlich. <lacht> Ja, ich hab deine Jacke. Mein, hast du ihn mitgenommen? Ja. Den Kopfschuss auch? Oh. <lacht> okay, and let's go. A big applause for the Silver Medalist Centauri from Germany. And let's go to Flying Devil. So, first of all, when I got the team list, I was like, okay, Roy stays home. That's all right. That looks good. Then I saw Mohamed Amjid. I was like, maybe that's the brother of Isa, I don't know. And then I found out that, uh, yeah, actually Mohammed is Isa, and they are fucking strong. And uh, they brought it here to the gold medals. They win it again. They just two weeks ago, they won the great tournament. Our friends from St. Pauli are organizing their masters. And uh, yeah, let's go. The best player from uh, Merseyside can not be anybody else than again. Number 10, Isa Amji, and the gold medal for Merseyside. Merseyside. <laughs> Máme kábel, máme, ne? Co to nám to komplikuje? Co nám to komplikuje? So please gather up for the group picture.